Hello and welcome everybody to the Overwatch League Summer Stage Qualifiers here in the East. I'm Vicky Kitty and I'm joined once again with Necra and we're going to take you guys to the day two action. I'm super excited Necra because our first match is going to be another live show. That was such an exciting way to be able to end our day yesterday and to be able to kick that off and have that energy propel us through the rest of our matches today. I am so stoked, especially when you take a look at the two teams that are going to be starting today at that LAN. Yeah, let's talk about that first series while we get set up on stage for you all at home and for the audience as well. That's why I love these live shows. We get to see the fans come out, we'll show their support, give the energy that they need because our first match will be up against the Contenders team. Some of you guys may know them. They are very popular out here. O2 Blast versus the Soul Infernal. We have to see the O2 Blast, though, really turn things around and not live up to their namesake, Necker, because last week it was very troublesome. And what can you expect when your roster keeps getting poached with such amazing, talented Overwatch League potential players officially finding themselves into the Overwatch League or even former players that make their way back into the scene? That's the tough thing about O2 Blast being one of the star-studded feeder teams into the Overwatch League is they breed some of the best talent, but that does mean that they suffer these incredible losses in these breaks in the seasons where they are coming in with a pretty retooled roster and definitely have a bit of ground to make up after the very first week of qualifiers. But it's been amazing action so far, taking a look at last week into this week, and there's still so much more of the summer stage to play so those standings can absolutely shake up over time yeah they'll shift away especially since we're only on the second week guys make sure to keep following through to see how your favorite eastern teams are doing love how you touched up on the history of o2 blast and you know eventually the well has to run dry right you have all these talented players and they keep getting plucked out of your roster so difficult to be able to have that all-star lineup that you could maintain at the very least and they're up against probably the best team in APAC right now the soul infernal talk about a stack team at the most of it when you take a look at the soul infernal as well these are players that have been together for a pretty long period of time with that comes a lot of familiarity and comfort when it comes down to how much you can actually trust your teammates around you and time and time again we have seen this roster of players just go above and beyond to continue to improve and they're coming into this stage once again looking like the top team to beat when it comes down to that sombra tracer winston dive yeah i'm thinking about you know zesty out here being able to hold hands with mn3 once again you talk about having that history as well as well as fixa too so many of these individual players have that history to remain cohesive have that synergy and they've already displayed it thus far looking at the results from the very first week necra we're gonna get the standings ready for you guys too so that way you can see where we're sitting at right now for the second week again these standings will be shifting significantly as the qualifiers continue on but it's important to know about how they started and that's why we like to highlight teams like the soul inferno looking at how their series went versus the hangzhou spark which is probably the second best team out here alongside the soul inferno now as we take a look dallas fuel remain on top alongside the soul inferno tied right there dreamers coming short after their match versus poker face yesterday still allows them to sit in that third place spot necra that's really where these teams want to be, is those top three spots that will qualify them to be able to go to the play-ins for the playoffs. But when it comes down to those teams that are at that 1-2 record and downward, this is where they got to start turning things around. They're playing seven matches in these qualifier stages, and we are just about to approach the halfway point for a lot of these teams. As you highlighted, we're kicking things off with O2 Blast versus Soul Infernal, and on the rest of this graphic, you can also see the other matches that we've got in store for you today. My eyes, though, Vicky, drawn to that Hangzhou Spark and Soul Dynasty match. Yeah, I'm excited for that one. That's one that I definitely have uh, my Preds already locked in for right before everything got started. That's going to be a good one. You definitely <laughs> don't want to miss that. And the end right there, too, after the performance yesterday, kind of one of our contenders teams still stick it through, be able to take care of the Shanghai Dragons, especially after what we saw Dreamers do in week one. They beat the Shanghai Dragons 3-1, so you definitely know it's back to the drawing board for this team to see that they do not fall to another contenders team. Absolutely, but that's a tough ask too because when you take a look at the talent on these contenders teams as well as how they earned their way to be able to play in this stage, 
I mean, come on. These are some really incredible players, and they absolutely earned and deserve their spots in these summer stage qualifiers. And you can see O2 Blast right here starting to take the stage. Taking a moment for the crowd to welcome them. We got Prophet, Lil P making his appearance once again. Who are you? Protect, Surge, Karu. Small team here just getting ready, getting set up. Also, just absolutely love the fact that we get to see these players play against these teams live in Seoul at the WDG Esports Studio. Shout out to WDG. We also welcome now the Seoul Infernal. So Infernal, these are players that you have been able to see grow into these big shoes. Filling them incredibly well as well. I mean, every single time you take a look at the Soul Infernal, I feel like people have learned to expect to predict them to win their matches. O2 Blast, the Blast from the past, may be able to prove to be a formidable force here, but by the way that the Soul Infernal are playing, I don't see them dropping a match this stage either. If anything, what we already witnessed in our first week, they were able to beat the Hangzhou Spark, give you guys some history here. If you guys missed out on that week's action, they beat them 3-0. And against Poker Face, they did drop one, I believe. It, it did end 3-1 as we take a look at the match preview for today against O2 Blast and the Soul Inferno. We just saw the Soul Inferno also beat the Guangzhou Charge 3-0 yesterday. So already looking to be in a dominating fashion. Just so strong, and uh, I totally agree with this match preview graphic. You are not prepared. I don't know how many teams are actually prepared to be able to face off with them, Mickey. It's been so tough going for so many of these teams, even taking a look at some of their most recent records. O2 Blast, their former roster, able to hold their own against them in the spring stage knockouts, but they have a completely different roster now when you take a look at their players. And that 3-2, so long ago, feels like it might be so far away. Talk about being prepared. One match I cannot wait to see between the Soul Infernal is going to be next week's first match against the Dallas Fuel. That really will determine which of our teams mm -hmm. that are leading the way in the East are going to be able to come out on top. So much to look forward to for this squad here as we take a look at O2 Blast now getting set up at the table. It's going to be exciting because this is another team that has a lot to prove after the performance last week. Coming short, literally ending 0-2. They don't want to be 0-3 Blast here in this case. Going up against the best team, it's going to be so difficult, Necra. It really is going to be difficult, but you can see all of the love that is out there from the fans that are in the arena to be able to cheer these teams on. And you hit it right on the head at the very beginning of the broadcast, talking about how much love and support O2 Blast as a team and as a legacy does hold in the Korean community and beyond that. So I'm so excited to be able to see the support for them here too. Yeah, what I love about these live tournaments is being able to not only have the audience support these teams, but then you get to see the best of both worlds where teams feel that power up of the energy of the support or teams that may get nervous even if the yeah. crowd isn't all there for them, you know? It, it's a bit of both. You still got the lights on you, you gotta play out of a different setup out here, you gotta feel comfortable. A lot here for these players, but a lot of them also have been used to this type of performance. So just another day at work for a lot of these players that are just getting right back into form. That's such a great point that you bring up because we have seen teams, um, like just taking a look at like the Florida Mayhem, for example, falter a little bit under the pressure of having that live audience mm -hmm. because you can see their reactions to the things that are happening because you are facing them. And while your focus is on the screen, your periphery can still see how the crowd is reacting to the plays that you make. But just to give you a visual, the O2 Blast starting lineup should be pretty stock standard when it comes down to how O2 Blast played out their first few matches of the stage. Yeah, playing through a, a different variation of the roster. Most of this roster that played in the knockouts, they get picked up by the Overwatch League team. So they had to go through a significant roster change out here. And you can see that they still are making those adjustments while we take a look at the starting lineup right now for Soul Inferno.
dude feels like this needs to be rescued, and indeed it does. Look at how aggressive he's oh. able to get right now. Oh. Everybody's dropping. And it is just a field day for Zest. Oh my oh. god. MN3 has other plans, though! MN3 has other plans, though! I love my videos, Nekara. Every time I get to see them, they never get old. Even when they replay over and over again, it always gets me excited to get into this series. Again, looking at the starting lineup and the highlights that these individual players have been able to do on the Soul Fertile. They also are getting a support of their own from the crowd, coming through with their signs, all excited here. It's a bit of a mix here between our audience for both O2 Bless and the Soul Infernal. I was a little disappointed by the rebrand of the Philadelphia Fusion to the Soul Infernal, but huh. the fans love them so much. I feel like they haven't skipped a beat when it comes down to showing their support for these teams, as well as these incredible players. I mean, MN3 and Zest, the last season alone, were able to make such names for themselves when it came down to their hero pools, as well as the standout performances they were able to have in the Eastern region. Mag as well. I mean, yeah, you're going to see him as a little bit of a new look here for the Soul Infernal in particular coming into this season. But he has also been able to show up in such a big way, expanding his hero pool a lot to be able to show off everything that he's got and show the versatility of the Soul Infernal overall as a team. Yeah, the history that this team has with so many of the players that make up the Soul Infernal and then even the audience showing their support out here. You saw the sign, shout out to Unknown, letting us know, I'm planning a trip to Toronto thanks to the Infernal. Really highlights <laughs> how fans are willing to travel across the world to show that support for the big stage out here as they deserve as we take a look at the side by side here, which will, by the way, change significantly as we still play through the summer stage here. Looking at the comparison between Who Are You and Zest and the limited time that they have been able to play. That's Zest mean. is insane though, Necro. Nah, like, I, so I highlighted mean. it before. <laughs> it, it, it is significant in comparison, but Z I've always been a, a Zesty fan, even one, while he was on the Fusion. His Tracer mm -hmm. always puts on a show. And I can't wait to see how that transfers over for today. But once again, his survivability is out there. But these stats will change throughout the course of the few games that O2 Blast will be able to participate in. Yeah, like that that's not nice. The the stats are so <laughs> skewed because of the team's overall performance records just in the first week alone. Soul Infernal, they've got their stats padded to the stars right now when it comes down to the amount of eliminations, their deaths per 10. Just overall, they're going to have a little bit of inflation when it comes down to that. But we're heading over to Ilios in our first map of this set. You can see what else is going to be in store for us if we end up going to maps 4 and 5. Uh, but O2 Blast, they definitely have their work cut out for them, especially knowing that Ilios is such a good dive map overall. Against one of our better teams here in APAC. I was gonna say, Necro, the only skewed I know is our insane on a player on the Inferno. But you know what? Going into <laughs> our first map, getting set up here. Other highlights that we have seen. Just wanted to highlight the individual players from O2 Blast against these Giants. We've seen already what Lil P could do coming right back again after seeing him in the first stage on Soul Dynasty. Who are you? Got to see him back in what, 2022, I believe, on the Dragons. There are players here on O2 Blast that can shine, but again, it's going to be difficult when you're constantly going through these roster changes, making these adjustments on the short amount of time that you can make them against a team like mm -hmm. the Stolen Pearl that have stuck together. That's the biggest thing that O2 Blast are dealing with right now. You've got a singular tank in the front line. Protect is new to this roster heading into the Summer Stage Qualifiers. And O2 Blast have shown a few signs of weakness when it comes down to some of their communication. But it's gonna be O2 Blast making their way to the point first, hoping to try to take down MN3 before he gets the better of Protect on that mantra. And that health pack too, that's why Protect was trying to initially stop him. Protect taking a lot of damage here and so is skewed. Who are you opening things up alongside Surge? Two out, make it three, lost out from the Inferno. Even though Blast did lose out on Karu, that's still gonna put the number advantage in O2 Blast's favor. Well, they are gonna make their way over to take the point first. <laughs> I was worried for a second they weren't gonna actually get the cap there before Soul Inferno could come back and recontest. Well, a slight little bit of lag there. And as I say that, we're also gonna get a bit of a pause coming through. 
But let's talk about the difference in these teams really fast. Mag is known for the Wrecking Ball. That is something mm. that could have potentially been expected coming out from the Soul Infernal, whereas O2 Blast smartly playing around that, going over to a more Brawl-centric composition with the Ramatra at the front that has that shield as well to be able to help bolster up Prophet's Hanzo. And even then, too, we've seen Protect pop off on the Diva before, so we could possibly see that going forward mm -hmm. as well. If the Ram doesn't work out here, it depends on how quick we get to see MM3 build up that EMP being on the Sombra, while Zess is going to continuously harass the backline being on that Tracer. But O2 Blast with that strong start already with Prophet opening things up, and then Search being able to get that first pick. O2 Blast get to put themselves in the driver's seat, not only in terms of ult charge, but in terms of positioning here, too. Okay, just, mm -hmm. just waiting real quick before we dive right back into the game. But I like how you highlighted Protect here because starting off on that ram, you are going to be able to have that barrier, which is going to be the difference maker in comparison to the Diva. It does have that Matrix to help heal for both Search and Karu, but Search already seems like he's able to help fend for himself being on that brig to deal with the Tracer that's going to come from Zest. There's a lot of different pieces that O2 Blast are trying to play around, almost like a chess match. If they are able to expect that Mag would come out on the Wrecking Ball and they would also be able to pepper in that Sombra and Tracer damage, there are ways that O2 Blast can come into this one a little bit more prepared. And as you pointed out, having control of the point first is a huge asset for O2 Blast to be able to get a lot more ultimate charge as well as just capture progress on the point. They can hold that Ramatra up a little bit closer, play a little bit more supportive to Search and Karu in the back line, who are fairly stable and also really nice targets there for MN3 and Zest, and that will, should help them a lot to be able to try to get these early picks, but Soul Infernal are slippery. You'll see MN3 and Zest try to go after that back line, and the Pulse Bomb too, unfortunately gonna miss its mark. We will definitely be able to keep harassing Skewed. Immortality Field was already called in by Fixa, I guess deleted and Protect is able to immediately retaliate and find Zest in that attempt with the Pulse. Infernal, lose out on that backline, lose out on more members, and O2 Blast still remain on this point here while Prophet gets into position on the Hanzo. What's really tough about the backline that Soul Infernal are running is that it's the Zenyatta and the Baptiste. Zenyatta is so incredibly vulnerable to Huar Yu's Tracer. Sure, we ended up getting to see the Tracer versus Tracer stats, but Who Are You is no slouch on the Tracer. It's gonna be tough for Skew and Fix to try to keep themselves alive without investing something like the Immortality Field. And a boost already used up onto Prophet. They are running away. The Immortality Field was called in again and skewed. Where are you going? Down to the Abyss as Prophet takes out the backline again. And I definitely agree here, Necro. Having the Zed here, you're going to continuously get pressed by Who Are You, but Prophet also as well with these different angles does not let Skewed get set up. Well, I think about it from the perspective that Skewed and Fixa died three times. They have yet to get an ultimate online, and we're already in last fight. Actually insane. Meanwhile, Surge has the rally. Dragon's gonna be called in the EMP right afterwards as MN3 finally finds Prophet. But guess what out here? Who are you? His pulse bomb gets neg negated by the immortality field, and Prophet still gets the pick with the dragons overtime ticking away. And Surge waited at the very end to pop that rally. Meanwhile, Mag rolls right in on the ball. Zez gets taken up by Who Are You? O2 Blast retired after the results of Week One and already opening up this first round strongly. Oh my gosh, Mag has to go back in and contest the point. Can't even do that. Skewed went down with the Transcendence. Yes. Talk about the pressure that O2 Blast is putting onto the back line. Skewed and Fixa got down so often. I have never seen a Baptiste completely miss out on getting an ultimate up in a round. What? <laughs> no Amp Matrix. No Trans. No Amp Matrix. Uh, like, taking a look at the replay right here. You just try to play off the back, gets deleted, Zest! Never to see another light while Protect says, oh, everybody's over to the side room. It was only a matter of time before Skewed was gonna fall victim to Protect's hands, and we are getting the swap up for Protect onto the Diva here, like you mentioned, as we usually see on Well, because he could get onto the high ground much easier. That's a really great call out too, because Zest is coming out on the Echo, already preparing to have to go for that aerial duel against that particular DPS player. And even you have Mag on the high ground as well, this is a great way for Protect to also try to contest that. As you mentioned, 
but Prophet too, making a really nice counter call, bringing out the Ash to also contend with Zest. I think mean, that first pick up to Mag is absolutely huge because this could set up O2 Blast very similarly to that first round when it had started. But to be able to have the Infernal respect that, go right back around the corner, and like you mentioned, Zest being on this Echo to try to get onto the high ground to put in some extra pressure, but that's just going to allow some free shots from Prophet in the back. Prophet is oh. already building up so much charge. Look at that! Another great way to be able to counter the Echo. It's already paying off in dividends here as Soul Infernal are just getting kept away from the point. Mac got so low in that fight. Look at how much healing investment had to go into it. Skewed at least will get the Nano online and an ultimate to be able to throw this fight this time around. But it has to pay off. Game protect. That Diva Bomb just in case the engagement comes in from Soul Infernal and he has to reset. Prophet's also about to get the Bob. Skewed with the Nano Boost. Gonna be what they are gonna use to start off this fight. Already activated onto Mac here. Protect trying to contest the back line over to the side room while who are you holds the front line right alongside and Prophet gets a follow-up onto Zest, stopping him from continuing on the pressure from the skies. Protect then follows up between Skewed and Vixa. Back line deleted and the rest of Soul Inferno are just falling like dominoes. It's a whole I don't even know what you would call like a knockout of dominoes. I <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that one, but it's Soul Infernal. It, it just, that's just what's going to be there in the dictionary here. Soul Infernal can't get any sort of progress on the board. They can't even really touch the point. Okay, oh, okay. This Prophet finally here. goes down, but yeah, uh, it's still not looking great. Taking care of the problem while MM3 lands, he pulls from sticks. Is definitely the way to start off a better fight here in last fight territory in favor for O2. Last the rally, though, in rally against Surge, gets shut down. Mag waking up after he had used the primal earlier for the previous fight when he was nano boosted originally before and then backed off to the rest of Infernal just to wait to re engage with them, now allowing the Infernal to flip this point. They had to invest so many ultimates at this one. But they were at least able to start taking down the grave bosses. Those deaths for Who Are You and Protect were their very first ones in this map. Zest has that duplicate. They look to try to copy Kara here. Or are you approaching on the higher ground alongside Prophet? I love watching the Tracer v Tracer play here, just trying to track exactly where they want to approach. So that's cheeky little high ground for two from who are you. Let me see where this dude puts it goes. Gonna be on the Oh, right there. Diva. Oh, it's on the Diva instead. M3 popping off, fighting the backline onto O2 Blast. Especially with the duplicate used, despite that, Who Are You still finds M3, but that's no issue. M3 will get right alongside the rest of the Inferno, just as quick. Winning another team fight to try to equal the Browns here against O2 Blast. Just being able to use the duplicate there as well as the nano has bought Soul Infernal some valuable time to get this ultimate rotation back on its feet. So you have the M3 Pulse Bomb, that paid off dividends for them, but it was able to get that stick under the backline of O2 Blast just a couple of fights ago, and Mag with the Primal Rage as well. This should buy Soul Infernal enough time to get something else, maybe the rally up there to be able to contest with the Bob. We are entering into final fight territory now for this round. Soul Infernal looking like they've set themselves up for success to take this one and take us to a round three. Misses out on that pulse bomb after he had used a free call earlier against MM3. Now losing out on Prophet. Search gets hit with a big anti. O2 blasts out on another team fight and Soul Infernal already reaching the 99% with nobody left in sight from O2 Blast. Overtime taking away. Doesn't seem like anybody from O2 Blast could even touch the well. We are going on to round number three for our first map. All right. O2 Blast taking the win on Ruins and now Soul Infernal getting on the board for a well. That means that we're going over to Lighthouse next, which Soul Infernal being able to take a look at the Echo Dive coming out from them should be able to have a bit of an upper hand when it comes down to this particular round. But Void and Evan 3s Pulse Bombs looked very clean on the second round when it looked impossible for Evan 3 to keep up with URU and that Ruins round.
even bigger when he the first pick in that fight to start off things was on Karu who had that nano boost ready that could have turned mm -hmm. everything right back around for Ocean Blast. Seeing the progress that they had made initially on the point. Now getting started, no changes here. Zest still sticking on the echo. The Zest Echo works a little bit better on Lighthouse as well. Take a look at all of the different places that you can hide around well, a little bit more of that open space, so you don't have these large pillars or even the Lighthouse itself to be able to work around. But if Prophet gets a chance to get set up on the high ground with the Ash, that makes Zest's life much, much harder, but it's a bit easier to LOS it on this map in particular. <laughs> Okara was trying to nail him down. He was literally one, then gets put to sleep, and then gets hit with a huge anti. Still, despite that, search is the first to go down because Mag is doing amazing with these follow ups alongside Zest. Fighting these three picks speeds that's so infernal now have the advantage on the point first. It's a matter of time before they all come falling down. This is where Soul Inferno love to play. When they've got the wind in their sails and they also have momentum to be able to ride upon. So Infernal now taking capture of this point starts to put the, you know, the onus on them a little bit to try to keep the pressure up onto O2 Blast. You'll see them take this forward positioning. Prophet's going to start to call the Soul Infernal back to the point. So, oh no, the anti. Oh uh, yeah, hitting Protect and Who Are You who tries to back away in time. At least Prophet from O2 Blast can try to take advantage of the- Oh, well, take advantage of going back to the spawn room. I was gonna say the health pack that's behind <laughs> this point. So that way they can try to work around what little health that they can work with if Search and Karu keep getting harassed as they are by Zest and Mag, who are new backing away now in the health pack himself. They're gonna wrap around him, trying to sandwich him. He is out of there using all his blades after using a recall earlier too. Such an eco fight win here for Soul Infernal to take two. That's gonna be five ultimates on the board versus O2 blasts. Pulse bomb. That that might help. That MN3 is hunting for a pick in the back line as well, and Karu looks mighty nice. It's not oh. gonna end up getting the stick this time. This time around, but search goes down first again! Three times in a row, the back line is in shambles. Yes, Prophet comes in with the EMP, but we need the follow potential, and with Protect not there, it's really only who are you. The duplicate from Zest has been activated. It's because we're already entering final fight territory. They're just trying to stagger them in. That was really rough when Mag was going after the back line of O2 Blast, and now the shoe's kind of on the other foot. Search and Karu having an incredibly tough time getting either of their ultimates online for this round. And as we start to approach that 90% mark here, Mac could just juggle them all away from the rest of the oh, front no. line. Search is already down to the rally! Again, off the anti from Zest. The comms are going crazy as Zest now finds who are you. Overtime ticking away and two are out from O2 Blast. Make it three. Now Protect Force to pop the primal desperately to try to make his way back. At least try to contest this. Meanwhile, Mag is doing the same thing, trying to force him away, but with an anti. How long can Protect last? He misses out on the window. He can't come back. Even with the rally, O2 Blast are out of there. Losing out map number one. So Inferno put a point on the board. What a big comeback for Soul Infernal to make as well. That first round was so convincing for O2 Blast. They had full control of the situation on Ruins and made Soul Infernal's job way too difficult. But when they're in their element, being able to play that Winston Echo or the Somber Tracer, any sort of variation of that dive, that's where Soul Inferno look their most comfortable and the cleanest. It was just nailing down these individual targets that we saw from the Soul Inferno. Search, literally searching for another life. He was not able to survive any of the entry <laughs> engagements with the rest of O2 Blast. But it's the quick adjustment that we saw from the first round that O2 Blast won versus the next two following rounds with Zest sticking onto that Echo. Actually beautiful out here. Even seeing some early uh, first Overwatch League fans in the audience, we're gonna be going on to a break. We got map number two on the other side. Don't miss out.
everyone, welcome back to Soul Infernal. Take map number one on Elios, 2-2-1. Two, two, O2 Blast put up a pretty good fight in that first round, but then immediately the, ad the adaption from the Infernal came in so strong with Zest being on the Echo, being up to date with Mag and these follows, harassing the back line from O2 Blast. Now, as we move on to Eichenwald, though, I'm excited to see because I'm expecting that Echo to probably be stuck through from the Soul Infernal Necro. Look at all the love for Soul Infernal as well. I love my headcanon that this is what powers the teams on stage. Just these individual <laughs> signs and love and cheers that are going for each team. I mean, they got the jerseys as well. These are hardcore fans out here. Oh my goodness. It's all the skewed and fixa signs giving them uh, yeah. <laughs> their support. Absolutely love, love it. it. Supporting all the Soul teams out here as the audience make their way into supporting the squad that we got on the stage here. Now, looking at the progress of our first map. Now, as we move on to Eichenwald, once again, I'm excited because after the performance that we just saw on Helios, we saw this quick adaption coming in from the Soul Infernal. Keep Little P off the Tracer, though. I, I on, rather, on the Sombra, because oh. that really <laughs> sometimes in the past, it hasn't really worked out here. Wondering what are the adjustments we're gonna have from O2 Blast, thinking about how Search was usually the first one picked off and harassed from the Soul Infernal. That was their target focus, and Karu did everything that Karu could to help out Search. We even saw the anti on Zest, trying to shut him down, putting him to sleep. Even on top of all that, it still wasn't enough. That's the thing about control. It's a wild, wild west out there. Sometimes a lot of those team fights and engagements don't make a whole lot of sense and they favor the defensive team more often than not. If you've got control of the point, you can typically ride the momentum there. So that's what happened with Soul Infernal. We're able to take it out of the clutches of O2 Blast in the second round. And then third round, of course, they started with the capture and able to go full from there. But when it comes down to like hybrid or escort with those map components, <laughs> <laughs> Always love hearing the energy from a live crowd. That helps it too. Really, it really, it does, it helps. We talk about it, but some players, they may get nervous, some may feel it mm -hmm. as a power up as we see MM3 trying to go for a cheeky shot on the other side here. Snakey, snakey. Nice yeah. Uh, oh, search, search should be shading his way with the barrier up over to the <laughs> side. Oh, that was so relatable. Oh, who in profit? Coming in, being able to find Zest off that one angle. Zest was lingering in for a little too long here. Allows him to benefit off that first pick for right now. Yeah, Prophet's gonna have to back off too now after receiving that anti-nade. But both of these compositions we're seeing on the defense for O2 Blast and the attack for the Soul Infernal are looks we've already seen from them in the summer stage. They have both played this map of Eichenwalde, so we should expect to see these compositions as we've seen them before. Oh, goodness. Prophet got put to sleep, then got hacked right afterwards. Really telling here from Soul Infernal. Especially trying to get through this first choke. Prophet just looking right behind him, just to try to check where Zest may be coming in from. With these Maywalls though, too, here from Who Are You, especially in this first point, you could negate some of these rotation approach from these angles onto that point, but it's a matter of just trying to stop Infernal first in that choke as MN3 comes in with the hack again onto Prophet, splitting some of that attention off from O2 Blast. Mag's falling incredibly low. Souls MN3, skewed and fixed up, putting in the double time though, as skewed as the Nana Boost immediately puts it onto Mag, clearing some of that extra space, finding Surge first again. Haru was so close to getting the Nana Boost, and that was a difference maker right here to start this engagement for Soul Infernal. Really nice way to start things off, but talk about those May walls you mentioned coming in a little bit clutch, cutting off Mag's access to the back line, and now for you get the chance to clap back a little bit. But Mag has the primal rage to be able to dish it back out. Where's the follow up though? Mag's kind of waiting for the rest of Soul Infernal to be able to get back here before they come back in, but the Dragon Strike gets invested. A lot of damage from trying to jump over that initially there too. Now O2 Blast gets a profit. Mag was living for a really long time until that very moment right there. Because he had the Nano Boost and then, yeah, like you mentioned, we saw the Primal coming in right afterwards. Even with that snipe though, Whoa. with the nade, nobody was able to get that pick. And here comes that EMP landing onto two. Rally activated from Surge right afterwards to retaliate, but it still forces M3 to back away. 
Well, what I'm finding really interesting here is the EMP didn't land on Search at all. We're also seeing double Doomfist on the table. Both Mag and Protect coming back on that hero just be able to get back to the point a little bit faster. But Mag's going straight back to spawn. I don't know if this is going to work out against who are you. Especially how on point his walls have been thus far. Just trying to separate the fight now. It's another reset here for Soul Inferno. And they've really been trying to put in a lot, but with little to no follows between the Nano Boost and the EMP that we saw. They have a chance to get it back online again. Especially knowing that they have to wait for Zest to be able to come back in. MN3 gets a little bit more time to try to get set up in the back line. But I really like this swap as well. Zest is still going to have a lot of trouble as Prophet's been able to land so many of these shots. But at the very least, you're able to play around the verticality of these buildings just a little bit better. Take a look at Zest's vantage point now to give some really nice intel over to Soul Infernal to initiate these dives as well. Now you got basically less than 30 seconds on the clock to at least get that first hit, get this payload moving. Best case scenario. Nana boost, Hunter Nana boost here between Karu and Skewed. Mag having to back away here, trying to continue on the pressure onto Surge while Prophet trying to definitely go for the health back. He finds both of them in that side room now, juggling like he's in the circus. Finding Karu before jumping right back into the action just when they needed it with less than 10 seconds to get this payload moving. Yeah, Mag was actually so angry. I would be too, to be fair. Mag in most of those fights wasn't able to play the game at all. Either he was getting slowed down by Hewer Yu's Mei, or getting completely chunked down by Prophet's Hanzo. There were so many wrenches being thrown into that plan. But Mag has a chance to get set up once again. You can see him in three scouting for an opportunity to be able to use the CMP. But what is, what is Protect doing? Oh! <laughs> Protect. Oh, he can go for the reset. He got the reset. That's okay, why he overextended. I... <laughs> he wouldn't go for that if he didn't have the meteor strike online, but that was such great reaction timing there. Oh, no, but as he fell immediately oh. into MN3's open arms to land a three man EMP, Surge still alive here as a rally, but nobody to help rally around. The rest of O2 Blasts are down, and Surge is going to be the last one to meet them right back. Oh, my goodness. Frame perfect sleeps into a frame perfect EMP. Such great timing there. And MN3 really earning this ablaze status. We're gonna take a look at also. Oh my god. I can't believe Mag actually got out of there alive. Mr. Bad was... is insane. <laughs> even without the that Primal, even without the Nana Boost, he, he's great. <laughs> Miz Mag at the end of the day, and Zest has that duplicate. The rally now finally being popped in with the anti onto protecting Karu Protect. Can't heal right through that. Prophet gets the retaliation onto MN3. But the number advantage is in favor for Inferno as Zest from the Skies has been harassing the O2 Blast team from down below with the focusing being between Prophet, who are you, is next. It's a cleanup here, and it's going to be able to have more space to get this second point. Zest Echo has been finding so much more value than the Tracer provided earlier on in the match. Part of it because Search and Karu were able to keep themselves alive so well, but Zest with the duplicate can go so aggressive too with Mag. And now he's going to be able to duplicate the Ana with another big anti of the Karu and Surge. No follow up between MN3. Zest is keeping everybody alive. Gets the mana boost that puts it on to fix. They're so close to getting that rally. They want to get that rally as quickly as possible to clear this point. They're going to be able to just hold on to it here for Fixa because they're going to be able to get that second point already after clearing out four of those members from O2 Blast. <laughs> did, did, you, did you see the smile on Zest's face? I also thought that was a little bit of a cheeky squat right there before maybe going back to spawn to change up that hero choice. Echo is not the hero that I would have picked to go into this third point. But Soul Inferno have a little bit of time to work with it. The Echoes are putting on enough pressure. Maybe just try it once and see if you're able to get something done. Especially if you get Rally in Lou with the EMP right afterwards from Fix allowing the Inferno to get aggressive here to follow up from that EMP. It did land on the back line initially and Protect getting caught in that. They lose out on Protect and Profit. Another big anti with the follow-up. So are you managed to survive for now? He had the recall. He was forced to use it up and nobody left from O2 Blast to contest this next corner Necro. 
This is starting to get do or die for O2 Blast. Soul Inferno are on a mission to full capture this point after they were awarded a second life and then overtime on point number one. Uh, it's gonna be a soldier duplicate here for Cess to try to completely lock down these yes. And that's right after Who Are You came out on the soldier with a desperate, desperate swap. Trying to go into a much more close quarters composition here for O2 Blast. It's working against them in this third point. The way that Zest is playing, he's wiping everybody out from O2 Blast. These antis have been on point. Protect, even with the Annihilation. Can't clear off the Soul Inferno. Zest is just too good at the end. Feeling over 7,000 damage, 21 elims, getting most of those elims at that third point section. I wouldn't have picked the Echo in third point, just knowing how limited that Skybox is. But I guess if you're Zest, it doesn't matter if you play Ground Echo or not. <laughs> oh my goodness. And Zest's mechanical skill, too, really lends itself well to being able to play any hero. This is so good. That Sojourn Look, was the perfect. Haru's literally oh. one. He was literally one. Imagine Mag oh, just man. angrily walking on the other HP side, like, I can't do anything about this now, like... <laughs> but that's why that's the May was so good at the very beginning, Necro. For sure. Yeah, Mag had such a tough time being able to get access to the DPS and the squisher targets in the back line. O2 Blast played around that beautifully, and that was exactly what gave Soul Inferno so much trouble to capture that first objective. It had to be an overtime there, but... O2 Blast still have to finish this map. Soul Infernal capped all three points with just a touch of time left in the bank. So, <laughs> Let's we're started. really looking at profit right now on the Hanzo to try to keep getting these headshots we've been seeing. So impactful so far. Yeah, maybe they start out with the, the well, yeah, they're going for the Cheeky Widow. You can see the Light Weaver there to pull profit back just in case. Surely not. All right, this is one of the quick swap up here, too. This is crazy. Even with that 13 second time bank from Infernal, they, that was all from being held before they got the payload moving initially, even with the extra little time bank that they had worked with initially, but it was non stop right after they got that payload moving. To see if O2 Blast could work with a lot more time here. See already Prophet holding onto the high ground alongside Protect. Search already getting hit with a nice anti from Skew, who's been on point there. It's been really nice, but this Ramacha composition is going to be very slow going to try to make its way forward. They're looking for a Prophet to try to get an opening pick with the Hanzo. There, there it is. There it is. Protect's gonna go forward now. Absolutely huge here too. Evan 3 had tried to escape with literally one HP, and Mag gets deleted after getting hit with an anti. The follows that we're seeing now between Prophet off of Haru are definitely there, while Who Are You continuously presses what is left of the Soul Infernal on the other side now as O2 Blast finally get this payload moving now. That was so fast also. Just in comparison to how much trouble Soul Infernal had on their attack push, O2 Blast is playing around these picks from Prophet. It's going to be a slow rotation of that and Protect just constantly inching forward with the Sumatra Shield. But if O2 Blast can keep this up, Prophet can keep finding these opening picks. It should be smooth sailing for them too to get to the second point. But the verticality is something that O2 Blast will struggle with. Mac has free access to that high ground. Protect does not. That Ramatra has to walk up those stairs. While getting hacked by MM3 too. Who are you? Yeah. Backing away, managing to get on top of that health pack. As that pulls bomb, looking for the opportunity. Find Scooter fix it, but the Nana Boost is online for the Infernal while Mag takes onto the high ground. Having this tracer duel from inside this room while Prophet finds the headshot on the skewed negating. The nano boost that could come out. Now losing out on Fixa. Backline completely gone. Mag has already popped the primal gear to stay in this fight. But who are you with that pulse one pick was absolutely big to force the Infernal to respect this space. So Infernal need to get back into this one with the EMP. M3 has earned that over the course of a few fights now. But that's still like the pulse bomb missing. This EMP has to do something. Try to get the hack on the profit. Actually, it gets pushed back here as the rally comes out from Surge. Back in the way here before re-engaging right afterwards, but for Prophet finds his mark. 
Right after that, though, he leaves himself vulnerable, and Skewed is here to clean up on IO4, cleaning up O2 Blast. Backline gone, he is an anti. Immediately, it's getting taken down. He's gonna save that Annihilation for this next fight, because Soul Infernal win another team fight. Okay, Soul Infernal finally able to stop this cart in its tracks. But not before O2 Blast were able to get it within one fight territory of that second checkpoint. With Prophet starting to lay around with this wall climb, called out the Protect Annihilation. Soul Infernal are going to push this, hoping to try to get that Annihilation out of Protect's pocket before they're able to get back to this point. It's at such an awkward place for O2 Blast, though, because you can't necessarily go through the castle on that left side to try to get back to it. It's in this very exposed corner. And with their come too, they really have to rely on these individual yeah. big impactful picks that Huaryu can maybe land with a full. Another anti out to Karo, but this time around, it lands and him going right back to the spawn room doors. Profit to meet him right afterwards. I love the communication coming in between Mag and Skewed, always with these antis from across the field. Look how desperate they are to stop Skewed. Search literally flailing away while Mag is like, get back over here, taking him out. And it's going to have to be another reset and more time wasted for O2 Blast. Protect didn't even get a chance to use the Annihilation either. That is still a tool that's in O2 Blast Pocket, but at the same time, you have to be able to use these alts in order to start creating that space. Oh, Soul no Infernal way. are not letting up the pressure though. Oh my god! What? Is this a horror movie? What? I thought this was Overwatch. Yes. Watch. Prophet, he, played, he peaked for one second. And he had three members of the Infernal just jump on top of him because they can. That was oh insane. God. It's Junkenstein out here. I think Halloween came a little too early. Actually terrifying view from Prophet's <laughs> point of view. We'll love to see that again. Slow-mo, actually. Nataboo's coming in from Skewed onto Mag, and he's just holding forward, Necker! Literally just staring at Surge while he meets his inevitable doom. They are taking advantage of all this space being taken up. Soul Inferno are just gonna keep pressing onto O2 Blast. Forget the Vortex, the Annihilation's finally been pop protect. Needs to do something here, so he's desperate, but everyone's left his vicinity. Well, he did something. He went back to spawn. Um... That's a lot of time for O2 Blast now off the board. They're only down to a minute left. After using the Annihilation, Protect is going to go over to the D.Va. If you weren't going to use the Annihilation, though, I would have loved to see Protect make this choice a little bit earlier, give up 30% of the all charge, and be able to get the mech online here for the D.Va. Here we see the rush getting called in from Fixa. Skewed gets taken out here. The trade for Karu, but the minute that Surge pops that rally, it gets denied to help out the rest of O2 Blast here. Backline out of O2 Blast as they make their way right back into this fight. Prophet gets taken out next as Who Are You does get hacked by MN3, who's been holding on to this EMP here, getting ready for that next fight, because now you have less than 30 seconds from O2 Blast to even get to that second point. MN3 hasn't needed it. Soul Infernal haven't needed that EMP to be able to close out any of these fights because of just how aggressive Mag has been playing and getting these big picks. So they do have it as the finishing blow to this map to be able to bring Soul Infernal to that match point. I expect MN3 to be able to get multiple targets with this EMP and the follow-up from Mag could be huge. They're so split up here! Ah, uh, the desperate Orisa too, getting caught in the EMP. So does Profit now, fighting them in that side room. Ooh, does he have the pulse? Protect the last strike to keep it together for the rest of the team though, but by himself it's not gonna be enough and neither is that pulse bump from Who Are You? So Inferno clear up O2 Blast once again on Icon Vault this time around. Map number two going in favor for the Soul Inferno. Soul Inferno needed that overtime push. They ended up getting it and they ended up converting it over into a map win off the back of some incredible communication between MN3, Zest, and Mag. But I want to call out Fix's Kiriko as well. That was a choice that we haven't seen a whole lot of when it comes down to it interacting with these sort of dive compositions. But that access to the high ground, the ability to use that swift step in order to get close and personal with the opposition, 
paid off in spades. Fixa has incredible mechanical skill. So to see that being utilized, not just on the break, but those high impact picks of the Kiriko, so, so clean. It was beautiful there. Seeing that action was so infernal. That's going to do it for map number two on the other side. We got map number three on Route 66. We'll see you soon. So Inferno sitting at match point after taking Iken Vault for map number two. We enter map number three territory here to try to be the cherry on top for this team. Or can O2 Blast move away from being O3 Blast instead? 
Look at all the support. I mean, we're out here fighting. I think there's more fans for Soul Infernal, though. I mean, we got a little bit of bias, right? When it comes down to just showing support for the winning team at the moment, maybe. But I love this. I, I see Zest out there. Maybe a few other, a few other like key, key supportive signs for for Soul. But O2 Blast really needs to support and love right now too. Yeah, a lot of those signs saying "Let's go Infernal," giving the energy that at the moment they don't really need. Looking like they're breathing through the series already. O2 Blast starting off with such a strong start. That first round that we saw in Ilios. They were able to really come and swing, preventing the Soul Inferno from completely taking over the point until Soul Inferno made the adjustments that they did with Zest being on that Echo, popping off all the way to the end of Icon Vault when he had swapped over to the Tracer, still having that performance. Moving on to Route 66, Necra, are you expecting any changes here from Soul Inferno? Are you expecting maybe that Tracer to be still stuck onto Zest, or are we still going to see the outcome of that Echo really coming again? So we haven't seen either of these teams play Route 66 so far yet in the summer stage. But Route 66 is classically a Sombra Tracer map. I fully expect M3 and Zest to come out on the Sombra Tracer, Mag to stick on the Winston. I don't think we're going to see too many changes when it comes to the Soul Infernal roster, but O2 Blast have to come out with something different. The Ramatra just didn't feel like a strong enough choice when you're relying so much on those High impact DPS picks coming out from Profit and Who Are You. The backline was getting dove too much. I would love to see a bit more of an aggressive dive, maybe protect leaning a bit more into the diva here. That and like Skewed was so on point with his antis. Actually insane. He was such a problem that you just saw O2 Blast mm -hmm. consistently just try to run into his face up on the bridge of Eichenwald right before that second point. And Mag just basically acting like bodyguard, <laughs> just making sure that no problems were gonna head towards Skewed's way. And even then, he was so important with those sleep darts too. Definitely expect yeah. the same to come out on Route 66 here, seeing that Who Are You sticking on the Genji this time. Who Are You is known for the Genji. I would love to see a little bit more of this. And I love getting a chance to see O2 Blast lean into some of the more confident picks that they have on the team. They are going to go with the Sombra as well, gives them a chance to set up on the defense and take some of those health packs away from MN3 and help who are you out in the process. But Sombra are already starting to make a bit of progress here as that card starts to go over towards that very first corner. That's just so slippery. Tries to get marked down by who are you who now gets hacked. Oh, another huge anti from Skewed. How does he keep doing it? It causes Garu to lose out first. Third to protect her also caught in that. Protect can't recover and four you can't either. M and three with the cleanup alongside Mag and the Soul Inferno now can walk forward with the payload. That payload is already starting to roll its way through Big Earls. Profit has an EMP online though. So if O2 Blaster will come back into this one as a full team of five, get the setup. Profit has the ability Potentially just shut this all down. M3 is also a little low. Gotta be really careful here as you take a look at O2 Blast setup for this EMP. See how Prophet could approach here. And then be able to come in from the high ground. I think that's the impact that he was looking for. The rest of Infernal is just managing to get away from there. Looking at Prophet as he's fighting ghosts. And a boost now, activated from Skewed onto Mag. He's also got the primal reset just in case at the very end here. But the rest of O2 blast the backline in so much trouble. Yes, who are you? Has the Nano boost onto him before Karu gets taken out. Didn't have the blade though at the very end, and that's just the Nano boost that has just been thrown in the trash. As O2 blasts are nowhere to be seen to stop them from getting that first point. Well, the EMP from Profit didn't do anything either. That was so much healing being pumped out there by Skewed that it bought them enough time to be able to land oh MN3's EMP. You hit the backline, and everything starts to crumble for O2 Blast's defense. That Nano got Who Are You maybe a little bit closer to the Dragon Blade, but you would have hoped that that would come online, maybe be able to save that point A defense for O2 Blast. But so infernal. I mean, uh, Mag gonna play Doorkeeper again. The Primal Rage is online, just hunting down some of these more slippery players. Where where is Protect going? I 
I'm still alone. He, he, he sees the ghost that Prophet is seeing too. Oh, he's oh, dead. Oh no, he wanted that blade so bad. Don't make it to the air. Mag, with his individual plays, have been finding opportunities to grief O2 Blast. Really, that's what it is. Surge Pop, the rally, was only activated for about three seconds before getting shut down. M3 coming in right alongside Fix to clean up what is left of O2 Blast. The Genji pick is really nice to be able to get these clear team fight wins either by itself with the nano or maybe even being able to pair that up with the EMP that is currently online. But M3 is going to strike first! Oh no, what? The impact here. Are you kidding me? The EMP is cleaning up once again and they're hugging their spawn room doors, Necra. <laughs> Profit! Oh no! The crack. And Skewed says, here, Skewed, throws out the anti to finish him <laughs> off at the spot. <laughs> it's like the spread damage coming through from the primary fire of M3 and Zest. Just plenty to be able to just accidentally pepper that damage over to kill Prophet before the setup. You or you may be able to stop Zest for a little bit, but... Genji's great if you can get the Dragon Blade out and actually be able to follow up these picks. So Infernal's not letting O2 Blast get this setup. Oh? Oh, can't even confirm the picks oh, on the We need to follow up. There we go. Who are you? But he gets in with the huge anti again from Skewed on point. Puts a stop to the Dragon Blade, the Nano Dragon Blade. Right, or rather, just the Dragon Blade on top of that gear. But Karu with a Nano Boost on to protect. No word in sight for any sort of follow-up. The last one to go down as O2 Blast put in everything minus the Annihilation that's gonna come online for this next fight, but that was tough to watch. That's so tough to watch because O2 Blast threw all of those ultimates at this fight and Protect just switched over to the Ramatra. So yeah, you might get the Annihilation up, but Toryu's already down. Protect can't even get out the door. Sorry, we see the like, uh, desperate swap the up. They need to uh, stop it. They need to uh, at least. Oh! They can't. They can't. Oh, down. East picking the 7 3. Goes out with a purpose. The annihilation isn't going to annihilate anybody. So infernal. Did not stop once that cart got rolling. Score. Oh, man. That's tough to watch if you're an O2 Blast fan. Initiating match. I was really looking forward to getting a chance to see who are you's Genji. The blade just never in a position to get pulled out because of the antis, the pressure from Mag. You can't deflect the Tesla cannon damage from a Winston. You also kind of can't deflect Skewed or Fix It either if they're going to be coming after you. Like who are you's whole goal as well? Try to get access to the back line. Get a quick pick. Get those blade resets. Go for those dashes again. It's so oh, difficult to boy. paint the picture of the comparison right now. I, although O2 Blast didn't even get a chance to win one team fight, really. Um, the back and forth is that there's only been three total deaths from the Soul Infernal this match alone, and it's been one from M3, which was the very end, by the way. That doesn't even count because he did it when again. he died when he used the EMP in their face. Zest has gone down once, and so has Mag. While Skewed and Fixa are complete diffing what we're seeing from Search and Karu. That, that's once, remarkable. Again, it's insane. Not only the damage, but then the healing output on top of that, and then the individual impact that Skewed has had with these antis has just stopped for you. You're never going to see that Genji have any impact. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I think the way that Skewed and Fixer are also just hugging each other makes it way too difficult if you don't have that coordination up front. Who are you who needs a bit of that follow-up there, whether it's coming through for Protect or even the Sombra from Prophet would have been an immense help to be able to try to get that down. But gotta give credit to the Peel from Mag as well. If Skewed and Fixer are in a bit of a pinch, then Mag can always go back and try to protect both of those supports. He cursed it though. Fixa is gonna go down this time around, but that's a bit to be expected when it comes down to Soul Infernal swapping to the defense. Especially with Prophet being on the Hanzo. We saw what happened in that first map alone. We're sitting in the back here is skewed, taking that more high ground position on top of the gas station. Zed's trying to call out who are you. 
right on top of that health pack. And the three's about to get the EMP again, but Zeth oh, going so down early. Oh! Protect Ron getting the follow up, and another five man EMP make it two in a row on the same map. Who are you, Protect? Try to put a stop to it as Fixit goes down once again. Skewed isn't going to be able to survive through the onslaught from Who Are You. Even with that EMP, O2 Blast still sticks strong here. O2 Blast able to withstand the EMP, but how would you have ever expected that to come online so quickly? That was the first ultimate on the board in this round. Which is also just incredibly remarkable coming through from that silver player. I'm going showing up time and time again. The hack on the profit. Silver to back for another recontest. Oh, protect with the E on the Zest Pulse Bomb while Who Are You managed to get impact from his own onto Skew, which is a huge first pick here because now you won't have the Nana Boost so while Zest still finds Who Are You, the rally from Surge to keep O2 Blast from having the advantage in this fight. Meanwhile, though, Mag has the Primal, so the reset is there. The survivability is going to outdo that of O2 Blast, especially now that your backline is gone. Profit taking a nap right back into the spawn, and Mag is juggling like he's back in the circus here. <laughs> yeah, he's got some good training going on, that's for sure. Oh, boy. We got a minute and a half left on the clock here for O2 Blast to try to make their way back into things. Protect Steva. Still ping off better than what we ended up seeing come out from the Winston or the Ramatra on the defense. That defense matrix has been super pivotal. Being able to eat up the pulse bomb from De Zest, as you were able to point out, but also just the boosters to help be able to get the peel with the defense matrix has been nice. Third, not going to play the game. Uh. <laughs> it's skewed, and the EMP said no. I like how uh -huh. Who Are You is able to get these retaliations, but every single time he gets a pick, he gets picked off himself. This time, it wasn't from Zest, it was from Fixa instead. The Diva Bomb for going into the reset, clear some space. Though while Mag is still oppressing the backline here, the Nana Boost was used up from Skew to keep Mag from hugging the front line of O2 Blast. Karu does have the Nana Boost himself, he's still holding on to that if they can have the opportunity now with less than 40 seconds of the clock for O2 Blast to get that first point. It's looking pretty dire for O2 Blast to be able to get into this one. Who are you has not been able to get past Big Earl's to try to land this Pulse Bomb. Karu's gonna have to throw this Nano Boost, potentially protect, maybe search, try to get the Rally online, just oh, be able no. to approach the cart. Okay, great start though for Profit. Huge here, gets the Eddie onto MN3, Fixa has the Rally here too. Saw the Dragons being put out by Profit, while he also has a Nano Boost on him. Trying to get the impact that he needs while Mag is holding on to the high ground. Overtime ticking away. He's got the primal ready. Mag is getting primal so quick. Dealing with the problem that it's dropped and fixed to getting him in position with the rally. Where can you run? The anti can't do anything. Fixa with the rally was able to also get the stun here with the shield bash. Mag finally gets taken down after being a raid boss, but Fixa is being the problem here. Everybody from the Soul Inferno have made their appearance to clear out this payload. Last one left is Who Are You? And nobody left in sight from O2 Blast. While well, they go through the rename now as O3 Splash, trying to steal that real quick. As the Soul Inferno are your winners for this first series. What a way to shut out the series as well. A big statement coming through from the Soul Inferno to be able to take that map. 3-0. O2 Blast couldn't get a single point of progress on the board there. I still see some incredibly bright moments for O2 Blast as a team. I know it doesn't feel good to lose in front of your fans. But Soul Inferno, they might have gotten the T1 buff out there. There was an immense amount of support for them out in the audience today. Of the respect here, our teams. O2 Blast really need to get back to the drawing board. It hurts for right now, but we've seen the adjustments little by little after this team has gone through a rework here. On the other side, Soul Inferno is such a difficult titan to overcome, especially in the APAC region. Giving their thanks over to the crowd. That was going to be our first and only match on land here for today. Always nice to see the support from the crowd when they could watch. We still have so many more matches to go, Necro. We do. We have three more today. This is one of our longer match days in the weekend. But that makes me even more excited 
because if this is the way to be able to start out today, I cannot wait to see what's going to be coming next. Love to see the love out there for Evan 3 and Zest. Very easy to tell that they are some crowd favorites taking a look at how many times that they have been shouted out in this entire series. Love to see the support here saying, you know, they're out here to their first land. Thanks to these two and our player of the match. No surprise here. He was going for the five time winner. Yeah of being player of the match. It's gonna be skewed. His first one, at least in the summer half of the Overwatch League. He got it four of the times earlier on in this season. And we have to highlight this player for all the right reasons. We've been talking about him from the very beginning, even with his impact on Icon Vault from map number two. But skewed is insane. His survivability, the antis, and the follow-ups in unison with MN3 and Mag have been out there. Zest 2 being on the Echo just helped out so amazingly. These sleeves too. And and the difference maker between what we saw from this backline versus the backline of O2 Plus was yeah, night and day. Look at the snipe out here, and then the immediate <laughs> snipe from the anti into getting the follow up onto both Surge and Prophet on the high ground. They were trying so hard to force Skewed off this bridge necker. Skew just overall was a huge problem for O2 Blast to deal with. And with all the space that Mag was creating on the Winston, how do you go after Skewed? Who do you send up there to try to bully him off of the high ground? This is a player as well that we've had the pleasure of watching grow into this support role. After watching him on the Los Angeles Gladiators the last season, able to show up on that team, but really just holding down the fort when it comes down to a lot of the dominance we've seen from Soul Infernal as a team this entire season. This positioning here. Oh my, that was at the very end. Prophet thinking that he was safe. Little He's not safe. Go anywhere there. No, no one is safe. The cracks on the door says, I regret everything. Skewed here at the very end. Oh, that was so sick with the sleep. He got so many uh -huh. of those tight window sleep darts initiated here. We take a look at his stats from this last match alone, by the way, able to get 8.2 biotic nade kills here, only dying basically three times on average. And you round it off at 2.5. The amount of enemies slept too, absolutely insane. Consistency across yeah. the board for those three maps that we saw them win on. But it was so crazy to see Skew just not only popping off for, the four, for four times where we highlighted him as player of the match throughout the course of the season, but now this one making it his fifth time to enter into the summer stage. Well, those sleeps is probably the most important statistic here. Not just because that was a lot of sleeps, but because of the types of targets that Skewed was actually hitting with those sleeps. It was usually somebody that was ulted, had the nano, literally anything. But let's hear from our player on stage with a great translation coming in from Unknown. 2023 Overwatch League Summer Stage Qualifier, 동부 오늘의 첫 번째 경기로 인사드립니다. 안녕하세요, 손혜민입니다. Hello, this is Son Hyeman, host of the interview 네, today. 역시나 오프라인 경기인 만큼 뜨거운 함성과 함께 시작했던 경기였는데요. 강 팀의 저력을 보여주듯 서울 임페리나리 3대 0 스코어로 승리를 가져가게 됩니다. POTM 받으신 스퀴드 선수 바로 모셔서 이야기 나눠보도록 할게요. 안녕하세요. We have skewed on the interview floor. Hello. 소감 어떠신가요? How do you feel? Oh, and congrats on the win. 좀첫 세트 때못 해가지고. I almost felt a little disappointed because I did a little bit bad in map one, but we won and that's what matters. So you mentioned map one, how did you bounce back from it? So our teammates were like keep having discussions about, hey, let's do as we did in scrims and then we naturally got back to our form. So, do you guys think that you were a little nervous coming into a LAN match? Uh, I don't think we were necessarily nervous, but we did have a lot of early mistakes and that kind of piled up a little bit. In Eichenwald, you were almost full held just to have you save the day with the anti nades and sleep. Um, so, like, what are your general feelings about that map? So, uh, yeah, we thought we had this kind of feeling that we might actually lose this map, and then I just kind of out of desperation through the nades and the sleep, and it worked out really well. So, a little bit um, of a little bit of a 
nervous feeling over there, but it worked out really well. So we noticed that um, unlike a lot of teams, like Infernal is really, really um, composed when there's a sleep dart. Nobody's like waking a slept target unless really needed. Is there any communications be behind that? So, I mean, this is something that is a result of a lot of practice. I usually call out, I slept someone, and then they just usually really, really careful about them. So, there are a lot, I mean, Ana is really kind of like the pronoun of a uh, flex support. Do you consider yourself aggressive or passive? I think I'm really aggressive. It kind of, uh, there's a give and take. I die a little bit more, but I'm also making a lot of things happen. So, you, uh, we noticed that you used Ana and Kiriko uh, alongside Winston at a double flankers. Any, instead of the brig, any reasons for that? We uh, looked at the enemy co opposition's composition and it wasn't really with the range and all that. It was a little bit of uh, a challenge to have the brig on. So I just called out to Fixa and hey, like, you know, you, you can play the brig. Uh, no, actually, you can play the Kiriko really well. So that's how the Anna Kiriko came to be. So, I mean, also, you guys played the Lucio. Was that like a team call? No, I mean, Fixo was like, this is a Lucio, this is a Lucio moment, and he just brought out the Lucio. So, next up is the uh, Fuel. Fuel said that they'll stomp you. Do you care to comment about that? I think that's a little cute because stomp is a strong word to say when they've never won against us. Who do you think's the key player for Dallas Fuel? A lot of fans came to the LAN event today to um, uh, support you. Do you have any messages to them? Thank you for all your support. And that is the end of the interview. Back to you, Vicky. Thank you so much, Unknown. Love being able to hear some of these thoughts coming in as well with these interviews. It makes it a lot more personal to get the thoughts of some of our players in that I love being able to hear that too, especially the Dallas Fuel call out. <laughs> Cannot wait to see how that match is going to go down because that's going to be amazing. But that does it for this matchup. Amazing to see the Soul Invernal and O2 Blast head up against each other. Next up, we've got the Guangzhou Charge and Panthera. We'll see you after this break.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Overwatch League Summer Stage Qualifiers here in the East. I'm Vicky Kitty, I'm Joe with Necra, and we are going to take you guys through our second match of the day after we just saw O2 Blast get blasted away by the Soul Infernal in a dominating 3-0 series. Guangzhou Charge versus Panthera. This is another opponent standing in Guangzhou Charge's way to be able to keep themselves a part of the conversation as one of the top teams. They've struggled at the start of this stage to keep their name up there in contention with Soul Infernal, with Hangzhou Spark, with the Dallas Fuel, and they are very hopeful to try to get a win here today. Especially knowing that Gaga just entered into the roster this week, and unfortunately, Guangzhou Charge fell short facing the Soul Infernal yesterday. They need to demolish Panthera desperately. And I mean that because right now they are sitting in eighth in the overall standings for the East standing specifically here, not within that top three, top four that they want to be sitting in here. So Bonjo Charge making the adjustments that they need after going in through the roster change as well. They need to uh, be able to stay on point here. Piggy leaving and Gaga joining the team. We did get to see some highlighted moments from Gaga after, what, it's been like nine months since we last seen Gaga. Yeah. I'm always so happy to see Gaga back and warming up to form, especially seeing how different he plays uh, now. Just you could tell how he's been warming up, maybe overextending just a little bit in the previous week that we had seen before, rather actually just yesterday. So we want to see him back to his form with the rest of the charge. But what a tough responsibility to have when you come into the roster when the Guangzhou Charge are already a little bit more defeated coming into this week and you still have to try to turn things around. But we got to take a look at Panthera, their opposition for this match, and the changes that they've made to this roster too. Arpen and a Peach joining the roster and making their debuts this week. A lot of changes going on here for Panthera, one of our other top contender teams to definitely look out for. Wondering how these changes are going to affect the approach that the Guangzhou Charge are going to be going into this series, especially after what we had already seen from the Guangzhou Charge just last week. They didn't lose out on any Tier 2 team. They did beat O2 Blast in that first series that they played off against in the East 3-1, and then they proceeded to fall over to the Hanjo Spark, but Seeing and now that we are playing against Panthera here, they do not want to be one of those first teams to fall to their hands. No, they don't. I mean, Panthera is also in a little bit of a struggle position right now. Yeah. They are 0-2 entering into the week, and this is where the going starts to get really tough coming down for these teams. They're up against a clock. This is the fourth match for the Guangzhou Charge. This is the third one for Panthera. Moving so close to the halfway point and you want to be in those top three teams yeah this is literally the last series that they play for this week 
just to end things off here for them before going on to the next week they'll be playing off against the dallas a team that has really turned things around for themselves within the region seeing the starting lineups for both of these teams here too thinking about panther looks like they're having a good time that's the energy that we need here especially looking at them being at the very bottom of the overall standing seeing the side-by-side -side comparison as well from both these teams before getting into this match whoa and what's really interesting about the statistics that we're seeing between Jimmy and Becky here on the Tracer is that despite the fact that Panthera has two losses under their belt, Becky is still putting up some impressive numbers in terms of the hero damage done as well as eliminations. You have to look at that and wonder whether or not this is Jimmy's meta at the moment. Jimmy isn't necessarily as well known for something like the tracer as much as we have hoped to be able to see him on something like those more long range hit scan choices and that's kind of scary taking a look at how jimmy is fitting into the lineup right now you'd love to be able to see him on something like the hanzo or the widowmaker We've also seen Becky, I believe, on the Echo at some point, too. We've been seeing a lot of iteration of that, depending on the maps that we've been going to. Is Our first map is Oasis here. I just gotta say, Jimmy is usually Himmy, so it is definitely going to be him up there with the rest of the charge to see what they can cook up here. Choice of one, more on that flex. We've seen the display of his Symmetra, the Sombra, the Echo as well to match that. But again, it's just also working alongside Gaga here in this roster. Far away, Xerneas as well. Are we on fire with that Ana? Xerneas with the Brig. Just trying to see what we're going to get started with here before diving into the match, but also giving a shout out to the audience that has stuck around to watch the games here live. Yeah, they're in for such a treat looking at the rest of the lineup of the matches that we have today. Already starting things off with another dominant performance from Soul Infernal, but now we get a chance to see if Guangzhou Charge can. Once again, try to get another win on the board this week, or Panthera can also turn things around. Both of these teams desperately looking at wanting a win to be able to make sure that they are still in contention for those play-in spots. We're going to see Echo Tracer Winston coming out from both of these teams. Arpen off to a blazing start here on the Winston. Love to see it here. Finding Zerny is first and far away, coming in right next from that focusing beam. Great start here already looking for Panthera. The Echo Diff is crazy here to just clean up what is left of the charge, but they are going to be able to take control over the point here first, and specifically looking at that Nano Boost that Develop could get first online for that next fight. There's not going to be too much coming online for either of these. Uh, maybe, maybe quickly if we end up seeing Panthera get some nice picks here. Nace is starting to run away with a little bit of charge on that Echo. And that could also make sure that Pandera can keep themselves in for control of this high ground here. Bully and Gaga away. Arpen is doing a great job of creating space right now for the DPS of Pandera. He's such a good job here too. Almost building up that duplicate comparison to choice of one. Big difference here. Becky literally won. Uses the recall. Thought about it for a second real quick before trying to re-engage here alongside Nice, who has the duplicate. Now it's going to be able to be utilized. Copies onto the Ana. They're going to build up a nano boost of their own. Maybe get it two side by side as Arpen is going to have to back away after getting hit with an anti from far away. He does have a nano boost as well to match up with Develop, who's been holding onto it. Here comes the duplicate that was originally used here. Nice is going to get out of here. The anti onto Arpen. He has the primal. Develop had used the Nana Boost earlier on, but gets taken out by Jimmy, who now finds the opportunity to find, finally get into place or harass that backline if he manages to get away. And there is making it so difficult for the Guangzhou Charge to even approach the point right now. Time and time again, this rally just feels so bleak. So meager in comparison to how much progress Panthera is making. Launcher Charge couldn't get anything done with that, and they have to go back to the drawing board and go back to it fast. First, they wanted Jimmy right now. One of the last hopes for Guangzhou Charge to try to take this control away from Panthera. Oh, you saw Jimmy try to toss out that pulse. Misses the stick of the choice of one, who now copies the duplicate, sending out the anti, gets immediately booted out. Even with the rally from RP, so develop and RP to get taken out by Jimmy in the fall from Gaga. That was all initiated by Choice of One before he went into the duplicate too. 
Back up being able to find our pen. It's gonna have to be another reset, but this is what the charge needed because Panthera looks great. Already putting that point to 99%. Choice I wanted the duplicate. This is exactly why we end up seeing the Echoes start to copy the Anas a little bit more in this meta. You didn't even need to really do that much damage, but it was the addition of another anti grenade <laughs> that really helped to kick things off there from the charge. Jimmy with a nice pick onto Becky as well. Pandera are going to have to wait that out for the respawn to come back. But we do see nice with a duplicate of his own, being able to potentially copy the Echo from, or the Ana from far away as well to get a Bionade up for Panthera too on top of develops. That's what we've been seeing commonly, especially with the Amtac with these antis. Mana boost onto choice, so Juan is going to be able to force Arpit to back away. He's already been able to find Knight in the process who stops him from using his own duplicate to engage in this fight. More time ticking away now in favor for the charge, while Panthera still stay on to 99%, but they just have not been able to flip the point or push us into overtime. Zerny is now finding Becky again. It's going to have to be another reset. This is starting to look really good for the charge here after they've wrestled back control from Panthera. Panthera now the one struggling to try to approach this point. Let's like see Nice to try to get on the board with the duplicate to be able to... Hopefully get some sustainability there with the Winston, but it's going to be the Ana. Hope to get something done here. You've got to land these sleeps and nades. Nana boost, nice. Using the duplicate too. Opal's getting a Nana boost of his own. Arpen gets put to sleep. Pops the promo to get the reset right after getting hit with the anti. Backing away in time, already nearing that 93% is the Bonjo charge. Gaga's also about to get the primal. Toasty one getting taken out before using the duplicate thanks to Knight's focusing beam. Another huge anti from far away to match that that's been landed onto Gaga. Here comes that survivability though with Gaga having the primal. He's taking so much of that damage. The Nana boost this time put it to Zernia to be that raid bus that it needs to be. Fighting our Peach. Arpen here too. Our Peach now won't be able to use the rally that he just finally got online now. Overtime ticking away and it's in favor for the charge to now hold this down. Not sure who else comes in and touches either as Gaga tries to hold down that front line. You're going to be looking at Becky to make it there, but the quick pick from Jimmy, that's going to secure the round for the charge. After they struggled so much to be able to get onto the point, feels like another repeat story of what we ended up seeing there from Soul Inferno in their very first round as well. Heading over to University though, we could see a couple of swap ups here, but I want to watch this duplicate again. That was oh, with so the anti. fun. Onto oh, that back line. That was so sick. And then, then we get to see it from Gaga's point of view. Love seeing the different peripherals from our observers. From the anti into taking out the back line and then still swinging around and juggling Arpen at the very end before finding Nice who can't get away. Great start here for the Guangzhou charge, but there it looked like they had their footing initially, but the charge, once they had that point, there was no flipping it from them. No, very difficult to wrestle back control. But now that we're heading over to University, this is where we tend to see a few compositional switch-ups, if any. And not going the way of the charge right now as Gaga gets dropped, but it's going to be the Ramatra coming out from him. Oh, that didn't last very long. He immediately swapped right back over to the Winston. Another strong start here for Panther. I do like these quick swaps. Fun to charge not taking any chances here, Necro. No, they can't make any big... They can't... They really can't try to sit on those compositions that they feel like they're just not going to work. Gaga could have potentially thought that Arpen was going to come out with the Ramatra as well, try to meet them in that rush, but Nice has a big change up their sleeve as well, opting for the Sombra here while Tracer want to stick to the Echo. Gaga got hit with an anti initially, and a hack on top of it, still surviving right through it. Farway Zerni is on point, giving them that support. Huge difference maker for Zerni is trying to help out far away. Oh, the stick on the pulse, he cannot help him out from there, and that's going to be big because he was about to get the nano boost for this fight. Arping also being able to get the follow up on Sagaga. It's going to be another reset here for the charge, but Panthera still stick on the advantage point. Panthera were able to get this before, just continuing to ride that momentum that they've generated in these first few fights. The EMP as well for Nice being online is a great way to be able to keep control too. 
Especially when Nice is gonna already be set up, get that intel about where the Guangzhou charge wanna try to come in from. Oh, Big no. shutdown oh, no. here on Gaga too. Oh, the opportunity! Everybody from Panthera took the opportunity to take a bite out of Gaga. Even with the EMP, they'll absolutely take that. And now Nice is gonna try to build into the second one that he could have for this round. When it comes down to the Sombra versus the Echo, I don't think you care too much if this EMP is going to hit multiple players. If it just get the one down, that's plenty. And you can see Panthera continuing to work through that as they rotate through their ultimates. They actually don't no, even need them. They're staggering them. One by one as they fall, Gaga uh, next again. Having to reset, but look at Nice getting to position, gets the hack of the choice of one. Oh, taking okay. away here too. Now you got less than 10 seconds, Rekka. This is gonna be rough. Farway's gonna have to go in with the Nato, try to get that over to Gago or Xerneas, try to get in. Ooh, Tracy One is copying the Zombra. Catch, catch the Zombra, maybe getting a desperate EMP on board if he can before he gets booted out. He gets healed back. Jimmy gets put to sleep. Gaga pops the primal. The overtime ticking away. Our Peach going down is great with the rally because now the restability isn't there for Panthera. Gaga by finishing things off in that primal onto nice. And finally, when the world needed them the most for that point, the charge come back. Charge. Hopefully they're able to get a repeat success as they did on round number one. Working against Panthera's sizable lead when it comes down to how much progress they've been able to get, but Panthera coming back in with another EMP. Ooh, the stick two is actually gonna get the nano boost in a far way. They really like to stare at danger in the face as the primal from gets activated from our pen. RP still has that rally. Here comes Knife with the EMP, following up right from the back end of the side room. Jimmy, though, does land that Pulse Bomb, but it's not going to be enough. The number disadvantage is there, as Charge also don't have the sustainability. Immediately, right afterwards, Panthera are able to flip this point. Gaga's the last one left. I don't know how he's still alive. He was literally one. He still managed to survive for how long? Far away, Xerneas are there, but nobody is left to touch the point. We are going on to a round three for this first map. Round three heading over to Gardens means that we could continue to see both of these compositions flourish for either team. But then it comes down to who is able to get control of that point first. Panthera let it slip through their fingers on that very first round, but I wonder if they just were able to play around the ultimates that they had online, they would have been able to close out this map right here, right now. Especially when our pen. I wasn't sure what to expect out of this player, especially knowing that they are a newer addition to the Panthera roster. But it doesn't feel like they are. Fitting in perfectly out here. Being so much damage as well as the space being bought in to allow Nice to get some freedom in the uh, in the sky as well as Becky to harass that backline. Farway and Zerny has had a much more difficult time wasting no time now to already get started on this point. Taking the high ground though is going to be charged. You can already see the advantage as they've already taken that catwalk. Oh, oh nice, Andy though. Huge right there from Fallway. Can they capitalize though? They're already restabilizing so quick things to develop and the RPH being right there. Gaga with some help from Choice of One aren't gonna be able to stop our pen and that's gonna force Panthera to back away with the lack of space that they have to work with. So Charge are gonna be able to get this point first. That's gonna give them a lot of agency in these next few fights. Especially if they're able to bully Nice away. Not able to follow up on the pick there. But at the very least, Gaga is gonna start building up to that Primal Rage just a little bit faster. Look at this too though, Panthera right back into the thick of things, trying to initiate something with an anti, but... Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Wants to bring it to Becky. That's a Tracer diff. He, he wants the Tracer diff. He's been doing a really good job, but Jimmy with his Brain Blast also being able to catch him right before that Pulse Bomb could have been sent out as Becky is going to have it ready for this next fight. See what impact this could have, as well as develop with the Nano Boost. It's going to be what Panthera is going to rely on more than anything here for this engagement. The Nano Boost is going to be absolutely huge. They need to be able to put this onto either Arpen or maybe even a Peach. You just want to get some of these other sustainability ultimates online, and that rally would be really nice right now. But the big pick on the Choice A1 removes the duplicate. Focusing beam. Arpen manages to survive, getting the health pack before 
Managing to rejoin the rest of Panthera, jumping right into the high ground as Xerneas is caught in that line of sight. Nice just went crazy finding the back line, and they are going to be able to flip the point finally for this third round. Huge being able to take down Choice A1 when the duplicate is online as well. That would have been really nice for Guangzhou Chard to potentially just continue forward, bring this into last fight territory. But for Panthera, great job being able to take back control before ending up having that oh. as a problem for the charge. Becky oh, they heard him. Oh, Zerny oh, has heard the footsteps. That was beautiful right there. Is it going to be able to land the pulse up? But a nice anti lands on to develop an R pen. No nano boost to start the engagement. No duplicate either. Jimmy being able to find those two picks huge. And that's also the primal, which is essentially wasted here with R pen just having to back away. Arpin is able to get out, but you need to be able to reset super fast here because now we are getting closer to that last fight territory. Gaga could end up playing Doorkeeper again. You've got the Primal Rage. Panthera hopefully aren't going to be going through this side room because that would line them up to get knocked down by Gaga throwing some hands. Nice is going to wrap around. Okay, great high ground take. Last fight territory, fair for the charge, and this is a great trade off. They do lose out on develop though, so maybe not so great in favor for Panthera. They won't have the nano boost in this fight. And meanwhile, Choice of One Knights are going toe to toe. Choice of One does win the Echo Battle, which is both in overtime now taken away. As Gaga has the Primal, Jimmy has the Pulse Bomb. Panthera is definitely just trying to stagger onto this point. Becky now trying to make some moves happen, but with the Pulse Bomb from Jimmy after finding our Peach and Becky is nobody left in sight from Panthera. Guanjo Charge take the first map. That was scrappy though. That wasn't a decisive victory. Panthera made that incredibly difficult for Guangzhou Charge to be able to actually take that map at all. So kudos to them. I think we've got a series on our hands, Vicky. Yeah, this is a it. very different tale. I don't want any uh, 3 Overwatch out here. Although for Guanjo Charge, it would 100% benefit them. But at the very end, we saw what Jimmy can do. Popping off. Far away Xerneas. Talk about those antis also as well coming in from far away. Doing such a good job with the outcome from Gaga getting the follow-up right afterwards. Jimmy too. No Echo being a problem between the Echo Ditto that we're also having on the field. Been good stuff coming out from both of these teams. I think the Echo was able to show up in a big way. I think nice Sombra might be a hero that Panthera should look at trying to lean into a little bit more as we head into the rest of the series. But that's map number one heading the way of the Guangzhou Charge. Let's see if they can keep it up as we take a break and look at map number two right after this.
Welcome back, everybody, to our second match of the day. We just finished map number one on Oasis. The Guanjo Charge leads the way as we move on to Noon Bonnie for our second map. What a throwback. Right? It's been when is the last years. time that you've seen Numbani <laughs> in an Overwatch League game? It's been ages, but that's what <laughs> makes me really excited seeing like the map swaps that we've had between last week what we saw a lot of like Circuit Royal, now we're seeing Numbani coming into the mix. Mm -hmm. I love seeing a change up here because that also means that maybe we'll see more Echo. Wouldn't be too surprised. We're seeing a lot of the development of the Echo. Of course, the Tracer Shamba still remain prevalent with the Winston in this meta. Take a look at the Guanjo Charge after the performance on that first map. They need to get this Molly up. They want to be able to get this 3-0 so that way they can start setting themselves up for success in the overall standings currently where they're sitting in 8th. That map number one was really tough, though. That came down to making sure that they were able to execute on their ultimates. Panthera didn't make that easy to be able to take that first map win. So I'm very curious to see how Numbani is going to go, given that Arpen and a Peach look phenomenal in the roster so far for Panthera. But obviously things can change a lot when we head down to these more lengthier maps, I guess as you could put it, when the payload component is a huge part of that. It's going to be big here. We have to make sure that we see the likes of Develop staying alive and uh, not getting taken out with Nano available here, which happened a few times in that previous map. Getting ready here as well as a pretty big gap between the Echoes between both these teams too. So trying to close in that gap from what we could possibly see from Panthera is going to have to be the number one thing. But it was pretty close, especially after that first round. Very similar, actually, to that first series that we had on our hands, Necro. Yeah, exactly. I was getting some flashbacks to what we saw from O2 Blast and Soul Infernal to kick things off. But something else I'd really like to be able to see come out from both of these teams is whether they rely on something like a long range hit scan or not for these maps. That's something that you could end up playing there either on the attack or the defense on the defense from these teams. In the East, we have seen a little bit more of the Ash or the Hanzo being played just to be able to play around with the verticality and make it a little bit more difficult for those Winstons to pick a nice target. But I also wouldn't be too upset to see more of the Echo and just honestly more of the Echo dive overall from both of these teams. I love this map. And we are going to be able to see the Echo from both sides here. Just with a quick swap from Nice. Choice of One was already on that Echo as Numani does provide that verticality that you can work with off the high ground. Touched up on that here, Necra. Arpen and Gaga could do the same thing too with the Winstons. Nice already trying to take a different off angle here too while Becky's trying to play patiently, trying to sneak their way around. So trying to get up to the high ground to suppress the back line here for the charge. Nice bubble though from Gaga to be able to keep their supports alive for now. It's going to dislodge the Panthera dive for a little bit until their cooldowns come back online is raining Winston's from the sky as Becky, Arpen open things up for Panthera, getting the back line off the table from the charge. Means that the charge are gonna wanna back away here. Gaga doesn't have the primal for the reset. They won't wanna stagger through either as Panthera are gonna be able to find him right before he gets away. They are gonna be able to get this payload moving already off the gates. Payload take was so fast here for Panthera. It almost felt like a blink and you miss it type of situation. As Panthera, Becky, just being such a valuable teammate for those dives, gonna have the full spam online basically before anybody else in this lobby. Gaga with the anti too is in so much danger right now. Guangzhou Charger gonna have to take a step back as Panthera starts to take more space and get this payload around that first corner. To work into it at least, especially with Farway being behind on the nano. Developers already had it in their pockets, so the duplicate will be online for nice first. So the nano boost onto our pen to clear up more of that space and with the primal on top of it. Once the nano boost runs down, oh, if he can't even pop it, he dies the nano boost onto him as Choice to One managed to land those sticky bombs here. Backing away is going to be Panthera, recognizing the situation while Gaga takes the high ground. He's been playing so well, even from that first map, get hit with another anti to back away. How did... How did Nice get hit by the whip shot there? I, just, I would Ice love water. to see... Ex yeah. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I was like, wow. that. I wonder how close 
Nice was actually trying to get access to the back line, but it's going to be a bit of a standstill here. Panthera is trying to find a way to weave in these ultimates onto the table as Becky looking for an opportunity to use this pulse bomb first. Nice has the rally. The crucial depending on how nice use the duplicate it does copy Farway's on that immediately gets put to sleep they were waiting for that Farway knew that the duplicate on Sam was gonna come eventually but nice managed to survive before getting booted out of the duplicate Becky initiates with the pole ball misses the stick unfortunately doesn't get the impact necessary choice of one on the other side also uses up that duplicate gets put to sleep right after being woken up though to try to get away Arpen and Becky have the numbers on board fighting the backline again and it's another team fight win in favor for Panthera oh Gaga going down there as well got anti and the great follow-up here from Panthera it's going to allow them to get this cart moving again the rally being preserved for the last stretch of point B is going to prove insurmountably valuable when Guangzhou Charge don't have too many places to hide as this card starts to round that final corner. Looking for Charge as well to hopefully get a bit of sightline down this straightaway. Uh, don't know how you reach develop right now though without investing Gaga and <laughs> develop is a really nice target to be able to land these sleeps to to pressure Gaga off. Oh, but Gaga initiating that dive from the high ground just ignoring develop and develop had the nano boost onto our peach our peach now and then has been able to find choice to one flying right above his head dropping down and getting that second point securing that as the red the panther are holding forward onto charge far away is going to be the next victim to fall into the lobby Becky just making a statement falling in right alongside our pen looking right at home and engaged in this team Farway was a bit of a stagger as well, so Panthera may be able to get this card around the corner, especially with how far forward our pen is holding. Has the Primal Rage. Choice A1 has that knowledge, though, getting a hack onto our pen, giving over that information. Choice A1 with the Sombra swap as well. This feels really nice to have to try to shut down Panthera, especially when you have three and a half minutes wow. for Panthera to reach that final point. I like the swap here, too, because also you get the hack. Nice, that's just fall like wait out here won't be able to use the duplicate in that fight our pen has the primal and there had so much more to work with while becky pops off after using that pull from earlier here too follows up with fighting gaga and jimmy charged stuck in their spawn room doors as our pen's just trying to keep up the pressure and you do that too you still preserve the primal rage just hold everybody at the door the nano boost from develop as well could just continue to bolster up that front line becky again finding gaga here arpin pops the primal just shoving everybody back into the spawn while finding Cernius, who's trying to fight for their lives so is far away he gets deleted takes the nice with the pop off the duplicate coming in after getting the copy off of jimmy they finally complete their run with so much time the time bank two minutes and 42 seconds for that payload to hit that finish line what is with all these echoes Copying the DPS on the other side and saying anything you can do, I can do better. Especially at the very <laughs> end. Let me just kill your team with exactly what you're doing. Yeah, and exactly. Last series exactly. Was <laughs> <laughs> it was exactly what I was thinking of. I was looking at that from Zest copying Who Are You Sojourn and just bopping people in the head. Really fun stuff to be able to watch those echoes pop off to be able to complete these maps. And with how much time you just mentioned, that Panthera has left in the tank. Guangzhou Charge have to finish this map and then some. It's over a minute there for Panthera, so Charge can't do this in overtime. The extra interesting was the positioning from Panthera to take that second point. You mentioned at one point Gaga really had to focus down on Develop, who had the Nano Boost available, but also Develop had some help from RPG originally in that second point, taking a look at the replay at the very end from Becky, who popped off while, well, meanwhile, when Nice comes back, Nice came back with a duplicate and chose violence. Becky chasing down Gaga, and then the follow from Arpen goes back to what we were saying earlier, that Arpen looks like he's absolutely at home with the rest of the Panthera team. Yeah, Panthera just look like they haven't missed a beat when it comes down to executing these dives. Which is incredibly impressive knowing that Arpen and Apeach are both making their debuts on these rosters. But Guangzhou Charge get a chance at the attack now. It's possible that they end up taking this very quickly. Especially if Choice Wan can also show that Echo Dominance that Nice did on Panthera's attack push. 
Beautiful, huge, nice to ante. Naga forced to drop down. And now Becky follows up. Immediately cleans up what was left. Magaga had choice of one. Even with the ante of uh, Peach here, Xerneas has to back away, but can't get away in time because Becky and Nice are on another level. Jimmy wondering, all right, it's time to wake up with choice of one. Our back line keeps getting pressed by these two. Oh, Jimmy is not going to be able to get away. No way. Oh, no way. Naga gets stopped at the door with the sleep. These Anas have just been off the chain when it comes down to how much value they're able to get out of those sleeps and antis. Mojo Charger back though, but not before Gaga gets the anti to Ken. Being able to restabilize here. Nana will be online first for develop, which is gonna be big. See how Gaga was trying to isolate him with the bubble and it does not work because of Peach is right there to help him as well as nice. With the 2k, making a 3k, leaving out Jimmy being the nail in the coffin to clean out the, what was left of charge. Complete turnaround here for Panthera. Panthera is putting so much focus down onto Gaga. You can see how difficult it's been for Gaga to keep up pace with getting that ultimate online versus Arpen. And uh, just honestly, everybody across the board has really struggled. But Gaga, most importantly, because of the focus fire coming in from the sleeps, the nades. Great follow up there for Panthera to keep that backline safe. Oh, well, we managed to survive after Becky, following with Arpen, tries to isolate him, but it forces out the rally, which is an issue because now Panthera are like, okay, we'll wait out on the rally. They back away in time. Now they won't have the rally to start the engagement, but they do have that nano boost. Where's it gonna go? Here. Yeah, Arpen now is gonna be able to play around. Needs all the help. Got the Nana boost just in case. Literally won the duplicate on top of that. They lose out on Becky. They're just gonna hold on to the back line ults for right now. Choice One was able to find that trade because now the back line from Charge are off the table. Nana boost has been put down onto Arpen while Gaga has used the primal. Immediately gets put to sleep while Arpen has found the DPS. Oh no. Arpen is sending Guangzhou Charge back to spawn again. Nice is going to try to come back into this one. Picking up the Sombra, you can use the Translocate to get back to point just a little bit faster. But Nice also has a great way of being able to lock down Choice I Want's Echo. If you just get a hack, that Echo becomes incredibly vulnerable. Nata Boost being put down onto Gaga while Choice I Want use the duplicate onto the Tracer. To get that Bulls Bomb in a blink of a second with less than a minute now on the clock for the Guanjo Charge to get some progress on this payload if they can even get it moving. No gas in the tank for right now. Sending out that pulse, not finding the impact that they desperately needed after getting it. Here comes the rally. But Peach is able to find Xerneas. The backline off the table from the charge again. Becky is on another level alongside our pen here from Panthera. Again, another turnaround compared to what we saw in our first map as the reset happens from charge. Panthera have done a great job too of giving and taking when they need to. That's going to be two ticks on the board here for Charge, having trouble trying to find that third one to finish off this first point. And with a nice an EMP online, this is looking super doomed here for Charge unless they can get this rally online and stat. Ten seconds. A rally that seconds. here. Five. Has it. He's going to get popped here. They got to touch the point. Less than three seconds now. Mugaka going down first. Again, even after that rally gets popped over time now, burning away. Jimmy can't make any plays happen. He dies with the pole thumb in his hand. Uh, Peach goes down after getting hit with an anti, but there's nobody left from charge to contest. Panthera with a dominating performance on Numbani. Equal out the score against the Guanjo charge. I know that Panthera looked good on that first map, but Vicky, I didn't think they looked this good. That was a complete shutout onto the Guangzhou charge. And after such a dominant attack push from Panthera as well. Wow. Uh, I, wow, I'm so impressed by Arpen and a Peach right now. Gaga died like nine times. Uh, Arpen, I think, died like once, by the way. That was such night and day difference compared mm -hmm. to the performance in that first map. And even in that first map, we keep highlighting it, but it was a 2-1 win on Oasis for Guanjo and Charge. That first round looked very heavily in favor for Panthera, and then the second round even started very similarly with that advantage before Panthera was able to take it on that final round. But now Nubani looks even more convincing off of that performance alone from Nice and from Arpen. Let's see if they can keep it up on the other side of this break. We got map number three right afterwards.
Welcome back, everybody. Our contenders teams, they do it again. Panthera take map number two, evening out the score one to one right now versus the Guanjo Charge. Panthera look so strong coming into this match. I think truly they could have taken that first map had they not faltered their lead on that very first round, but they were able to shut out the Guangzhou Charge on Numbani 3-0 didn't let them get a single point in that map. And I don't know, Vicky, I feel like these new kids on the block, they were exactly what Panthera needed. It's it's so fun to just watch the Becky versus Jimmy matchup. Like, this is something that I pitched to you on the break real quick while we're seeing mm -hmm. it come to life. And uh, with the adjustment that Guangzhou Charge have made, Gaga coming in, Vicky out of this roster, it is looking like they need to make a lot more adjustments in total with what the charge need to bring to the table even though they won that first map it was still incredibly close and that's to put a highlight onto that because it did end on oasis two to one meanwhile panther with such dominating control on nubani nice hopped off alongside becky our pen as well you have some of that history that you were mentioning before too necro while we get ready for circuit royale I'd love to talk about that because Arpen and Apeach, these might be players that people are a little bit more unfamiliar with. They came in from playing on T1 together in 2022. Before we ended up seeing Apeach take a little bit of a break and then Arpen going over to NT where Unknown is giving a little bit of backstory about that, where that was an open division team formed of players that didn't get a chance to make it into Overwatch League last season, but still wanted to show off the potential that they have. So now, Arpen and Apeach, they find themselves in a roster again together, contending with these Overwatch League teams. So I feel like they were both able to meet that goal in a little bit of a way and hopefully bring it to some of these Outworld teams. Making the comeback that they need to going into the second week, right, Necro? We saw the unfortunate shortcomings mm -hmm. of Panthera in the first week, which was last week where they lost to the Dynasty 3-0. They lost our Dreamers at LAN as well, 3-1. Dreamers being another team that has also gone through their own reworks that we saw yesterday. But even with this look at Panthera right now, this is a completely different team than the one that I had witnessed last week alone. It's really interesting because Panthera, they're showing a different look with Arpen and the Peach over what we saw last week of Jasmine and Slay and those tank and support roles respectively. Just speaking a little bit more to the different look that you were talking about there, Vicky. But as we head over to Circuit Royale, it's so weird to see Winston's on this map. This is a map you would classically see the Sigma, the long range hit scan, the Hanzo makes a lot of sense here for Jimmy to be able to showcase one of his absolute best heroes. It has to pay off here as the perfect pick to go up against Becky's Echo. Ooh, nice anti on the nice. Immediately is able to re-engage. Yeah, the Winston's jump. What's extra funny is seeing the cohesion between Becky and Arpen and Toy yeah. Squad's gonna be able to get that first pick to set up the charge for success. Gaga still though, playing off that low ground. It's about trying to get to the high ground quickly, at least that provides for this map alone when you do go Winston, but it's also those open sight lines like you mentioned for Jimmy to really take much more of that progress. I think the other thing about being able to run the Winston is the compositions overall that you would expect from both of these teams lends itself more to that. Gaga is a Winston player. If you expect the charge to come out on the Winston, you get a chance to play that as well. So Panthera able to show that off. Uh, he gets so low though. Wow, he's lived through that. It also looked like Aka was trying to body block him. Our pen jumps on top of Jimmy while trying to harass the beach from afar. Becky with the duplicate, getting that nade kill on so far away, getting a taste of his own medicine as Panthera are still dominating right now. Literally taking their time to cross that next corner and look at Arpen's positioning here. So that way they can get some extra progress before getting right above this hilltop. Nice bit of progress here. That cart is so close to being able to get that first objective. But not before Guangzhou Charge can come back in with this nano. Oh, Gaga slept and anteed. Oh, the poor guy. And that's with Nano Boost, too. That's so yeah. unfortunate here. Far away. Goes out by Becky. 
the anti and the primal on top of that from Gaga. Stunned just momentarily by a peach and pops the rally. Zerny is trying to match it. By the way, Gaga gets put to sleep again. Then stunned immediately afterwards. He can't get a break. He actually survives. Before trying to re-engage here, Jimmy sends out the track. It's everything needs to come up from the charge. That was so hard for them to at least get some room to breathe between getting slept twice, getting hit with the anti, having to go for the reset here. Gaga is still living thanks to Farway and Xerneas. They have had to put in overtime though to be able oh. to keep Gaga alive. Oh, Jimmy stopping this push entirely in its tracks. Look like Panthera would have been able to come back in and get a very quick attack push. But yeah, this is exactly why Jimmy is known for that Hanzo pick. Being able to secure those headshots time and time again. Especially when you're able to lay down those sonic arrows and figure out where Nice and Becky want to try to come from. Good point. I want to see it again. Do it again. Especially if you could get some more info. What he's doing, he's, he's free of do it up. again. But Becky playing right behind our pen. What scares me the most. Ben already took an arrow to the head. He's gonna be able to get restabilized as nice. Also, trying to reset here. No EMP online. Nancy on to choice of one as develop backs away. Does have that nano boost. We're gonna see how our pen's gonna be able to engage. Just subtract Jimmy from the equation from being the problem, but he's got it so much help from far away from the distance. Nano boost is about to get online here too. Gaga may need it as Jimmy got hacked, but doesn't send it out in time. Gaga goes out while being able to have the primal for this fight would have been crucial. Less than 10 seconds on the clock here for Panthera to get to that second point, rather that first point. They are right there. Jimmy sends out the dragons. The nano boost too that was used up earlier onto choice they want to do some of that extra damage, and they are gonna be able to contest. Oh man, the recontest coming through. Gaga though. Even with the Primal Rage, still getting forced away from this objective. Nice wants to try to get this EMP online because it's going to have to be the last ditch effort here for Panthera. Develop by Nikaka is going to be huge here. Get shut down immediately and as they back away, they're going to be able to get that first checkpoint. Rest of Charter trying to run away and this is just going to be a stagger at this point. That hack up to far away, Xerneas gets taken out or is just trying to run away. Even though Choice of One comes right back in with Xerneas. They're just trying to get some of that extra rate that they need after Panthera already got that first checkpoint. Panthera taking that objective does give them some extra life, extra time in the bank. Nice didn't even have to pop the EMP there either, so it should be pretty smooth sailing for Panthera to be able to get around this corner and get that second objective. But where it starts to get really difficult is if Panthera can't get up this straight away. Oh, they restabilize so quick there. Are we on point with those nades? Forcing Panther to back away, which means that EMP didn't have the impact that they needed. The nano boost now onto Gaga as he funnels the back line into the side room. A Peach is developed as a Peach gets hit with an anti choice one, gets the follow up here, as well as Xerneas, who stuck in that room originally with our pen. Panthera back to the drawing board as charge win this team fight and are able to restabilize. Charge have been putting up a great defense on Circuit Royale. Makes a lot of sense why they would want to be able to stick to this dive composition, maybe forcing Panthera out of their comfort zone if they wanted to try to run something a little bit different with a Sigma or a Diva on this map. The Echo 2, I feel like Nice has been having a harder time this map finding the value that he's been able to find before. Jimmy just making that so difficult. Taking those cheeky angles too, sends out the dragons exactly where they're going to be rotating from. Develop got caught on that just a little bit before having to reset. Meanwhile, Choice One is finding this ditto battle between himself and Becky. Again, gets the stick here onto Peach as Develop also finds himself in the line of sight as Jimmy's taking heads, literally. Gets another one onto our pen, winning another fight, and it's this Jimmy Hanzo being the Hemi that they need for the charge to continue on this domination. <laughs> He is him. Jimmy is him through and through right now as the Guangzhou oh. charge with this defense could keep themselves tied up in the series. It's in 10 seconds now for Panthera. They do have a plethora of ultimates to work with. A bunch more coming up now. The rally has been activated from Xerneas. I mean, to be careful as Nice comes in on the Echo nearing that duplicate. 
Lago now taking a nap after popping the primal, gets woken up immediately afterwards, has a mana boost just in case from far away if necessary as he gets hit with an anti, gets stunned on top of that with the shield bash. Develop getting taken out with four using the nano boost is actually crucial. Overtime ticking away. Becky now coming right back in, has the pulse up, but nice getting taken out. Means that they're playing off of this number disadvantage. Becky trying their best, sets out the pulse, misses, and then loses themselves far away. Charge. Having some room to breathe. Yes, Panthera got that first point, but they're fully able to hold them back before that. Let's go, Jimmy. Jimmy Hanzo. Me likey. The best look we've seen from the charge so far this series has been when Jimmy is able to play his favorite, his best heroes. This replay, I feel like, tells us everything. That was disgusting. Right off the crevice of the tree into getting the, the double headshot. <laughs> he oh, was so good. healing it by this hilltop here between using the tree as well as the fence line too. Jimmy doing what Jimmy does best. He's just being him. Jimmy doing Jimmy things. Doesn't get any better than that. Especially when you think about Circuit Royale and the fact that it is classically a sniper map. You usually see something like a double sniper, maybe you see the Widow and the Hanzo together. Sojourn had a huge mainstay on Circuit Royale when it was first introduced in Overwatch 2, Overwatch League last season. So potentially we get a chance to see that. I think it was just for a little bit of music making and Jimmy will go back over to the Hanzo. But Panthera are going to have to figure out a way to be able to deal with that and shut that down. It starts here with nice Sombra. Jimmy with the Jimmy tunes. We are kind of ready. Gotta find the opportunity on the other side just in case. Getting set up on that high ground. Mentioned a nice here being on the Sombra, also wanting to take advantage of getting that EMP charge as quickly as possible. And the anti does get hit onto our pen. Restabilizes so quick as Nice is able to focus down onto Jimmy. The main problem, making the adjustments that Panthera has already noted off of their initial push, being on the attack. Pen manages to get away again as Becky now finds Xerneas charged one by one as they fall, though, as Farway does manage to restabilize. They have to do they do have to wait out on Xerneas to come back so that way they could get that rally charge quicker than a peach here, as you can see. They had, do want to start to try to outpace that just to be able to keep up with some of this defense. Jimmy is public enemy number one right now on the charge. It'll seem nice to try to target down Jimmy as often as possible. Um, all the harassment in the back line is going to net nice to an EMP as one of the first ults. The billboard duty your choice you want. Sending out that bullet bomb, getting it stuck. Right on top of the bridge. Nice has that EMP. Getting a charge of sets quick here. He's backing away before uh, submitting to the EMP, but doesn't get the target that they needed here. Despite that, though, a nice anti on Tagaga and then the hack right afterwards. Trying to get away in time as he can as Becky nails him down. Nice communication coming in from Panthera as well as the Nano Boost now put onto our pen. This is going to force charge to back away in time, especially since Xerneas is going to go down with the rally in hand. Still a great eco push coming through from the charge. They only threw the nano boost at that fight. Choice One's gonna have another pulse bomb. But there's a lot of ultimates on the board that can create space for charge to get back into the mix. You've got this dragon strike from Jimmy if he's not gonna get locked down in the back line. Almost getting stuck by that pulse bomb from Becky. And with the primal. Finding himself in the pit while the dragons also get unleashed here from Jimmy. Gaga got hit with the anti as he pops the primal gear too. But with Jimmy finding nice in the middle of those dragons, the rally has been popped by a peach. Develop gets dove on by Gaga. Getting the damage done before that nano boost could have come online. Getting the trade here between Panthera and Charge though leaves Panthera without the support backline that they ne desperately need. So that means that Charge could finally have the room to work with to get this payload moving. That was a lot of great target focus in the back line from Panthera, but unfortunately all the while, Guangzhou Charge were pushing the payload. That is going to be a much faster take than what Panthera were able to grab on that first objective. Uh, now this payload doesn't have too much farther to go, with Panthera also coming out from far spawns here. They are going to have a tough time getting set up back up on the defense. 
They're gonna have to invest this nano boost from develop to try to get our pen back into the front line. Oh, it's so close. It's Someone right touch. There. They have to get on. Oh, that's a great first pick right there onto Jimmy. The main problem that we've seen right now is Choi comes in with the pulse bomb and two of Keith. We are seeing the trades light up the feed here as Arpen also finds Sirius. Both back lines deleted here from the equation. With so much time to work with, though, from the charge, they're going to be able to go back to the drawing board. They still have less than three minutes on the clock to work with. Two minutes, 55 seconds, and Choi's moving back in. There there are so many people left from Panthera to be able to contest this either. Look at Choice A1 just continuing to fall. No one can come in and touch. Nice is going to have to. Vicky, they don't get there in time. Even with Phil shot landing at the very end still with that EMP. That was it. That was it. Oh, my God. Not close enough. The curse continues. No. He still Not got like hit with this. that whip shot, but it would have been crazy if they just would have delayed it and reset it back to overtime with the EMP. They were all right behind him on but, top of the uh, hill. Uh, uh, uh. Arpen was right there. Arpen had to back away just because of how low he was getting. But Nice had the EMP. Vicky, they had a chance. A oh, Pantera had a chance. Deleted from their sight literally in that moment. Seeing the flail shot also banging the nail in the coffin just in case, just putting your toe on the payload wasn't enough. That was gonna be Circuit Royal out from the table. Bonzo Charge lead it 2-1 currently versus Panther. We're gonna see what goes down in map number four on the other side of this break.
Guangzhou Charge lead the way at match point two to one versus Panthera with a stronghold with the best cup that we've seen Charge hail from. Jimmy coming through with the Brad and True Hanzo. Choice looking great and polished on the Tracer here. The Charge may be getting right back to form in the way that they need. Gaga also has been able to receive a bit more help, maybe a bit more confidence when it comes down to actually initiating these dives because before, Gaga was the prime target for Panthera. That was exactly who Panthera wanted to try to gun down every single time Gaga was ending up making an initiation. And there wasn't a whole lot of follow-up when it came down to the... Echo and the Tracer setup that we were seeing before coming out from Choice A1 and Jimmy. But with the Hanzo, you choke down somebody, Gaga is able to be there to get the rest of that damage down to the Tesla Cannon. Honestly, just looking at what we just saw from the charge, I want to see them just stick to this comp going forward. It's honestly been the best comp that we've seen from them. The Echo just wasn't it. We saw some signs of life at the very beginning, but Nice was just doing it better. Especially from what we saw from Panthera going onto Numbani. Looking at what the Guangzhou Charge have in store for them for their schedule, it's definitely something that they want to polish here. As we go into our fourth map, we are moving on to New Queen Street on Push. New Queen Street is one of those maps that I could see Jimmy coming out with something that lends itself a little bit better to his hero pool. But it's always such a toss-up. We ended up seeing a lot of Ash coming out from Philadelphia Fusion last season before they rebranded. And that ended up playing really nicely into the DPS hero pool for them. But it just feels like there's a little bit of discomfort when it comes down to Charge leaning into Jimmy's Tracer versus what he's super well known for, the Hanzo, the Widowmaker, the Ash. Panthera with Nice, I love that call that you made. Because Echo is one of Nice's strongest heroes. You get a chance to lean into that comfort, it, it shows up in a big way. Yeah, we saw the, the clear gap between what we were saying, Charge trying to Echo Ditto. Nice there, too. So I, I like Troy sticking onto that Tracer, has gotten such an impact, even after what we just saw from that last map. Jimmy sticking to the Hanzo. Can it work here on New Queen Street? Looks like that's what we're going to try to roll out with. If Nice tries to stick to the Sombra, I better not see any Sombra dying to those dragons. Because <laughs> how? <laughs> Unless that Translocator was destroyed right before. Yeah, that's but... Yeah. <laughs> I think Choice A1 has been able to sniff that out more often than not, though. And if you have the Tracer in the back line, being able to target down that Translocator, remove it from the mix, then all of a sudden, Nice's emergency exit is no longer on the table. I love that the Charge are going to try to lean into this one. Hopefully it's able to work out here for Jimmy. But this is where Jimmy's comfort is. You need to make Ooh. sure that he is able to help initiate those dives. Ooh, nice anti. Leads to Xerneas and Gaga to go down as the first two picks here. Opening things up amazingly for Panthera off the rip. Becky just cleaning up what was left of the Charge, tearing them up. And Troy is going to be able to back away in time. But that's Panthera already taking advantage of the bot first. And now Nice gets a chance to set up with these hacks. Jimmy actually going to go ahead and match Nice on the Sombra himself. So giving up the Hanzo immediately, recognizing maybe there's just a bit too much pressure coming through from Nice and Becky. Jimmy has been the target focus for both of them as well, just looking at what happened on Circuit Royale, but the time bank difference was too insurmountable there for the charge. It just has to be different this time around. The EMPs are going to be vital for both of these teams. They're actually doing a really good job at re-engaging just to protect that bot to not get any extra credit with those meters. But he does have that bullet bomb, sends it forward here. Find the stick. Naka again dies first! This is what happened when Panthera had just dominating previously. Gaga usually trying to start an initiation, a big anti! Finding three, EMP gets, tries to get the follow from Nice, but with three members, anti inside that side room, it's too difficult. Another big anti, now into the back line. Far away is angry. The nano boost into the rally from Xerneas, the back line from the charge says, we'll take care of it ourselves if necessary. Far away is angry, dropped the bio nade onto Nice, Becky, and Arpen, and then Nice comes in with a defensive EMP? <laughs> I didn't like that. <laughs> I would have liked to see Nice hold on to that for this next engagement. It just felt like the fact that Nice, Becky, and Arpen were already so low 
that was so dangerous of a call, and it allowed Guangzhou Charge to get back into things with Xerneas' rally. Uh, so Guangzhou Charge can take control of this bot once again as we start to go back to neutral. This retaliation on the anti this time around from Develop. EMP is only gonna land into Arpen. Peach finding Gaga being the first pick once again as Charge desperately funneled inside this side room. After the friendly hellos that we saw between Becky and Choi, though, we can already see Becky getting to position with the Peach, as the rally's also held here, and Choi's looking for the approach, holding onto the pulse, gets the stick. On top of that, after landing an, an anti, far away, tries to get the retaliation. Becky gets the revenge, the pull bomb this time onto far away, so both on is susceptible to finding themselves on the other side of those pulse bombs. Gaga coming in with a vengeance after being the first one to get picked off means that the bot is swaying right back in the charge favor. Nice as the EMP back online. This is a second opportunity to make sure that the EMP is going to be more of an initiation tool for Panthera. But Jimmy also trying to hunt down the back line so that charge can start to match that progress. Whoa, Primal Rage was forced out so early from Gaga. And then put them to sleep right afterwards. And then right after that, you get your backline immediately deleted by Nice on this Sombra. If it isn't the Echo, it's the Sombra coming in from Nice. Getting the quick 2k here with another reset from the charge. This so is something that Nice has been working on as well to make sure that that Sombra and Tracer can be a dynamic duo that Panthera needs. Peach as well with a huge find onto Jimmy. Really sets the charge back. Now that Sombra is not in the back line, and it's gonna be tough for Grogsho Charge to come back in for the recontest here before Panthera end up getting the capture. He's ready for He's back. Fight here. Weak the hack onto Arpen, and then we get put onto him here. Reset. Gaga also. Trying to get into position, being Anibus himself, but then Con. Oh, they got the point. Left too. Yeah, they got the checkpoint. EMP for the desperation on the Hail Mary could absolutely do it with now Jimmy finding our pen. Becky immediately went for that reset though, so currently a peach now just trying to back away in time, but he won't be able to be able to run away from Troy much longer. Panthera with the reset, but they still got that first tick, Negra. That was right underneath the charge's noses as well. And that was a very smart recontest coming through. Panthera delaying that so that they ended up having the closer spawn so that they can get back into this one way faster. Super smart before that bot ended up going back over that neutral point. So Panthera are back. They've got three ultimates to boot. And they're set up here as... Oh, nice translocator! Just looking at that from a nice point of view. Shout out to the observers. That was beautiful. It's just a nice, lovely presence to delete. Jimmy gets deleted so he can't translocate out of danger. Arpen with the primal inside that side room is also able to find Gaga despite the rally being popped right alongside Farway. Nancy can develop, allows Arpen to get into position, continuously harassing this back line. Farway has a nano boost, but it's gonna have to wait for Gaga to come in before they are able to use it. Panthera just not even needing ultimates either in that engagement besides the primal rage. Feels so just good for them. When Charge, on the other hand, have not been able to find any value from theirs, it feels like. The rally, a little late there to the punch. Jimmy's EMPs just not quite finding the targets that they want either. Nice is gonna be able to lay one right on top of the point. I don't think it's worth it right now though. You got lost too many members. You lost your backline once again. It's crazy here as the EMP is ready from Jimmy. Troy is just doing so much work for this team right now. It's actually insane now being able to find our pen, Troy going on the other side, finding this tracer duel between himself and Becky. Develop does have that nano boost for this next fight, and that EMP is going to be crucial depending on how Jimmy is going to use it first. Yeah, Nice has had this online for a bit. Panthera just not really feeling the pressure to have to use these ultimates yet. Until now. Ooh, does find our pen. Nice is going to retaliate right back though too. 
do get the first pick of the far way, so they have the number advantage in their favor. Pitt doing such a good job at clearing the space and adding in the pressure to that back lane. Same though, can't really be said about Gaga, who's been one of the first to go down within these initial fights. Dying with the Primal though, will be available in that next fight. If they could start engaging here, because look at this progress of the bot that Panthera has gotten. Gaga has died the most in this lobby so far for this map. That speaks volumes to how big of a threat Panthera ends up seeing that Winston and also how often he's been getting caught out. A Peach is just in the back line, hello? Oh. Peach is developer just handling business on their own. Taking a flanking angle here too. Gets deleted. Gets punished for the overextension as the Primal was also forced up from Gaga. Gets the revenge on the back line too. The rally was almost online for a Peach here. Our friend will have the Primal himself. After Gaga just used it here. Look at the amount of meter that Panthera have built up in comparison to the charge here. And there's only two minutes left for the charge to be able to retake control and also match that progress. They need to start getting value out of these ultimates, but time and time again, Panthera are there, a thorn in their side. They've got four ultimates now to spare as they take back control. All we need to throw out there. The rally, the EMP as well. Also, Xerni is taking a nap after he popped the rally, means that nothing can get done after Becky is done with him with the pulse bomb that he's able to find onto the sleeping target. Nice gets hit with another anti, but that's right before far away gets taken out by R Pen. Again, this impact that R Pen has had on this team is another level, taking the high ground position here. Panthera ended up having to expend quite a few ultimates in that fight, but at this point, with us approaching that final minute mark, Panthera are just playing keep away. They want to play on the defensive. All they need to do is stop the charge, and they don't even care if they fall to this EMP right now. But it's even better if they don't, and they're able to just finish the map out right here. As here's that minute. With Gaga going down, though, that's going to put a dent to Jimmy's plan to try to EMP the back line. They just want to hold on to it at this point, especially losing out on Xerneas. You won't have the sustainability or the follow potential here. So Jimmy's just going to have to wait to utilize the EMP. But how long do you wait when this bot is right next to that final point? Less than a minute now on the clock. Oh, Gaga is isolated here as well. Jimmy's going to have to try to go for a target, but Gaga is already so low as that bot is approaching just full capture here for Panthera. Side sometimes here too. Jimmy gets detected, still has the EFP, still waiting on the opportunity. Just wants a follow up, isolates the fell up, immediately still finds it, but that's gonna cost Jimmy's life. Becky turning around, finding his head, sending out the post bomb, finding Xerneas on top of the fact that he was able to get that initial pick. EFP coming in as well from Nice. They just lost out on our pen. Charge have less numbers on the board. Foe fighting for his actual life while Becky's harassing him. He still finds Nice here. Choice of one, trying to keep Charge alive in this series. Turning the bot around with overtime ticking away. Becky's able to escape to get back to Panthera before they go in for another recontest. But the Guangzhou charge, they certainly have their work cut out for them now. Since they're going to have to make up that distance and then some. This is going to have to be three team fight wins in a row if the Guangzhou charge wants to be able to win this map and close out the series. It's going to be so difficult. They're going to have to cycle through these ults appropriately. We need to see impact coming in from Choice Pulse Bomb. And with the hack and then the deletion on the far away from Becky. That's not the way you want to start things off. Develop gets hacked. He's got the nano ready for himself. See how he's played this throughout as Xerneas also has the rally. Gaga pops the plot, but he got hit with an anti right before that. Having to stay on top of this bot, Xerneas gets that pick onto Becky, prevents the pulse run from having any impact in this fight in general. Going back and forth here too, it's gonna be Jimmy trying to get that EMP, but he is tied toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nice. Having to play around this corner as Panthera also gives some of this extra space. They want to play around this rally smartly. Rally's gonna be activated here. That gives Panthera a chance to be able to get up close and personal to the front line, but they can't drop it now. They've got the lead, they have to keep it. Becky gets the pick up to Toy here, which is also gonna be huge after Toy was able to get the pick up to Art Pen. A Peach, Becky, a Peach goes crazy at the very end, clears the butt. We have a tie series on our hands. Panthera takes map number four, tying the series out two to two against the Guanjo Charge. Woo. Oh my god. We have a series on our hands. Vicky, this is so exciting. Especially knowing that Panthera and Guangzhou Charge watch this win 
so badly based on their early performance in the summer qualifiers so far. Panthera, they're getting it done. These roster additions have been so perfect for them. I'm actually appalled to see what change-ups we've had from Panthera with our pet just being such a difference maker in comparison to the unfortunate circumstance of Gaga trying to move in first and usually being the first to get taken out. Things gotta change here. This is the last chance opportunity for the Guangzhou charge. On the other side of this break, we got map number five to determine who's gonna come out on top for our second match of the day. Don't go anywhere with more Overwatch League.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Overwatch League. We got a series on our hands for our second match of the day. Panthera tied things out on a push on New Queen Street versus the Guangzhou Charge. While we take a trip to our fifth map going on to Busan. I've missed Busan. That's Dang. another one in the map pool that I am just so excited to get a chance to see again. The music is the best, still. I was good. I was literally just about to say that. You're reading my <laughs> mind, Negra. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Maybe a bit of a home advantage there for Panthera. I'm not entirely sure. But I feel like Busan brings itself to speak a lot more to the versatility of these teams again when it comes down to some of the DPS choices that we get a chance to see. Jimmy? Maybe Mecha Base? Hanzo? Potentially? I would love to see it. I have to see how this works out because let's talk about what the issues we're seeing here from the Guangzhou charge later down in this series. Farway had tried to use Nano at one point mm -hmm. to try to keep Gaga in some of these fights. We saw Jimmy waiting for so long to use the EMP to get the follow-up opportunity from Gaga, but then waited too long. Too much progress had already been done at this point on push, and we know how difficult it is to come back from push yeah. once you have that limited time bank to work with and it's already gotten so much progress. It's it's very volatile once you already have the advantage, and especially when it's so significant. Mm -hmm. Moving on to Busan, though, these changes need to come quick from the Guangzhou charge because they, they look to be much more in form when we saw them play last week here, but this time around, this is not what we're expecting from one of our contenders teams after they did lose, I believe, one map versus O2 Blast as one of their first series that mm -hmm. dealt with. I believe it was last week on the 14th, but um, now going on to map number five, this isn't a dominating performance that they desperately needed. I don't know if they're gonna get it either. Even if they end up winning this map, Guangzhou Charge have a lot of things that they need to clean up heading into the latter half of this summer stage qualifiers for them. When it comes down to the dive and it comes down to some of the missteps that they made on New Queen Street, it chalk it up to miscommunication. Every single point where they were trying to use those ultimates or they were trying to initiate the dives felt like something was off sync. So you got to start cleaning that up here. And I really love that the charge is going to start to roll out on maybe some of these more unorthodox compositions for them. Gaga, known for the Wrecking Ball, can bring that out here as a little bit of an offhand pick. And Jimmy gets to play the Ash. Another comfort pick for him. It should just work into their strength at this point here, too. What I'm really worried about, far away being on the Zen, is the target practice that Nice and Becky have being shoulder to shoulder, and then the follow-up opportunities that Arkan has opened up can just leave this backline so vulnerable. We're gonna have to see how Xerneas puts that anti to work here once the opportunity gets presented itself. Gaga tries to dive in here. Apollo Drive, we will keep himself putting on some of that extra pressure as he's about to get the mines here too. This is still really risky, because as you mentioned, Faraway is super vulnerable in the back line, so is Gaga. A quick hack onto Gaga's Wrecking Ball would leave him as a giant ultimate battery, but this is way better communication from them so far. Jimmy being on the Ash. Talk about comfort picks out here. You've seen this one before. Finding one head after the other, the follow-up, and then the cleanup onto Panthera. Just when they needed them here, it's gonna be the charge finding that team fight win. And now you see why you should be leaning into these strengths at the charge whenever possible. Jimmy is already gonna be 80% towards a Bob to be able to be on point. Nice Nano to save his life wow. too. The timing on that was actually beautiful. Reaction here from Xerneas, the Pulse Bomb getting sent out. The Atlanta that's marked while developed has that Nano boost ready. It's gonna be a different approach because that Nano was used out and now they're gonna be able to take advantage of it. Diving onto that back line is also gonna cost Jimmy's life as Becky pops up, finds a quick 2k here. Just finishing off what is left of Gaga while he just stalls on the point to get some extra credit. Nice amount of progress for the charge to have grabbed so far, though, and they get a chance to come back into this with a good chunk of ultimates. You talked about the mines being online for Gaga. That's a great way to start to clear off the point. Sanctuary is still one of the smallest control points that we have in Overwatch 2, and that'll be great to lay that down, but... Oh, no. Far away. Uh, is now far away. <laughs> 
Off in the distance while Gaga's rolling around, being able to see the Gaga ball come into full form. My field ready. So is the trance from far away once he makes his way back. Jimmy does get hacked by Knights over. Building up that EMP. Look how much old Panther has to work with here. The Natabus has been put onto Arpen as he gets hit with an anti from Xerneas. All right, once again, does have that trance, just waiting for the opportunity as he pushes everybody from charge into position after losing out on Xerneas. Arpen, though, meanwhile, gets to just back away. Sure, use that transcendence, finding the opportunity to then dive back in, find far away as a vulnerable target. Choice to one with the double on the pulse. Who jumped into who is what I want to know. I don't know. I think you're going to have to send charge back to figure that one out themselves. I would love to see some swaps come out here. I think the Wrecking Ball has been punished a ton now when Nice and Becky have had that Wrecking Ball on their radar, but okay. Charge actually gonna go ahead and sneak that cap underneath them. Huge EMP though, oh my goodness. If they can find Thurnius and they do, the backlight deleted after a four-man EMP from Nice. Dying for all the right reasons, it did not go unaware. Becky having the pulse bomb ready to hold forward, finding this duel against Choi, who doesn't have the health back here. He's going to be able to back away to safety. Great start there for Nice for Panthera to remain on that point. Panthera taking back control, and now we're approaching that last fight territory. We're going to see Jimmy switch over to the Cassidy and far away off of the Zenyatta, going to a little bit more sustainability with that Pichu choice. But where is this pulse bomb going to go? Oh, Develop goes down with the Nano. Wait a minute. Saying the swaps, the Cassidy coming in. Last fight territory here. Zerni has put the Nano boost up to far away. Toy fighting this battle against Peach here. Turns around, gets the melee. Well, Chiki as well as Gaga also going to be able to move in. Just delay the rest of Panthera from trying to touch this point. Okay, Panthera are going to have to come back into this one. Develop's going to have to throw the Nano over. Hoping that at the very least, Arpen can make it here. Oh, managed to push into the overtime. Gaga is going to be able to stall for the rest of the charge to make their way in. This is great looks here for charge as Panthera making the swaps of Peach being on this Lucio that did lose out a nice earlier that don't have the EMP for this fight into their win condition. Our pen goes down. Jimmy, then I ready. Is clearing up the space and that's exactly what they need to secure that first round. That was way too close here for the charge. That was a photo finish for sure. Panthera had started to figure out a lot of the ways that Guangzhou Charge wanted to engage with the Wrecking Ball in particular. Gaga was actually way more slippery than I would have expected Wrecking Ball versus Sombra in particular. But Jimmy had such a heavy hand in so many of these team fight wins for Guangzhou. This clip in particular was so fun to watch. Oh man. The shield goes down, One headshot into a peach. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Oh no, this is this is nice playground though. We head over to downtown, get a chance to see all of these skyscrapers to play around, and nice coming out again on one of his signature picks, the Echo, the duel with Choice Wands. When we've seen this before, Vicky, this has gone the way of Panthera. Yeah, it's been dipped, honestly, where Nice has just been able to sit in the driver's seat while Choi is having a troublesome time. And as I say that, Choi's upset. Choi says, put some respect on my name right now, sending Nice right back to the spawn room. Good start here for the charge. Again, carrying that momentum for that first round, being as close as it was here as they try to push on to this point. Now finding developed. Choi with the focusing beam has been on point. Well, those first two picks now, if they keep falling down, Charge will be able to get onto the point first. All right, charge with another quick capture of this point. They already look way more coordinated than they ended up looking there on New Queen Street. Panthera have had a very hard time trying to get back into things. And we may end up seeing a repeat of how that very first map went of Oasis in this series, where charge, they were able to take that control point. And we're gonna see Nice actually swap off of the Echo already. Going over to the Sombra, hoping to snipe Choice A1 out of the skies. I like this choice here, as well as the quick change of not wasting any time. And they were able to just breathe their way onto flipping that point also, while the charge were holding onto the high ground. 
Well, they are going to be able to try to flip it back. It's going to get contested here. Jimmy making his way right back in. Now, as Farway gets hit with an anti, the rally from Xerneas tries to keep Farway alive. The nano boost put onto him so that way he could hold the front line. But Pantera with the quick disengagement after losing out on Arpen, who was going to have the primal for that fight. You have to. If you don't have your Winston, you're not able to try to get this work done. Unfortunately, we see the rally. Okay. Nano with the nano, the sure. Why not? Finds Xerneas here, it still stays alive. Meanwhile, Gaga gets it with a huge anti, and Xerneas and Choi get taken out from this fight. Trying to back away after now finding Choi. Friends right back involved in this fight with the Primal ready, as well as Panthera flipping this point. Jimmy trying to delay the inevitable after finding Nice, and with Gaga getting taken out, that does allow Panthera to take control. But take a look at how much progress Charge was able to walk away with, with how scrappy that fight ended up being. With Banthera having to take the fight over to the Mega Pack, it left Charge to just get away with so much free progress on this point. Nice though, has the EMP. Maybe Panthera are able to make something happen here with their own charge. That hit Gaga? Was very hopeful. Was very hopeful. Ghost again. Seeing things sometimes yeah. get a little excited trying to unleash the EMP. Uh, that's their big wing con in stopping the charge from re-engaging off the table. They still have advantage on the point here, and the charge are playing this patiently. They're gonna have the nano boost soon. Jimmy wants to get some impact off this pulse bomb. He can get on top of that high ground and try to contest Becky too. Oh, and Becky with the pulse bomb stick instead. Cerny's looked here inside. Becky was there the whole time. Now can harass far away. Who still manages to restabilize here, but they have to give that space and respect over to our pen and Becky. Okay. Panthera now going to go ahead and start to walk away with a bit more dominance on this point. We're looking at that pulse from, from Jimmy, whether or not it's going to be able to land its mark. A Peach and Developer really holding hands right now, knowing that a Peach has been that dive target more often than not. Oh, you got the Nano just in case. Develop stall that pulse bomb and jumped off so quick just in case, saying that's none of my business because I don't want to burn out that Nano boost is ready as he gets focused down by Gaga. Nice sacrifice here to put Arpen in the driver's seat to contest because they're already approaching that last fight territory in favor for Panthera. Arpen gets taken out. Choice and one comes in when they needed him the most for focusing beam and Jimmy comes in to contest Jimmy Becky. Better. They flip the point for right now, but another close call here for charge. They still don't have supports right now. So all of this damage onto Gaga is a bit permanent unless you're gonna end up forcing out the Primal Rage. You're gonna see Nice try to force that out, but to no avail as Charge are looking up for success. Last fight, standing between Charge and potentially closing out the series here and getting another win under their belt, sending home Panthera winless. Aga moving forward, he's got the primal to reset just in case to contest the back line here, but if he's got the rally as the duplicate comes in from choice of one. Popping over to Becky's Tracer, pulls for pulls from both sides here. Neither gets the picks that they need, but Jimmy still finds our pen earlier on in that fight before the rally could get popped from a peach. Overtime taken away. The moment of truth here. Panthera can still stay in this game. Our pen makes a desperate pop over to the Doom. We get the trade for trade as far away. Decides to take matters into his own hands. He's still alive here. Choice of one. Trying to stay involved in this fight. Panthera having the advantage on this point. Overtime taken away. They need to take care of Troy. Just a matter of time before far away goes down too. Gaga trying to desperately get back in, but can't reach in time. You see him right above the bridge. Panthera keep things going, going to a round three. What a nice clutch moment there from Panthera. And the Doomfist choice as well, coming up from our pen, proved to be a great... I don't know. I, I don't even know how that honestly happened because it felt like it was Guangzhou Charge all the way through on that map of downtown. Let's see some of these final moments though. I mean, Nice was able to clip the wings there of Toise One, knowing that the duplicate was also off the table for a little while. Yeah, Nice was such a big part of that team fight win there for Panthera in the end too. I'm just Let's appalled go. there with the picks that would be saw from Farway and Choi having the impact. All right, going on to round number three, Necra. This is it. This is the decider here. And Choi is rolling out with the Reaper. We see the Ram coming in from Gaga. Ooh. 
Oh, a Peach gets first taken down here. You want to take this fight close quarters? Well, you don't have to meet me outside. You can meet me in the side room instead. Finding our pen too. Choice of one, getting the full impact that he can off this Reaper. That was such a smart choice of composition for the charge to come out with. Panthera were not prepared for that. Especially if Gaga is just going to run at them in the face. Choice of one's Reaper? Our pen doesn't want to have to face that. You're gonna have to try to find a way to be able to get past these chokes, but if you're gonna go under the underpass, Choice I Want is right there with those shotguns. Take a look at that. Oh, gee, nervous. Okay, they're able to get out the works. The Jimmy retaliating too, tries to get the hack into our pen. You mentioned Necro, this is going to be the counter pick here that is necessary in dealing with our pen. They also trade that off for Gaga, and Xerneas does get hacked. Can't get away in time. And now this is going to be another team fight win that Charge can walk away from here. But Choi gets hit, though, with the anti. Can't break away. This is going to be the flip that Panthera need to keep themselves in the fight. 45% progress only for the Charge. Panthera able to get out of the gates meant that the Charge didn't have as many avenues to be able to focus down a single target at a time. They would have loved to be able to take those fights and some of these choke points as they are coming out with right now, but that's also going to leave them vulnerable to such a big stick here from Becky! Oh, they made oh, him Gaga feel safe! Down. They made him feel safe! They let him take the, the health pack and then immediately the communication between Nice and Arpen to get the follow-up onto Xerneas, still allowing Panthera to get the extra progress that they also need from the point. Oh boy. Jimmy's gonna have to come back into this in the EMP, but where's the follow up? Let's see it here, but with the nano boost that the developed had, it's gonna be difficult to be able to get that pick up to Arpen and Knights who were caught in that EMP. Meanwhile, Nice get much more of an impact. So far away, activate the ult here. It's still gonna be able to find Becky. Olesson's also keeping them in the fight earlier on, but we'll have it here as the Death Blossom gets picked up from Toy. Jimmy gets a fall up onto Nice. It's about clearing the space and dealing the damage. Gets put to sleep before Develop runs right back to the team. You're gonna have to try to run away. Run far away as you can. Pantera does not want to get staggered here. But Guangzhou charge overextended. Zerni is gonna go down and all of a sudden you don't have the ability to kite away with the mobility that the Lucio was providing. Oh my, that was beautiful. The rally inside that side room gets that barrier nice and big so that way you can get that shield back even with the annihilation being a problem. They delete Gaka, the sound barrier doesn't help him out since he's on the way back to the fight. Instead it's from charge to retake this. What? Pulls it down, Becky with the post up, hitting that quick double which means Xerneas the cell bear all for nuts now that they get deleted. So much damage coming out from Panthera. And while Gaga finally pokes his head out to engage in the fight, he equally just gets deleted and sent right back to the spawn. That was such an impressive double pulse. You removed so much of that aggression from the charge. Gaga's gonna give up the Rumatra here. Switch over to the Winston. Hope to initiate some of these dives a little bit better. Farway's not going to switch off the Moira just yet. Able to work up to that Coalescence as an initiation tool here, as now the charge starts to pincer the Panthera backline. Coalescence to help with this engagement here to force them off this high ground. Xerneas just get hacked to the back, and they are able to find Arpen. Could have had the primal in this fight here, too. He's also get attacked, and Nice is about to get the EMP, the difference maker as Jimmy had used it earlier. See what they can get going here as currently Charge take regain control over this point to the beach in the line Ooh. of fire. Toy and one lets it rip. The Beyblade goes insane, finds a 3k before repositioning himself with more pressure. 95% and counting. Someone's gonna have to come in and touch. It's gonna have to be our pen, but it's gonna be in the face of the Reaper at the moment. And now you have to hope that Becky's gonna be able to get that repeat success with the Pulse Bomb. Maybe Give Pen a fighting chance. They're about to have the ult online here too. You see the primal activated. Becky with the pulse doesn't get the retaliation that they desperately needed to stay alive. Develop did get active, managed to stay up for how long as a peach had the rally, doesn't save the belt. They trade that and they lose out on Xerneas. It's happening here. What? Pantera managed to flip the point. 95% and climbing and charge up one last chance. They're in shambles right now. Gaga is trapped in this small room, getting just absolutely bodied by Pantera no right now. No way. They can't touch! Gaga's out! He died when he was about to have Primal! This is the opportunity! Panthera are gonna 
to hold back the charge. Toys and one with the recall. Nothing else left on the table. They're going to be falling one by one. And even with Troy being there far away with the faded contest, overtime has continuously been forced up by charge with little to no numbers. Gaga has the Primal though. He's back with the Primal. Is he going to be able to get this to bully off hit there on the point? Oh, the South Barrier! No! It's not there! Dying with the South Barrier! That's another win con that they desperately need. Here comes the pull. A Peach is right there. Doesn't have to rally. This is going to be the opportunity, but it gets hacked. Gets cancelled right out. Xerneas tries to make his way back. They did it! Panzer, undo it! They hold back the Guanjo charge and win the series! Such a close series at the very end, down to the wire per round that we saw these teams go off against. That was so back and forth. Vicky, I didn't even know how Busan was going to end. Downtown, the clutch from Panthera, the Mecha Base clutch as well. Panthera earned that win, their first win of the Summer Stage qualifiers. And you have to give so much credit to the pre-existing synergy we ended up seeing coming up from Nice, Arpen, and a Peach. It feels like they're back in the T1 era that they played in before. They haven't missed a beat. Literally shaking right now. I cannot believe this. The fans do not look pleased here and more so shocked. Crazy to see the outcome here as Panthera, one of our contender teams, take out the Guangzhou charge. I cannot believe this. Becky, I, <laughs> insane on the tracer there too. It was a lot. It was a lot. I mean, you talked about the insanity of Becky's tracer. That is going to earn him the player of the match. The impact that Becky had could be felt from across the Overwatch 2 universe, it felt like. Oh my gosh. All of the Pulse Bomb sticks onto so many key targets, whether it was going to be Xerneas' Brigitte, any of the players on Guangzhou Charge that were ulting. Amazing stuff, Vicky. What's crazy is that before that final, final fight, Becky was 4 for 4 on Pulse Bomb Sticks with the Pulse Bomb that he's had. His sticks were so on point, but also the communication with our pen to get the follow-up off of the antis from Develop mm -hmm. were Chef's Kiss. That's why we're highlighting Becky as player of the match here. Even Nice having such an amazing game here. In all honesty, this is the game where we got to see Nice dip Choi on the Echo alone. Also has a nasty Tracer to work with too, so the flexibility in that pool is there. We saw the pop-up opportunities with the Sombra here too. And then the duplicates that we also got to see from Becky, you know, wanting in on the action, even if it's taking a little <laughs> break from the Tracer that we got to see. Yeah, we saw just a few different looks there from Becky, and I think the way that Nice and Becky slot into this roster, it's just so wonderful to be able to play to either a strong tracer from, from Becky, or ending up being able to split the echo duty there with Nice to, to allow Nice to be able to play the Sombra. Oh man, Becky's tracking is also just so fun to watch. It is. And also just seeing how close it was in general. Another stake out here too. Xerneas not looking to the right. So fixated on the window on top. Meanwhile, making the adjustments too. Around how Troy was going to play on the Reaper. So providing some help into nailing down where Xerneas was going to go. Off of Nice getting the initial hack. All throughout the series, Becky was a highlight. All of Panthera, with our pen included. Being able to have those highlight moments. Another stick to end some of these highlights here, but time and time again, just getting another one at the very end here. Even with the sound barrier, gets that recall, finds the opportunity to get away before sending out the pulse to get another <laughs> stick. That was a double opportunity right there too. Oh, it was just a yeet into the back line, but it was also just some really wonderful mechanical skill coming out as well. You could see, could see how Becky was prioritizing blinks just conserving them for those perfect moments to be able to get those tips to secure a pick. Love being able to see that. I feel like Becky just showed up in such a big way for Panthera and to watch the Tracer. Panthera 
finally getting a win on the board. I want to see what they can do with this moving forward into their future matches. Yeah, because they haven't been able to win a match so far. This is just week number two, so the current standings will be shifting significantly. But we highlighted at the very beginning of the series how necessary this would be for the Guangzhou Charge to at least get some progress going throughout this summer stage. They were currently sitting in eighth in the overall standings too before that series. So a lot is going to be changing here with Panthera taking that dub. Contender team staying on top, showing off the talent and the adjustments that they can make. Even with roster scrubs coming mm -hmm. in fresh. Gaga Ball got immediately taken out like a bowling ball there at the very end too. Just so much, even with the desperate adjustments from the charge, just was not enough. Even playing into some of their best comps that we've seen, Jimmy being on the Hanzo, Choi being on the Tracer, still not going to be enough, unfortunately, there. But fortunately now for Panthera, they could realize what they have been able to excel in in terms of comp. They've been able to really work so well with this new tank here and hopefully being able to stay true to what history they have working together in the past. Can't wait to hear more from Panthera because that was definitely one heck of a game, even with those quick adjustments that they made from week one into week two. Jasmine obviously stepping away and then Arpen making their way in. Yeah, it was really night and day difference there for Panthera to be able to show up like this, but it gets even tougher when you take a look forward to the strength of schedule that they have coming up after this match. Their next match is going to be against the Hangzhou Spark. They've got the Soul Infernal after that. It's a huge test of strength here to see whether or not this Panthera roster can really contend with the best of the best. And they have a ton of fans in the audience right now to be able to cheer for them and hopefully continue to support them later on in the summer qualifiers. Hey, the energy. And we talked about it earlier too, you know, sometimes when some of these teams get to play on stage, it can be a little nerve wracking here, but that's going to be the wrap up here for this series. Let's jump into an interview to hear what the players have to say. Hello, Becky, can you hear me? This is the first one of the season for you. How do you feel? I feel good, but this has been definitely a hard win, so I have mixed feelings. So, like, um, this was a long match. How do you feel, like, physically? I'm exhausted. My hands are shaking. My legs are shaking as well. Early on, you struggled, but you focused the tanks uh, on the opposition and you turned your uh, fortunes around. Who led the charge? I think our backline gave a lot of the calls to focus on who uh, usually the tankers and. Um, yeah, they give most of the calls. Well, nice plays. Uh, nice played a lot of Echo, and you played a lot of the Tracer. Both players plays both. How do you allocate those resources? So, the reason behind that is that Nice also plays the Sombra, and um, if we need to swap to the double flankers, it's easier for Nice to change to um, the Sombra instead of having both um, swap. It's better efficiency, so that's why Nice plays the Echo and I play the Tracer. So, wow, we saw four Annas today with each of the Echoes uh, duplicating the Annas. Why do um, Echoes duplicate the Anna these days? I think uh, the possibility of a uh, un like a surprise bionade is usually why Echoes duplicate the Anna. You have the spark coming up next. Do you, uh, can you share your resolve coming into that match? So today we really had to work our way for the win. Um, tomorrow we'll try our best and make try to make it a 3-1 for you guys. And that's the end of the interview. Back to you, uh, Vicky. Thank you so much, Unknown. What a showcase we just saw right now from Panthera. That was beautiful. Our contender teams are only getting better and better the more they get to play against more of these Overwatch League teams, Nedra.
It has been so much fun to watch and you can see in each individual team the reasons why they were able to earn their spot to play alongside these Overwatch League teams. And it's going to be so exciting to see what's going to happen in the future. But Vicky, that does it for us. That's going to be us covering the first two matches. We're going to take a short break. Coming up next, we've got Hangzhou Spark versus Seoul Dynasty. And you are going to be in great hands with Achilles and Avril. See you guys after.
welcome back. It's Achilles and Apple here to guide you guys through guide you guys through the last two series of the evening. Coming up next, we have the Hangzhou Spark going up against the Seoul Dynasty. Shanghai Dragons in poker face as well. So uh interesting last couple of games here, and it will be tough to follow up what we just had. A five mapper, a bit of an upset as well. Charge, one yeah. of our best teams from the first stage, ends up losing out to Panthera, who themselves actually you know, had a little bit of early struggles, but have, I think upgraded their roster and the results show it. And by transitive property, that means that the dynasty better than the Guangzhou charge because they beat Kongdu Panthera, right? I think that's how that works. Anyway, I like the actual completely uh, coordinated outfits that we kind of have going on here without any conversation about it whatsoever. You got the palm yeah. trees. We've the done this a few times. On. It's been good. It's just sometimes it's just happenstance for me it's just I'm, I'm ready to go on my honeymoon i'm leaving in two days i'm going to cancun it's going to be great so i'm all yeah. i'm already dressed for the occasion but i'm also ready to get into the action between these two squads because obviously hangzhou spark a bit of a rough beginning to uh this side of the split given that they've got three zero by the side of the soul infernal but still we're able to answer back win the show down finding a three zero of their own dynasty though it's been pretty rough again the w victory is there over Kongu Benthera but otherwise it's been pretty uh pretty unstable let's just say yeah I think uh they still definitely have a few things to work out here and um you know Spark they at least I think still hold on to a lot of good favor from the results from the last stage and Spark themselves you know they won the Joe down left a bit to be desired versus the Infernal but that just might be because Infernal is the best team currently so you know it might just be that the Infernal is so much better than everyone else and Spark still might be better than everyone else below that so and that will be a pretty big test for the Soul Dynasty because you know as you mentioned we're looking for a little bit more out of that team for the Hangzhou Spark same five looking good expecting good results today yeah, I mean, big turnaround performance compared to, you know, when they were going up against Infernal. Definitely didn't really look like themselves. Granted, Infernal were also playing out of their minds. So, not the most shocking result, but certainly not one you want if you're on the side of the Hangzhou Spark. So, uh, given the struggles of the Dynasty so far, if you are cheering for the Spark, then you're very much cheering for and expecting a pretty clean match here to go their way. I think Spark is still likely a top team in this region i think one loss to infernal doesn't quite ring the alarm bells and in that particular game though they did look like they were on struggle street everyone on the infernal was kind of outskilling their counterparts on the hangzhou spark but you know looking forward i you know you look at this roster it's still extremely stacked and another week of practice for the spark as they haven't really had to change too much in terms of what their expertise in the, in the meta is they get to play mostly the same things my big interest today is to seeing if the Hangzhou Spark will play a little bit more Echo, because it seems like Echo's become flavor of the month and leave, while well, he's got a pretty damn fine Echo on his hands. On the Soul Dynasty, if there's going to be an Echo player, it'll come through from Profit, but hold on a second. There is a new member on board. Is it a new a member? A new Seth? member. Maybe it's a returning yeah. old member. Yes, yes it is. Obviously, this announcement uh, didn't take too long to come through once he became available, but Vin Hame is going to be back alongside his cohorts here on the Soul Dynasty. So they say, hey, Vin Hame's on the market again. We're going to snatch that boy up once more. Well, he's his back, jersey's back still there. Us. They don't have a new photo of him. They could have used the old photo, but unfortunately, the old photo doesn't have the <laughs> repeating Soul Korea, Soul Korea uh, ad nauseum going about 50 times in the shirt. So they have to get him one of those. But... You know what? V welcome back, Vindam. I think v Vindam had a really good year last year, an incredibly good year on the Soul Dynasty. So, a return home and hopefully a return to form as well. Yeah, and we'll have to just wait and see. I think, you know, sometimes you have it where it's going to take a little while to kind of get that reintegration, get back on the same page as all the teammates. But at the same time, you can also see where it just, you come back in and it just fits like a glove, you know? Just smooth re-entry yeah. back into the roster. We'll see which one it's going to be, though, as we get into this and whether or not it's going to take maybe a, a map or two to really get the juice flow in there. I'll have to just mm -hmm. wait and see, because I mean, so far, Dynasty have been strong on control. 2-0 on this side of the split, but we'll take a look first at some comparisons between Profit and Leave. I mean, it's so close. They're basically neck and neck in terms of the Tracer statistics and traditionally two of our best Tracer players in this particular region. Um, last year, Profit, I think, firmly held on to GOAT status. He was amazing last year on the trace. Still is incredibly good this year, but uh, I think a, a lot tougher competition across the board with so many good traces on every single team. It's been a pretty standard truth that we've had, I think, in both regions across the Overwatch League. So, uh, 
really hoping for some good profit versus leave tracer battles this time around especially now that's um you know given 2023 leave a surrounding team is much better than his surrounding team was last year so leave versus profit in this year 2023 much better than what we had last year well it looks like Li Zhang tower gonna be our first map here in the set then we'll move on to nimbani dorado new queen street if we can get to push and then oasis if we get another five mapper because we certainly weren't expecting one in the last series but we ended up getting it with that upset win Honestly, for the Dynasty, maybe it becomes less of one, given that Vinay is back into this lineup, and you can expect that Krillin is not going to be playing main support. Exactly. Um, but I think this still would be a bit of an upset, just given what we have seen so far from the Dynasty. And I'm wondering how Krillin goes about this as well, because he kind of has to do a pseudo roll swap back over towards his previous position on the flex sport. He was playing main support while they had Lee Min on this roster, who recently got released. Due to bring in Vindyne back in. It'll be Vin Dime's first time playing with Easy Han and Bella Saria as well. So you know, a couple pieces from last year, Soul Dynasty, are now back in form with uh, a few other new pieces that have to still try to be worked around for the Soul Dynasty in terms of upping their results. And I think every single new member to this roster is building just that much more depth. And see that ends up being true as we head on over to Control Center. Ryan Kopp from the Soul Dynasty ran for the Hangzhou Spark. All right, well, let battle commence. Shy is just going to be there with that sojourn. Shield raise on both sides. Walls already being burned. Fire strike through. Not going to be getting too much of a connection there. So Belstria not finding too much towards that charge. In the meantime, though, Krillin going to be taking down Shy by the first snipe. Goose way in that nemesis form. Punches his way through easy on. Finding two illuminations so far here from the side of the Hunger Spark. Everybody being kept alive by the immortality field. It's going to be the cleanup and the first fight victory going over to the boys in pink. And usually I would be so much more in favor of the Simcom coming into these, I could say, pseudo mirrors here. Obviously, it's Ram versus Ryan, but still a brawl matchup. When you look at Shy, though, he was probably the best Sojin player in 2022, the debut of Sojin. So no surprise that Shy would instantly go over towards that hero. Finding value, first blood. Easy is going to stick over towards the Sim for a little while longer. Build up towards ultimates. Slow through, Bell's a chunk down below half HP. Immortality field going to be used. This way, able to finish that one off. Freighted it out on the opposite side. Pressure on the, both of these tanks, but it is going to be Bellasria who ends up falling. This way, still alive into the fight, but has to backpedal as quickly as he possibly can. 23 HP, man, just to make his way out of there. Leave the only casualty so far here because of the Hangzhou Spark. It's easy, Han. He's across over onto the high ground. Ton barrier available. Invests that one now here into the fight. Turns his sights over towards Gushway, trying to peel the back line. And with the help of Bill's Rhea, he will be able to take him down. Rather, it's Pop and the come up with that kill. He's still out in front, though, towards that Blizzard. But it seems like he's not going to be able to build it up in this fight. He just has to hightail it out of there. So the rest of the team is cleaned up. Dynasty now on the board. Interesting decision by Monk, honestly, because the Photon Barrier was already dropped by Easy Hunt. You're thinking from Monk's POV. If you play the window now, you're just shooting directly into the shield. If you want to break the shield quickly, I say quickly, it's still a massive shield. Maybe that is the correct play, but just didn't really seem like it was really going to work out. In, in, Shy taken down. Some revenge for Krillin found. Takes the overclock out of the mix here. A bit longer, but Hangzhou Spark starting to occupy the point. Contest does come through. Just for a brief little moment, Vindam doing his best, but it's going to be forced back there by Gushui. Once again, getting ready to come in. Bulls are now going to be invested on either side. Belshree takes the charge, gets himself out to safety. Langsa and Vinheim both going to be dropping those beats to try to keep everybody alive through the freezes. So far, no one going to be eliminated. Gushui trying to play up front, trying to get some damage across the Annihilation. Still rolling. Pin not quite going to get the hit. Turn on the flank. Shattered oh, dropped out, but nope. The line of sight was denied. Do not get stunned to the floor. Easy on now. Going to be the elimination coming through here. As long as Spark still leaked the split. Over clock rolling. Bellas Rhea on a sliver of HP. Has to go for reload. So manages to find it. But Krillin comes in from behind to go ahead and get the punish on the shy. Lift this in. Long Joe Spark now in control. Time to see only able to establish about a 12% lead. Still looking to win this fight. Out to get a quick flip. With Bellas Rhea down and rejoining. Have to just wait a little bit longer. So Hangzhou Spark should be able to grab this. They've read a critical kill onto Bellas Rhea, but now comes a retake. Saldanis in position. They have the double shields drop down again if they want to. I say Dead. the double shields. It's Photon Barrier and the Ant Matrix. Speaking of which, Bellas Rhea sends a fire strike straight through. Oh, and which way? It's just so very low. The healing throughput from Langs alone is just not going to be enough. He ends up getting taken down into the ice block. Goes leave. Be dead after he exits it. Managed to stretch this up a bit further here, just buying as much percentage as they can. But it looks like 81% is going to be where it lays. So Dynasty now back in control. Yeah, and it's it's the photon barrier plus ant matrix combo that's so hard for the hunger spark to deal with because this time around monk's going to do the smart thing, not going to play his own ant matrix into it. There's no point. 
don't really do much you have to kind of vacate the point hope you don't just get annihilated by the double damage and Belisria multiple times now has been able to snipe a player straight through that window with the fire strike yeah, sniping shy able to find Vinheim seemingly before the wall might have come up either that or he was off on the flank and Salucio double damage the equation here Way. Getting a little lower and lower, Quill will be able to take him down, but it's going to be an exchange there on the tanks. Monk now finding a second kill as easy on will also fall. Blizzard committed again by both sides. Prophet coming away with two oh more kills. God. Gets the headshot on a shy. He's really looking to extend this one and also has the ice block. So it's Dynasty holding it now to 99%. And in pulls the trigger. Sound barrier and shields up three. The pushback here just looking to boop Monk away from this high ground. Knock him off the side of the map. Can't do it, but now he's going to be corralled into the corner. Immortality killed use. He's just getting juggled around by Vinheim. Completely denies him the exit. Kills through. Now, Scoochway. Long here on the point. Annihilation is going to be used. Just looking for a target. Has to raise the fist to try to keep himself protected. But there's just only so much that he can do. Mortality kill taken away by Krillin. But also has that window set up. The fire strike finds lead. The shatter still ready to go. Might just have to pull the trigger here. Try to lock down this Lucio. Well, is down Bushway again. Isolated, taken down. Shatter finds Monk. Make sure round. that Kitiko cannot play elusively. And yep, that'll be the closeout here as the team kill comes through. 181% Dynasty taking control center. What a clutch back by Prophet on that May as we saw that double kill come through. The right click, especially on the headshot. Insane. And Vindame says, we have enough plays. We can do this. Just the two of us. Why not? Place sound barrier in there. Lynx responds. The aggression from Vindame is all. You just see him chasing down Monk hooping him around i think this might be is this the play itself or this is the one where he kind of clutches up but yeah, Gushway spent a lot of this game dead for sure i mean that was a it's been a tough game for Gushway so far a lot of aggression from not just vinde but usually balistria not shy at all at just being able to get into the back line charge in find those pin kills saw a cheeky little tp pin play as well and soul dynasty went towards the hunger spark spawn so some creativity from the dynasty here as well as they take away our first round and take another gardens in what is just going to be a pure winston dive now Austria getting bullied up a little bit there but more so on the opposite side is the anti nade from krill and managed to find two lengths to get taken down with the back of that one which way able to stay alive already good tempo set here from the side of the dynasty as they look to get this initial lockdown for themselves lanes are just now respawning and getting ready to run back but space is bought just the point coming through here calf is in hunter spark just have to wait they have to play this out patiently rather than try to deny the cap hunter spark now rotation over towards white Not a lot of damage done in that opening fight there as well so really slow going here at least they do get a transfer kit an oh. instant frag of the easy gun that's a nice follow-up very nice scoop shy now can very much take the lead from here who's already up by a decent little bit Cleanse himself up 50% towards that EMP. Profit falling low, but we do find a free call down here. As Bolsria is going to be anti to trying to backpedal as best as he possibly can. Then he's well to weigh at. Krillin, with all the healing throughput that he's got at the moment, it does give him a second little lead here towards his nano, but now Profit's going to be found. Monk will find that elimination. Everything's open as the recap going to be coming in. I see up to 35%. Nano still going to be committed here on the Bolsria. He manages to make use of it, finding legs, and now taking down Monk. Both supports out of the equation here. Dynasty very much want a quick reflip back into their favor. Pulse bomb in though, Krillin gonna be taken down, Van Haim still standing strong, Gushway anteed. Krillin able to find that nade in dying breath, hope set up for the kill, and now the flip is back through. Once more ticking up, Sandra Spark only able to find 15%. Monk was 5% away from the nano boost as well, that was really unfortunate, misses the sleep guard of the Bellas Rhea. And a very, I think, clutch play coming through from Krillin to find the nano just in time. He also Bellas Rhea, Bellas Rhea instantly converts into a kill in Soul Dynasty. Take that one back, Shy though, early on the EMP. Really nice kill to Bellatria. My answering EMP though does find Monks. It's going to be a support tank trade, but now Prophet gets taken down as well. Lead coming through. I mean, just, just melt him down. Point still being contested here from the side of the Dynasty. Rally rolling within him. Oh, Vindic Shield Bash and Langs that just helps destroy him alongside Shy. So no value going to be found off the back of that. Alt Bellatria rejoining, recycled back into the spawn room. Yeah, now Spark gets to really get away with this EMP into the rally play. Spark didn't even have to burn the nano there. Decent frag by Leaf. He played the Pulse Bomb in an earlier fight, which I thought was a little bit ill-placed because, well, they already lost the fight in Spark, sitting the Pulse Bomb anyway. And here, the Hunter Spark, they're in control of the point again. Leaf's building up to another Pulse Bomb. Shy still ahead of Easy Han. Things are looking on the up for Spark to win this next fight in Equalize 70. Doing the damage spells for the Primal, not going to be swayed by that Anti-Nade. Moves back over to join with the rest of the squad, though. Still firmly in the lead at 70%. 
also from Gushway, but he comes back as he gets hacked. Now looks to re-aggress, but oh, he's going to be careful, man. Oh, so much damage. Down to 110. I mean, Monk will be somewhat happy with that, at least. Get some extra charge towards that next nano boost that Pillan has in his pocket at the moment. Prophet looks for a target for this pulse bomb to land on. Has to use the recall. The dive comes in. Bell is re nanoed up. Does find that kill. Langs it taken down as well. Once more. Full support's gone, but now Ben Him. Prophet also going to be traded back. A 2 for 2 overall but without the supports here. How good is this thing power from the side of the Hangzhou Spark? Not really, really good enough, I now think. established from the side of the Hangzhou Spark. EMP committed to the fight by Easy Han. They instantly find Shy. Leave dashing forward. Wants to extend this as much as he possibly can. He's buying a little bit more percentage here for them, but eventually he's going to have to execute with suspect. But now Gushway is back into the mix. Both Bump Sick comes in. Profit shuts him down. Finds Leave to boot. And that should be the flip guaranteed as Profit comes up with a free K. Extra two ultimates being spent, though. Salt honestly had to eventually play extra resources. The EMP would have been enough, but they also get a pulse from out of profit as well. That's decent from the Hundred Spark. As they also push up towards 85. And for a team that didn't have any supports, that is not bad in terms of extra per time percentage points on the actual cap itself. Unified territory now for the Salt Dynasty, but a flip from the Hundred Spark would put it in there to own 99. Shine for the second time now has found the same translocator spot. Waiting for it, but 99%. Established now here for the side of the dynasty. No walls on either side. Rallies damn close for both the Briggs. Profit being kept alive here. As Krillin would love to get this nano online as well. It's got a nice little stretch lead over Monk in that regard. Hack into the back line. No Krillin under a bit of fire. Looks like Vin Hayden comes to the rescue. Now has the rally ready to roll, and he's going to pop it. Looking for a target to try to get that shield bash across, get that stun through. But now, space conceded from the side of the Hangzhou Spark, playing back in a white room, and Profit goes in the, on the chase. Link's going to be taken down. That's the rally out of the equation. Monk is well dead. Gushway taking a nap. Leave with a pulse bomb. It needs to be massive, but it finds nothing. We'll be able to just go ahead and pulse pistol down Krillin for an elimination with a pulse bomb on the opposite side. The, pr the primal rolling. They are able to clear the, the points. And that is going to be the dynasty picking up a 2 0 victory here on Lijiang Tower. You just see the Hangzhou Spark struggling to keep the supports alive, especially in that last fight as well. But overall, the Lijiang Tower, it's Monk on 9, Death Links are on 8 to Krillin's 4, and Vindame on 3. Some decent frags from Shy and Lee, but ultimately, a couple of fights there. Many fights we saw. Hangzhou Spark, one support down, two supports down. It's the tank and DPS alive, but only limited mileage you can really do with that. And in this short amount of time that we have seen, like 3v3s, 4v4s, or any low number battles between these two teams, Dynasty still at least have one support alive, and the Sparks just don't have anything. So, unfortunate situation there. Close second round there, 85 to 85 at one point, but Salt Dynasty wants to get the flip. Extra expenditure of an EMP and Pulse Bomb, maybe, but it'll be enough to finish things off. Science said Soul is not a cat. They are a tiger, which if we want to be a pedantic about it, we could make the argument. But either way, they're playing like a damn tiger, that's for certain. The claws have come out right off the rip, and they maintain a perfect record so far in this half of the season on control maps. But does that extend over into hybrid, or will Hunter's Park find their footing? We're going to find out when we come back from the break, so don't go anywhere.
And we are back. The Dynasty able to take down the Hangzhou Spark with relative ease of 2 0 to begin things on Lijiang Tower. Now we get ready to go to Nimadi for our hybrid map to see if Hangzhou can go ahead and even the score. Really good luck for the Soul Dynasty. Glad to see Bindine popping off as well. I mean, it's not like you're seeing him on the kill fee, but certainly the impact is there. He's staying alive, assisting in kills, running down the supports on the opposite side as well. And beyond that, I was honestly quite impressed with Bellasria's Rhine on that uh, control center as well. Had a lot of impact, really put the pressure down on the Hangzhou Spark in their face with the hammer at all points. So now as we head into map number two, I think no matter what, Soul Dynasty are already proving that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe and even best the Hangzhou Spark, and that is a pretty big improvement compared to what we saw last week. I was struggling to read this one. Luckily, Unknown came in to tap me on the shoulder, basically, and explain what I was reading. Weekends, boy or man, Changshik. I was like, what does this mean? It means he's the man of the weekends. Because I guess if anyone didn't know, Changshik has got approval to actually be back on the broadcast. So he didn't have to retire from yeah. casting after all, which is great. W, thank you, Korean military, for <laughs> allowing us to keep him on the Korean side of things. But uh, yeah, we'll focus up now and get ready to go into map number two. But as you can see, I mean, it feels like for the first time in a long while, I mean, I guess you could include the Panthera series, but it's been a while since we've seen big smiles on the faces of the Dynasty players. That's what Chabelle Saria is really failing at right now. And he's had some pretty tough games in the past. And well, currently he's got to be the man to step it up because this meta is going to be all about the Winston play, of which he'll be the one piloting. So unlikely to see Void unless we get a Circuit Royale, which is not on board today. So Nambani is going to be another very die favor map. But, you know, I, I made the question in the pregame for this particular series and the future series as well. But maps like Nambani, very echo favored, I would say. And so now the question comes through to Banjo Spark. I think Lee will come on towards the echo. Shy on the Tracer. We've already seen them do that. Leos. I haven't really seen Dynasty play much of the Echo so far this year, and yeah. that's going to come down to Prophet's Echo with Easy Hunt Tracer. So, uh, Easy Hunt has, we've seen a little bit of Easy Hunt Tracer in the past, but still not his real signature, not really his main type of hero and, or Prophet. He's had a good Echo. He's had a really interesting history with the hero. Started out struggling on that on the initial release. Started to then be on that yeah. proof of the hero, but I don't think he ever reached the heights that leave it on Echo. I don't think that's unfair to say either. Let's see if it actually does come into play, but you can see it right now. Leaf getting ready to come out the gates with it, and this could force a swap from the side of the dynasty unless Easy Han can really just continuously hack him out of the sky, but expecting Leaf to be playing yeah, well, off on that cliffside flank. I think on A point, you can definitely get those hacks. There's a lot of high ground areas. Easy Han will get the extended scouting report here as well. So plenty of these battlements type of areas like where Easy Han is standing gives you the height required to get the manual hacks onto leaf. Uh, confirmed the type of composition. Hangzhou and Spark have now also confirmed the composition of Assault Dynasty. Once you see the Sombra, you know they're playing standard. Not much ambiguity about that one. And so here goes Leaf, getting ready to go off onto that flank. A crossover towards the left side. Looks like he's going to have Shy alongside him here on the low ground as well. Jump up, Sticky Bomb is looking for the kill here. Let's just try to execute Benham, but actually it's going to be Easy Han who does find that first kill. Leave taken down. Out of the skies, point occupied for a brief little moment here at least, but Shy, Gushwai off screen somewhere, just getting ripped to pieces. Oh, what a safe dart connects. Nice thing done from Grillin. That's it for the kill. Gushwai still a sliver of HP. I mean, Bellsbury kind of held that he really desperately wants to dive in, try to get this execute, but it's just too risky. Yeah, you wouldn't uh, want to see Bellsbury feeding in that sort of position. That would be a point likely over at least two ticks gone. Soul Dynasty ended up defending against the dive pretty comfortably. We didn't see Shy being part of the dive. I think I just saw Gushray and Leave landing on end. Leave's dropped in at least some stickies, but got hacked out and killed by Easy Han. So Easy Han, as we expected, is the only member that can really do anything about Leave, and they'll have to continue being the one to hack Leave out of the skies if they want to shut him down. I'm stuck buying that left side high ground to the dive perhaps here already filling, making his leap from the high ground still under fire taking a bit of damage Belseria comes in to try to protect Shine looking for a target as well point contested no tick up coming through quite just yet here for the side of the spark but now that it has been cleared out you can start moving up so first tick looking like it's going to be guaranteed they do go ahead lock that one in easy Han onto the high ground deciding which target he wants to go for what the call is going to be 
You can get Sports both. hovering nearby, I do believe, and yep. He goes across, Monk not taken down. They're not able to find the elimination. It comes in, Shy nearly falling as the Nano goes across here on to leaves. Looking for a target, will be able to take down Profit. It's gonna be a train out here on these tracers. Second tick now getting ready to come through. Bellastry of the Primal, expired. Now needing to go ahead and try to contest this point. The Nano gonna have to be invested just to make sure that that can happen somewhat safely. Just diving forward, rally out, out from Langs have been aimed low. Pops his own to try to keep them in this fight. Slip truck onto the tank, Bellastry are gonna be taking it out. Gishway nearly up to his own primal, and Belsria cannot get out to safety. He's getting tagged down. Monk finding that kill. Pulse on that from Profit. Will be able to find Monk on the back end, but the kills, the HP bars are just coming through here from the side of the Hangzhou Spark. They clean him up, they get the cap. It's just shy of four minutes down the time bank. Decent amount of, I think, stall from the Soul Dynasty, but just lacking the ability to actually get that retake in there with Belisria down. No further ultimate. If the Vindame Rally isn't going to be enough to carry them through, and it wasn't, that's unfortunately going to be the Soul Dynasty bowing out of the A defense. And the more unfortunate part is they couldn't force a primal or the duplicate either. If they had a better fight there, they force the extra ultimates and they still lose. That's probably at least better on the resource side. But now Spark, look at the snowball a little bit further out from their A cap, which did encounter some difficulties, but once Leaves started to get some frags and the Sultanis started to lose their backline, things got real tough. Trying to get some semblance of control here. Stop the card in its tracks, but Ben Haim gonna get cleaved down. Gooshway finding that kill, and Krillin's getting juggled all the way back over to the spawn room. Narrowly able to exit because he just how deep they are. Felsria managed to find one though, peeling off Lee to get rid of him, but now it's gonna be traded out. Gooshway also finds Profit, so overall a trade up here for the stuff. The Hunter Spark door just very much gliding forward. Have not had any opposition whatsoever. And it comes down to stopping this card in its tracks, and it looks like they might just go get beat for relatively for free. Felsria oh, having to play forward. Cross. For the time being, but the pulse bomb from Shy takes him down. Now just 41 meters left to go. Then him as well, going to hold up the sticky bombs. Shy recalls back up the cart with the cap comes in. It's now four minutes and ten seconds. Yeah, ran out of time there. Krillin didn't have the nano. That's what they really were messing. Bellish Rear correct the dive on in. He's the only one that can really stop the payload, but the survivability just is not present because no primal yet, no nano yet. The nano would allow Bellish to get the primal on. Then Soul Dynasty are in a position to actually be able to defend B. But the Spark had made too much distance. The Soul Dynasty just weren't able to stop the payload at any point. So all these ultimates that are coming online now, it's upsetting because these are the ultimates that could have been used for B, but they just didn't have them. Monk taking down Profit once again. We'll find him there with that Pulse Bomb lead now eliminated. So big trade up here for the side of the Dynasty. You start to find some kind of foothold. Locking the cart here just in front of the final corner. The Shy going down. That's going to force a reset. Able to answer back any kills, but this is going to be a very long hold from the side of the dynasty if they want to deny this full cap, this full push rather coming through. And now you can see Hangzhou Spark changing it up. Mm -hmm. Soul Dynasty as well made that one really cheap, and you expect that Soul Dynasty were going to be able to have something good to show for this portion to see, especially early on. The four ultimates, only one of which is used, and the cheapest one as well on the pulse bomb. Speaks good for their ability to now be able to get a bit more on this defense, especially with the leave and shy swap. We know those are two fresh ultimates now. So no one's got any ult charge. They've now confirmed the nano availability on Monk. Still waiting for the EMP from Easy Hunter. That's the big ticket. The more time they can spend without having to commit it, the better. But leave now. Going to be nanoed up. Goes into the back line alongside Gooshway. Just looking to put the pressure down onto Binhaim. The most they can do is get him down to about half HP. But as soon as the nano expires, they manage to just turn that one around. Leave take it down. Shine out dead as well. Easy Hunt. Need to hold on to the EMP. Not going to be necessary unless he wants to use it here for tempo, but I think he definitely want to save it for a team fight. Pulse bomb perhaps committed to Walker Profit as he dashes forward. There's the stick. Kill. Not going to be found though. Got Gooshway instead. It's another one pulse victory, and the pulse this time wasn't even really part of the fight when Soul Dynasty mostly get that one through the neutral itself. So they still just hold on to every other ult they had previously, plus the extra rally now. I've just got to be a little bit careful here. But it's actually shy. Zap down. Celestry of all people just up there not flying down the cart against the opposition's tank. Just manages to hound him down, finds that kill. Pulse bomb in. Rally now gonna be used. Ben Aim. Just keep him alive and Lynx is gonna be matching on the opposite side. Still not found. Off that pulse. This dynasty can continue to hold and they continue to hold on to the CMP where Easy Hunt right now looking yep. like he's gonna be on the hunt. Finds the positioning here of Langs that EMP pull can't get around the corner to deny that line of sight. Ends up falling. Prop now we're gonna create it out. Leaf finding that kill. They'll need more though to try to get this cart moving. It's just stuck on this last little corner. So well, then he's shy. to hold the line. We Answering go. EMP now coming through. Nano's out. However, Krillin just amplifying Vinhaim, trying to keep him alive. Bell's in the meantime, managing to find Monk. 
takes down that back line and stops the nato from coming through from spark now it's just a minute and 12 seconds remaining it's just so hard because krillin's playing so far back he's got the nano boost available if we'll be emp then that target is going to be nano which was vindane so so dynasty i mean they've just had so many resources to play with and both translocators in the same spot here shy will maybe go for the kill in the translocator to allow the spark to find this otherwise just wait for easy hunt to teleport back the time is running out Less than one minute to go now. Just an added play through realistically. Right in the back line, Fuchway. There's a pressure on the Krillin. Now the sights turn to Vinhaim out into the open. Krillin's on the way. Can't get that healing through. Oh, Probably just goes dead. to the back line and he finds both supports. Monk again. Yep. Not going to get to use his nano. And maybe not even for the rest of the map. The translocate comes in. Shy. Narrow. Escape from him. Fuchway dead with a primal. 20 seconds, the final reset. Shy needs to get the hell out of here, but they are chasing through. They know exactly where he's at. He didn't have a preset translocator. He's just trying to exist, trying to stay alive. He'll start coming through from the low ground. Monk keeps him in the mix. Very important. If Shy dies there, I think it, it would have been disastrous if Shy went down. Same for Leaf here. He's lost his recall. So who's going to go for the touch? Shy already has it. Kushway next. So a lot of ultimates online for Spock. They have a shot to finish, but it will have to happen in the OT. And if they don't get some good kills now, Vindame and Easy Hunt will also have these ults online. Well, there's one lead coming up with the kill profit's going to be eliminated belstria as well under fire he needs to be careful because that emp that pulse bomb those could both lead to his demise easy hunter taking a nap the emp now coming across they look for van Ham to manage to find it that's going to be a big cancel on the rally shutting down that green hp from coming through and no one else can get the touch so it's a cap in overtime but considering how things started considering yeah. that you know from the time that the time bank that they had when they capped a was smaller than the timing they had when they capped b they were so breezy through that second phase of Nimbani but they still get held all the way down to zero. I mean, ironically, the thing that really made things hard for the Hunger Spark was how well they played on B because they managed to keep uh, Cap B in the game state, which was that the Soul Dynasty were coming up the ultimate, but didn't quite have them. Meant the Soul Dynasty then managed to get a lot of resources just in time for the early C defense. That also happened at the same time that the Hunger Spark did a minor comp change where Lee was going to go off the Echo back on the Tracer, Shy back on the sombra these are all things you'd expect i think echo starts to fall off on c same as when we saw fire comps for the past from barney you don't really play that hero no flyers on c policy but that all means that hunger spark they're going to be down on resource they're going to be down on all their ability to snowball on c is very low and soul dynasty are then able to make a timing for a bunch of ults on that last point and hunger spark lose ultimates and soul dynasty get to snowball so effectively on that final point and you also see plenty of fights once again kind of a mirror of the Lee Jung tower that we saw where it's monk and Lengsa continuing down and spark once more just can't keep their supports alive in critical situations the shot. i don't need to have that strong attack prop and we're going to show us the echo here actually backed with the mercy are they going to swap this yes okay then aim we'll go over to brigida i was going to say it'd be a bit odd and now they're oh, going back to the mercy Okay, okay so it's going to be full pocket. So I, this could be Prophet and Vindime going coast side together, currently playing main. Because if you're going to get pocketed, you can play coast side very effectively. Nothing can really take you down there. There's no hack to worry about. It's not going for that. Instead, wants to try to find. He's a force that leaves, just up. goes ahead and destroys Vindime. Then follows up for Prophet. Krillin's dead. Leave just comes up with three huge kills. Potentially, you can get the fourth here as the sticky bombs and the beam come across, but Shy will be able to claim it for himself as the final blow. But that is a team kill Damn. right off the rip. He just kills both. He kills Vindime and then just gets profit right afterwards. Like, all right, you want to play with a mercy? I don't need a mercy. You do. That's your problem. And Vindime's like, all right, okay, back to Brig. I think we need a Brig. Need to do something here that can uh, do a little bit more long range healing for Easy Hunt as well. Something to dissuade Shy in these fights. Very clean opening fight for the Hunger Spark. Oh, Belstria taking a nap off the back of the dive on the high ground here. Beam from Prophet will be able to find Langston, but he needs so much more than that's going to make it for the tank. And Leave instead is just going to be able to find a second elimination once more. Now five, I believe, in the map. Shy gets Vinhaim. So far, this attack is falling flat from the side of the Dynasty. Nearly half the, the time bank taken away from them. is yep. just an extended team kill once more. And th this was my worry for the Soul Dynasty on A. I think for the rest of them, Barney, things get a lot better, as we saw on that final point of the defense. But... On the attacking side for this A point, Lee versus Prophet on the Echoes, it's, it's not really much of a debate. I think everyone unanimously agrees that Lee's Echo is just better, and it's showing currently. 20% lead on the ult charge here that Lee has. First two ultimates online, other DPS ones for the Spark. 
back off, grabbing that Mega Pack. Bellas Rhea just worked down to half HP pretty much any time he shows his face, and it's been really slow going trying to build up towards that Primal Rage here. So still about 30% behind Fujiwai. He's about to have his online. Sticky Bomb is not going to be too much of a concern here for Gushui. ZZ Han on the flank, waiting, lingering. I don't think he's been noted yet, but this Pulse Bomb needs to connect. Dashing forward, drops down, throws it, not going to be able to find oh, it. He almost gets slept into it, but either way, Monk is still going to be able to collect a kill. Drop it now, out with the dupe, goes for the enemy Ana. Building up the Nano now online. Needs to invest that one sense into Bellatria moments before he would have died. In the meantime, Gushway leaving down this back line. Try to get an isolation here on Abinahim, pushing him forward up towards the rest of the teammates. And eventually, he will just fall. Solo kill confirmed there for Gushway. Bellatria now going to be antied out onto the point of being nearly online. Or the side of leave would be enough to finish him off. Goes straight down to a sliver. Somehow actually does manage to get away with his life intact. But again, it's another hold of the progress. And Hangzhou Spark still hold on to ultimates. And that's the biggest thing because Soul Dynasty spin big there. It's a large exchange of ultimates. Will Hangzhou Spark come out of top with extra ultimates of boost still in the tank? And a massive shutdown to Vin Dime. He's not really had too many rallies go to success here because he's just targeted every time he rallies. And it shows you who Spark's carry really is because they give all these nanos to leave every time. ready we back up in the sky monk taking the front of that healing to try to get that next nano ready to go which krillin 16 percent away from at the moment they still need to get to the end of the map I haven't even gotten any percentage here on point a waiting for nano Looking brutal nano is have. there but that yeah like you said that's it Profit still getting tagged low the dive coming in to look at form shy has to use the recall to prop it up into the air is the recipient here of this nano boost just to try to get him some value, try to find some eliminations. Bellastria? Find the point now on the low ground. Bellastria falling low. Heals come across to keep him alive for the time being. Pulse bomb nearly there for Easy Han, but Shy close to matching. OT going to be forced out. And this has got to be everything here for the Seventh Soul Dynasty. The dupe is available. Leaf takes to the skies. Nano boost across. Gushway, the recipient of that one. Sees himself alive. Lengths it down to a sliver of HP. Oh my god, he lives. Still not found. He does manage to hold on. And Easy Han now dead. Pulse Bump not going to be found. Pulse Bump from Shai, however, comes through. Bell's Rhea taken out. Two for one exchange here at the hands of the Hangzhou Spark as they look for this full hold coming through. The first tick still not even quite established here from the side of the Soul Dynasty. But Easy Han, yep, he's just now respawning. That is going to be it. Damn near perfection from the side of the Hangzhou Spark, not allowing a single tick to come through. They get the full hold here on Nimbani answering back. And you know, the really crazy thing about this map is if A was camped out by the Soul Dynasty, it's not a guarantee that Spark can actually win that map. But they are so much better at playing the A point, primarily because of how much better I think Leave is on the Echo compared to Profit. Stats don't lie here either. 12 final blows for Leave to 5 deaths, 6 final blows for Profit to 8 deaths. Profit went negative there. He had a lot of good stats on the Tracer, but then comes to the attacking side and it just did not show they had to overspend ultimate Soul Dynasty were not getting those results Vin Dime could not live during the rallies and Soul Dynasty couldn't push through main effectively they were just being beaten batted down by the DPS duo of Shy and Lee who were both heavily out damaging their counterparts on that defense well, there you go Hangzhou Spark able to equalize the score line make it a one for one so perhaps that five mapper can come through well, I'll just wait and see though as we do have escort on the horizon Let's see who's able to gain the lead from there and take it up the map the point when we come back
And we are back and tied up at one to one. An excellent hold from the side of the Hangzhou Spark. They pushed to the end of them, Bonnie. Not having any time in the time bank, but it did not matter because they put the feet down, they buckled in, and then uh, did not allow for the dynasty to get a single tick on point A. So now we're tied up as we get ready to go to escort. Hangzhou played to their strengths wonderfully on that map. And as I mentioned, I, th I think if things went to the distance on Numbani, it's not guaranteed that they could actually win, but they won where they were strong, and that's what counts for Hangzhou as we're about to head into map number three, which will be on Dorado. And you know what's funny about Dorado? Dorado A is more Echo. I was going to say, yeah, another map for that Echo diff to come through, perhaps from Leave, maybe. Uh, but if that does happen, perhaps we'll see Prophet just go over to something like the Cassidy that he hasn't played in quite some time. I think Easy Hunter will probably do that. Yeah, yeah. It'll no. be Easy on Zero for sure. I'm happy for the either Frog's one. back. Frog is back, this time cheering for the side of the Hangzhou Spark. Well then, take a look though, ready for. at the dynasty because we do have a little bit of a milestone that was hit for profit uh, oh, after yeah? that opening map of Li Zhang Tower. It was his 400th map oh, win. Oh damn! So 400th well, map he's, win. He's gonna be breaking every record now because, um, well, Carpe was the other guy that was kind of neck and neck with profit in terms of you got you remember like it was two, maybe two years ago oh, we were lived, doing. Yeah the 10,000 was 10,000 final blows at Elims. But, it might have been final you know, blows. Either now, way. Profit now is one of the longest standing players, one of the few season one players that we still have in here. It's been a start of the entire time. He's basically never been benched outside of, he basically benched himself earlier this year because uh, he needed a little bit of a break, but that's one of the few times we actually didn't even see Profit play. It's worth mentioning that you know, Profit does not hold the record actually for most map wins. He's in second place, and the person that does have more than him is Violet it's with Carpe, 435. No, it's Carpe. Yeah. Uh, Carpe because unfortunately, he's not in the Carpe, top ten. <laughs> well, he might be, but he's not. At, no, I'm, no, I lie. He's not in the top ten. I was going to say maybe he's not there because he's not a current player. But then I just saw the rest of the list, and it's full of players that are not currently playing. So I was going to say there's a lot guys of like Jonak who... on there. Jonak retired a while ago, and he's at 337 in there. Yep, Jonix at 5th place, Void at 312 in 6th, then Shu, Choi Hyobin, another Why one. Why does Carpe not have more? That is very strange, because he's been Carpe play for a long time. Uh, because Fusion didn't win the maps that they needed to. You know, I didn't want to say it, but, you know, you you went there. I didn't want to say it. It's fine, that's about the Fury, Fusion. That team doesn't exist Fury anymore. and Mono. Fury and Mono had, they were in the Fusion, I suppose, for less time than Carpe, but... They were there. I mean, we also didn't get to see much of Carpe outside of a couple, a handful of maps last year, right? When MN3 had his, uh, his injury, so. But he didn't He didn't always have to compete for the starting role, because I think in the first four years, he was basically like a permanent starter now. Pretty sure. Yeah. But you miss that one season widely, it, and it things can slip doesn't, away. Uh, it doesn't surprise me that Violet is leading number one on 435, because... He's been on two championship teams. Even Shock last year went to the finals. He's had so many good runs this year. Houston, he's been winning a lot. So no surprises for me that Violet is on top. Right there with you. Well, let's see if he can add a 402nd map win. No, a 401st. Sorry, they didn't yep. win Nimbani after all. Correct. So maybe he can get to that 401. So it looks like it's just going to be Tracer v Tracer, Sombra v so, Sombra. Yeah, Leave didn't start Echo on the defense. Interesting. Oh, okay. He TP up to the high ground. Him. That's a, a big change up TP here. As well. you, yeah. you don't normally see that TP. Yeah, this is very aggressive here. Easy Khan's still going to be on the Widowmaker. Profit taken down. Easy Khan with the headshot. Monk going to be eliminated, but then him traded out. And now you can see the Widow having to be swapped off. So the Sombra comes in. So I guess an attempt at the opening volley. Get them set up onto the high ground. Hope that they crush and then go from there. But it unfortunately just does not work out. Spark defended well there. They saw what was coming. Saw the TP instantly backed out. And appropriately just pushed the dynasty away and got the counter frags necessary with only losing easy. Only losing Monk. It will be coming back pretty quickly. You can see Monk in the silhouette. Making his way back. It's, in, it's slow enough though that it does allow Soul Dynasties some free pushing time on the payload. here on the high ground shot across just trying to get some damage down on the leaf but Clark does manage to glide up here into the underpass for a brief little moment but now it can be locked in place 
how long it takes here for the side of this whole dynasty to try to break through this position. Pulse Bomb very much has been online for Levy. He's just been holding this in his back pocket for a while. I thought maybe, given everybody corralled down into that lower room, that he would be going for it, but doesn't want to over pursue, doesn't want to give his life up. We'll wait for a bit more of an assured opportunity. They're waiting for Shy, I think, on the EMP. Holding Palo well, though. Palo's been stuck in the archway for some time. Wallspark slowly get these ultimates in. They are still ahead of the Soul Dynasty. Monk, despite dying and having a long run back from spawn, is still on par with Krillin for the Nano, which is impressive. EMP now out, and that catches so many players on the side of the Dynasty. We're not playing split apart at all. That's just kind of the nature, I suppose, of the marketplace here on Dorado, but either way, just into the meat grinder there for them. Krillin trying to stay alive, but yeah, it's not going to be allowed to. Shy, leave, even Langs up pushing all the way up just to find that kill, and it's one ult burn, nearly four online for the yep. spark to get the fight win. They continue the hold. And minimal payload distance as well. You can see that the payload only barely got out of the archway and now sliding backwards as Soul Dynasty could do nothing against that EMP. Easy Hunt still whacking by 12%, so I think they would have revealed as well that Easy Hunt when he got hacked up by the EMP, he didn't actually have his own EMP yet. It's online now, so we'll see how that comes on through. Leave, not getting the stick, not getting the kill. Bells we had taken low. Rally going to be used. Still wants to hold on to this Primal Rage. We're seeing this Langs up. Going to receive the Nano. and also pops the Rally immediately. To keep himself alive in the fight. Prompt the Pulse Bomb goes in, finds Monk. Some the kill coming through. Now the EMP onto the back end. But he can find some more eliminations. But Prophet going down before the right as the EMP comes through. Means that the damage through, but it's just cut down so severely. Wait in the back line for Primal Rolling, but needs to make his exit over towards this Mega Pack. Will be able to do so, but friends his last leap, so actually can't come over the wall for a little bit of extra time. Let's bring these Nano here. Okay, he survives without the Nano, so they can use the Nano for the end. That's well played. Patience shown by Krillin. To not have to burn it early. That's their win condition. It's the one thing they really need, but instantly slept Ooh, and woken. Suffered. Instantly woken up as well. Not exactly what you want. EMP, however, still going to be going through. Easy Han taken low. Does manage to get out, but it's good. again going to be Prophet taken down. Damage severely limited once more. It's a better Blue trade place. for Dynasty, though. They have a tank and Spark don't. Very true. Pulse Bomb in, though. Now they don't have a Nana. Quillen gets taken down with that one. Just get away from the explosive radius. He was left. Oh, okay. I missed that one, but either way, a good combo to come through there from the side of the Spark. 18 seconds remaining. The respawn now in. Free rally out from Benheim just to try to get them each peed up as they make their approach back over here towards the cart. Shield bash at the ready. Could go for the stun, but instead just pulling back. Keeping his teammates alive as best as possible. Quite occupying the cart for the time being. Easy Han. Build up the EMP here in a bit of a longer fight. Needs to not get picked off. 6% away. Prop as well. 16. Towards that next pulse bump. Might be necessary to try to get them over the finish line here. Easy Han going to be going low. Instantly pulls the trigger. The EMP goes across. Leaf going to be taken down. Well, from up from Prophet, not going to find the elimination, but the cleanup is coming through as Gucci and Langs will also die. Just the team kill here, likely extended as Shy makes his exit with the translocator. Picking around the backside on the hunt for him, but the cap is there. That was down to the wire for sure. The Shy's translocator being down, killed by Easy Han. Vindane will find the kill on the Shy, and they'll get all five. An extended team wipe. And a very required one. That came into the ot soul dynasty had one shot they needed to burn whatever they had and what they had was an emp that was slowly coming online for the spark spark unfortunately just couldn't get enough kills to at least have a player advantage nothing to work with but now they have similar to what we saw in Mbani, actually a lot of ultimates for the next point so we take him out of the equation no opportunity to use that primal rage and monk will also find profit and force easy on to relocate back Ben Ames into the meat grinder here as the supports will be the last little saggers coming through. Is he not able to escape? I mean, I think. Well, they want to escape. Translate gets back up onto the high ground. He's got no HP at the moment. I mean, any damage would have just taken him down, but luckily he does manage to survive. But still, it's just a minute and 20 remaining. Yeah, truly a sliver of HP there and time that Soul Dynasty can ill afford to waste as they desperately need another EMP. I think Shy at this state is basically the last easy hunt as well because. We do know that Shy is one EMP ahead. That kill onto Shy is going to allow Easy Han to try and close that gap. He needs something to work because look at the Hundred Spark Ult's got four of them online. They're so stacked and and Soul Dynasty are committing, but this time they lose Vindane. Yeah, I mean the call just comes in. I believe it was Anthony. The leave just goes in the back, finds him isolated, takes him down. Card not really getting any distance here, but the great hack on the leave does set up the kill. The profit going to be traded out. Shy finds him on the opposite side, so both sides without their tracers for now. Which way? I mean, he sees Krillin corralled into this room. He's got a primal range. Doesn't want to pull the trigger on this one. 
Fancy gets lobbed in. They manage to connect on the two. Krillin getting taken lower and lower, and the rally from Vinheim is not going to be able to save him. Kill found, and it's just death cycles here for the Dynasty players. And they're losing ults as well. Dynasty are losing while using ults, and Spark have continually charged up ultimates and didn't feel the need to use them. It's just been the pulse bomb from Leave, and that's it. So, Soul Dynasty, it's, it's, they're losing and then some because the resources as well. Nano gone when they were one player down. Rally down when they were one player down. Now, 10 seconds left remaining. EMP versus EMP. But the big difference is Spark of Double Support Ultimates to survive the EMP. They can hit him in time. Translocator found here from Shy. When I don't think he should, he should just go for it. Scouted. They send it. EMP does come through. He tries to drop down onto the low ground. Easy Han, however, will still be hounded down as Lee finds the elimination. To try to end this push. Well, Sria back here off the high ground cart recontested once again a little bit of distance inching forward here as monkey into the corner will be stuck will be taken oh down and shy gets taken out with him monk the double kill here from profit that could be enough to go ahead and continue this push at least for a little bit longer because nothing else was found and that's all the ults committed on either side except for Krillin, who's nearly about to have that nano online if Linkster dies if they lose more players spark the recontest is going to be really bad dynasty can absolutely cap now especially if they have the nano online I think they do. I think and this doesn't look this like a up. real contest. They I think Gusha will go for this one. No. Oh, dude, I gotta talk about this, man. Shy, that was greedy. Go he off, saw King. a translocator from Easy Clan and he decided to wait and go for the translocator kill instead of just playing the EMP. It's EMP versus EMP. Last fight on B, your priority cannot be to play for a translocator kill when your bigger priority is actually just to go for the better EMP. You allow the spark to eat this entire big EMP from Easy Clan while Shy was on a mission. That's just so bad. Not ideal whatsoever, giving them a way back into this map. Pulse bomb up from Leaf will find Krillin, however. Rally rolling from Vinheim to try to continue the push, but for now the cart going to be locked into position. But Langs have taken down. Belshry has to come away with that kill. Still very low as Anzi now. He's down here onto the low ground in the underpass and will not be able to escape. Got the tank. The rest of the dynasty have to fall away. So 35 seconds remaining is oh, this could be a monstrous dagger. Huge pick up there with just no time remaining. Yep. And it's likely that Spark's still in the holding here, but it just have to be the hold on C instead of B. Ultimate's coming online. Big time double EMPs and Shy's option to redeem himself here. Play for the EMP first. Forget about any cheeky business. Get the EMP done. That's number one. Profit can do it again. False bomb online, forced to recall already. Translocate out, Shy, ready for the setup here onto the EMP. Who's the target gonna be? Looks like the answer is gonna be Vinham. Nano boost. Actually went over to Belisria, perhaps? Hard to tell. Either no, Nano way. went to Vindane, but he just oh, died anyway. Just destroyed him then. Yeah. The Prophet still holds onto the false bomb, but I don't know if he's gonna be able to find value this time around. 76 HP remaining for him. Card still contested. Belisria pop of that primal with barely any time to spare. Slept off a bit, pulse bomb in. He goes low, he goes down. Things that will find the finisher there. Which way now with one of his own. Cleaves down Krillin, Easy Han taken out. That's just going to be the extended team kill coming through as the cart will at long last be stopped in place. The OT can bleed down. Hangzhou Spark manages to halt the Soul Dynasty in their tracks before they can get to C, but it could have been so much cleaner, so much more dominant than this. Should have been so much better. Yeah, and, that, and this the, now the real problem becomes if the Hangzhou Spark fail to cap B or fail to get any amount of meaningful distance on C. Then they can they'll be kicking themselves knowing that they would have had this map had it just ended on b instead but likely i think spark will have the advantage on this map they've looked pretty clean so far their dives generally speaking been better they haven't even needed to play for the echo let's take a look at the double pulse from again so just a couple of members all corralled together monk stuck in the corner oh, right as shy drops EMP. down oh wait did the, did the, i think the emp did land but it maybe only landed, clicked battle but... It landed, but they started the EMP off with two people dead, including one of their supports and a lot that's, of the that, And that's the so. thing, because they got EMP'd first, because Easy Han pulled the trigger first, because Shy was, he was in Narnia doing a little translocator stuff. It's like, who cares? Why, why are you doing that? Play the EMP. That's what Easy Han did, and that's what allowed Soul Dynasty to win. Well, they do have this win condition set up for themselves. It's a bit further away than they would have liked, for sure. It looks like Leave is going to be taken to the skies nice and early, though, with this Echo once again to try to make this as yeah. quick and painless it's, as possible. It's easier on A, because I here's what I respect. That they, they didn't choose to play the Echo A defense, and okay, that's fair, because they could have been maybe counter swap, Easy Hunt, maybe just Ghost Cassidy. I don't know, something could have happened there. Maybe Easy Hunt just snipes Widow from spawn, right? 
but when you're on the attacking side you can take these risks you can also change your comps if you don't like it which is what it looks like is happening right now maybe lee was expecting profit to also be on the echo and he was opting for the echo versus echo but seeing that profit's playing tracer lee will match Just keeping him alive as best as possible here, Monk. Anti down into the back line. Belstri able to pursue deep enough to get that opening elimination. Good start to this one. So he goes back up onto the high ground and they'll force the translocate out of Shy as well. Prop in the meantime, having a bit of a field day. More so is easy on at 52% already for this EMP. Defensive somber advantage. Get all the good high ground position to start out with. Attacking side that you'd like to see Monk a little bit further ahead on the nano boost here. So it's been slow going so far. Pacing on payload has been really not existed and Profit's done a good job of keeping that one contested. Recall did get burned though. And speaking of being burned, Kushre, lucky to be alive. Yeah, tons of damage being put through onto him. Easy Han just holding his ground, not really deterred at all by 99. that Winston up into his face. And yep, 99 now the EMP online. Shy noted here onto the low ground as well. Easy Han getting spotted for a brief little moment, but now he's got the setup. He sees both supports. Waiting for the moment to go ahead and pull the trigger. He does so. Both supports get caught. Langs it. Just trying to backpedal the shield raise. Shield bashes his way back over the spawn room. But Belstria still gets the elimination. Great beginning here to the hold on the side of the dynasty. It's the cart. Not really gaining anything. Just getting ready to enter the underpass. And that's about half the time being taken away. You can tell this spark was unprepared for that EMP. That came so quick. And nicely charged up by Easy Khan. Had that ultimate base before anyone else had anything. Monk did get a early nano boost in Krillin, but that's been equalized now with the lost team fight. No LOS. Krillin, yeah, not having it. Otherwise, the nano absolutely could have come through. Vinham as well going to be taken down with these kills. It's going to be a monstrous amount of push oh, that's coming tragic. through. Maybe just enough time to get a recontest if Easy Han can buy some space. I mean, for sure, Bellastria, I mean, at minimum, Bellastria can just climb from spawn and get there at any point, but. Soul Dynasty, four ultimates and losing the fight does not feel good. Instant EMP burn onto Bellastria. Didn't even get a chance to use the Prime One. As we mentioned, Krillin, no well, save of the Nano, old. but they'll use that now for the retake. Okay, they force Shy back. He's been catching up here towards Easy Han, but Krillin gonna be taken out. Gushway into the back line. He's managing to find that kill. It's not even with a Primal. She still holds on to. Now he's looking for Venham, knowing that he's just alone support. Wants to try to take him down. Profit will find Lee, but that's definitely reduces the damage output. Now Monk is going to be eliminated as well. Profit and the pulse bomb kill, keeping them in this one. Venham still on the fire, however, will eventually call a shot. Finds the elimination. He's with a rally rolling, just trying to keep them in this one. Got the shield bash across. Valtteri just tries to knock him away from the car, but Shai eventually finding the better of Easy Han. Langs now going to be taken down. Right, his monkey's going to be rejoining into the fight, but the villain as well. Back through. Nano. Or anti nade rather, out on the two. Gushway taking low. Pulse bomb into the back line from Lee. Not going to be able to find a stick. Not going to get that elimination that they so desperately want. They try to finally get this cap. It's just 0.73 meters left to go here for the side of the Hangzhou Spark, but they might have to do a full reset. Yeah, and the time is a real factor here as well. And now it's going to come down to EMP. Very similar to what we saw previously with Soul Dynasty pushing A, running out of time, and easing out to EMP, saving the day. Four man capture. It's pretty big, but no kills yet. It's on one, but it's actually going to be Krillin who finds the first kill out. Easy on into the back line with an EMP of zone. Finds Monk, Ben Hame, however, going to be taken down. Also, trigger on this alt. Monk going to be eliminated. That's a two for one trade up, but now going to be equalized. Oh, wait, the cap! Krillin, and the cap is in! They're not playing the cart. Instead, the cap just comes through, so it's going to be two and a half minutes out of the time bank. Going to swap back over to the break here for Vindame. To be fair, Soul Dynasty lost a lot of members here, but yeah, absolutely. Gushwe managed to push that one through. Or oh, Soul Dynasty were caught napping. It wasn't guaranteed that Spark were going to win that fight. I think Easy Heart probably would have liked to have a little bit more value on the EMP as Shy barely gets out with his life there. But uh, yeah, I don't think that was a guaranteed fight win for either squad. Could have gone either way. Massive coin flip. Ends up being the cap, and now Spark getting second leaks on life. Not a lot of time, though. Pressure being applied there to Profit as he's just backpedaling his way through the bank, trying to escape a shy, manages to find that kill. Don't even believe he had him hacked, just Profit running out of utility. We try to use it to get himself in this fight. Oh, Easy Han gonna be noted, gonna be found. He kept in the fight though from the Soul Dynasty supports. Spells Rhea nearly with the primal online, but the card has been gliding here during this second phase of yeah. Dorado. And especially in a situation where now Shy has EMP, he even gets a nano, they really want oh. Shy. But he's yeah, dead. They, just, they just absolutely maul him. Take him down. Easy Han collects that elimination. Now a little bit of a window of opportunity to try to catch up and get that next EMP ready to go so they can match it. 
The bubble gets dropped in. We dashing forward, looking for that pulse bomb setup under the line. And Krillin, however, going to be juggled around. And as you can see, the sleep dart very much on cooldown. Can't find anything. Which way looks for Easy Han as well. The poop cannot quite hound him. The cart continues to move forward with a minute and 15 remaining. I'm just Spark getting closer and closer to having that little time bank bump up. EMP, backline caught, Balistria caught. Couldn't Take primal again. EMP out from Easy Han on the opposite side. Now he's going to be taking a nap. Shots come through. Leave arrives to get the quick, quick cleanup. It's a two for zero now. This whole dynasty struggle to find anything here. 19 meters left to go on this push, but they're just going to get zoned off. The profit of the name end up dying. So now two minutes and 20 seconds is what the dynasty needs to defend for if they want to take the lead. There's there's real staggered deaths here as well. So Soul Dynasty still need to regroup as Spark. And get some decent push forward. Shy, no fear. Just gonna go straight up the spawn doors to get a little bit of early farm on. And the payload is basically halfway there to the finish now. Not much further to go. Nana almost online for Monk. The cards are starting to fall in place for the Hunger Spark. They have the tools they need to finish this. They do a would take a catastrophe right now for them to not get this one. But somebody's gonna have to contest this cart sooner rather than later. 1.21 meters as the contest comes through. Profit is staying alive. Stick, however, over Finham. Going to be taken down. Nano not available from Krillin. Monk still holding on to one of his own. Profit dashes back. Grabs the mini pack, but he's got nowhere to go. He just gets absolutely deleted. Leave. Finally, elimination. Bellas Ria with the primal rolling, but now going to be antied out. Gets cleaned up as it's the leave show here in the kill feed. Hangzhou Spark will get the push going through. And that will be them now moving up 2-1 to one in the series. And things started to look a little bit dicey there. I mean, there was a real world where maybe Soul Dynasty got the completed full A hold. To be fair, I think Hangzhou Spark were on board to do a similar thing to the Soul Dynasty. Things on B as well got a little bit tricky for either squad. And when you really come down to it, it's both teams working the same amount of time. Both teams went into the OT for A. Both teams only had 230 work through 4B. The Sparks B was just that much better, that much cleaner. With that much more momentum going into the final point, and that's even with a failed nano boost on the shy to keep him alive and get the EMP going. Even without that, Kushre steps up, primals in, and allows Hangzhou Spark to eventually win a fight, get the EMP in there from shy, and then cap through the rest of the map. Well, the series now in the Hangzhou Spark's hands. Dynasty need to pick up a victory. I believe New Queen Street is our push map to try to tie us up and give us yet another five mapper here today. Otherwise, Hangzhou Spark going to be able to move forward and get that win 3-1. We'll go ahead and see what happens when we come back to the break, so don't go anywhere.
And we're back with Hangzhou Spark, currently in the driver's seat, 2-1 to the scoreline here after they clean up a win on Nambani, then into Dorado. Soul Dynasty need to fight back as we get ready to go into push. They want to extend this all the way to map 5. Things don't look very good for the Soul Dynasty in the mirror so far. I mean, they've had some good moments. Honestly, Soul Dynasty look more improved than they were from last week, but outside of the brawl matchup, the Ryan versus Ram that we had on all the way back on Lee Jung Tower Control Center, Beyond that, things have been at minimum competitive and at worst for Seoul. Very one-sided in Hungry Spark's favor, especially when we look over towards the Echo situation. Thankfully, for profit in the rest of Seoul Dynasty. No Echo to be played on our map number four. But if it's going to be more dive mirrors, we've got to see a little bit more out of the Seoul Dynasty because the Hungry Spark are more than warmed up now on their Winston Tracer Sombra Dive. Very much alive right now for the side of the Hangzhou Spark after that shaky start but i mean it's just right now it's looking like the dynasty can excel when it comes down to these control maps but everything else is still a bit shy of the mark so we'll have to see if they can rally back get this win on new queen street because where they have that undefeated record on record and control that could be what bails them out what if they can get it all the way to a map five and what is the map five as i quickly check over oasis be positive you still do need to i mean it, it will be true on this map and it will be true on oasis as well really take down the spark in this winston somber dive which they to be fair were able to do on gardens so a little bit more of that to come on through would be exactly what the doctor orders for the soul dynasty and even then if you really look back at the gardens though that was a close enough game that you could definitely call it either way a push is momentum focus as it is you need to see the Soul Dynasty get off to that good start. Get some nice early distance established here on this bot. And then just try to play defense from there. Be the way to do it. We'll see, though. If they're going to be able to do just that. Or if this is going to slip their fingers. And they suffer that one in three loss. Hangzhou Spark very much looking hungry for it. And I mean, we didn't see too much of leave when it came down to that opening map of Lijiang Tower. But he has been very present, very much making his presence known across these last two ones. I expect that it's very much going to be the same as we get ready to go into New Queen Street, where we're yep. pretty much just going to be seeing the same exact compositions. And that's the, the other thing as well, is that it's not like Prophet's been a slouch on the Tracer. I mean, you can see that maybe the Echo is not quite up to par versus Leave. Tracer certainly is. Prophet has had some amazing moments today. The double pulse bomb on Dorado comes to mind, obviously. As well as other very clutch moments, I think on uh, the Gardens map, he had some really decent runs, especially the back line of Monk and Linksa. So the Prophet Tracer has been the strong point for the Soul Dynasty. We need to continue to be with the rest of the players also on point. All right, well, Kate's now unlocking as we get ready to begin. And as promised, it is the Tracer of Sombra Winston Dive. You're a man of your word, and I respect that. <laughs> I'll always deliver. One of those guys, I always provide my sources, my posts in a Reddit thread, you know? Not Source, we've seen it here before. Okay, well, Shy is just bopped off. Yeah, taken out of there. Uh, Good opening kill. They almost had to leave as well. He's able to go ahead and recall his way back out to safety, though. But good early kill coming through. Does mean that Dynasty get themselves onto the bot first and foremost. It be a quick turnaround, however, as Kushway looks to just go ahead and push back against them. Leave will keep the bot locked in its place. Always a good day when Vindime gets to play his break. So this is the early start that we wanted to see from Soul Dynasty. And because Shy died as well, he has had no chance to really build up ultimate. Once again, Easy Hunt is going to very clearly have an advantage on the EMP. And with Goose right down, I mean, things just get much better for the Dynasty. They don't even have to use the MP. I was going to say, really disconnected fight here. No one going towards the bot. I mean, Dynasty still keep applying some pressure there. And as they go for the double dive into the back line, they just completely suffer for it. Pulse bomb out from Profit now. Just managed to find lanes that right off the rip. Leaves still trying to catch up with one of his own. And Shy will get caught as Profit is able to find a second elimination. Down low, backs up, he'll start flying through. They're keeping him alive, and it looks like he will not get punished. Now, Gushway in a position as well to get punished once more. Prophet gets top back up. He's immediately dashing right up yep. into his face. Gets the kill, and that could very well be the checkpoint coming in. It's a double death, I mean, it will be because of the EMP alone. It's the, This push is not going to be enough because Spark will have a, another round of respawns. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Soul Dynasty actually spent a little bit of time not pushing Taylor there. All five members went forward. Uh, I don't think you can afford that. You must be maximizing Taylor push the entire way through. 
the EMP gap here should be apparent. Oh my goodness. Yeah, again, easy guy just gets a kill. Maybe they don't need the EMP again. Might not need it at all. Just a couple wow, minutes Kush ago. Kush Kush is just dead again. I mean, the back line right now is just completely uh, just getting smothered by easy on a profit, it would seem. Yeah, and every. By the way, Spark haven't gotten a single kill this whole time. Wait, wow. what? Two minutes and 20 seconds through? Spark have yet to show up on the on the kill feed. Okay, well maybe they can do it now and they will. It's been him gets taken down the EMP committed. Easy Han off screen using one of his own, but it seems like because of this disappointedness here, we're actually not gonna be able to play off the back of that one at all. Bellos Rhea also dead means that finally the Hongo Spark can gain control of this bot for themselves. No reset it. necessary, but forward spawn still there. Don't think Krillin's gonna be able to make it though. It's a good engagement by the Spark. I mean they lose the cap, which is very unfortunate. And that's one of the, the faster caps that we had seen, especially given the dominance of the early game for Soul. Yeah. But I'll just spark win that engagement with far more ultimates still on board. Soul spent far more. And the EMP trade handedly goes the way of Shy. Double support ultimates now for Soul Dynasty is going to hurt them for the next couple fights. The Dynasty weren't really willing to try to go for the trade. It's okay. Primal's going to be forced out here. Shy taken down again by Vinhim with a whip shot. Not sure how he's finding these ones, but either way, support's getting juggled around. Sleep Dart not going to connect. Goose Wait burned out again as everybody's just so busy dealing with Bellas Rhea. He'll dive in, look for a little bit more. Prophet joins in, helps take down that Ana. Monk following the bot again, pushing up. Only 14 meters established here for the side of the Hangzhou Spark. I mean, they yep. have that ult advantage still, but they need to be able to get into a position to actually utilize them. Well, they. It's weird because even losing Shy, I think they could have played that one 4v5 if they just played the ultimates. Primal was used by Bellas Rhea, sure. Kushro probably could have kept, been kept alive with the Nano. Primal himself. The Spark can hold on while they wait for Shy to come back through. Now they're going to have to use these ultimates just to regain the bot control, which is going to be expensive. That's not where you want to see the ultimates, but it's where it's going to have to be placed. And in the meantime, using on nearly that EMP online. Another stick as Prophet finds Monk Shy dead once more. Pulls one out from Leaf, not going to be able to find the elimination here. He's got that mana rolling. Looks like he's not going to be able to get anything done with it. Been late Radical Lengsa. Down. Yeah, Lengsa rallies late, does find that kill. The bot getting brought forward here once again for the side of the Hangzhou Spark, but it's that even feels bad. Distance. It's just a wasted ultimate now. It's like, I mean, the rally just to get one kill when you were already winning the fight. Maybe Lengsa was worried that he was going to die or that the team was going to lose the team fight. They were getting desperate, and that's part of the other issue is, well, they already lost the cap, and if they lose the fight in their own territory, they're going to lose full meterage. They can't afford. This juggle there on the Krillin, but cannot get the kill. Easy on. Oh, shy. Man. Once again, he is just getting dead cycled here. Yep. This EMP so comes Gushway through. I mean, that's easy on lapping him. Lay down. Gushway antied. Has to exit. Has to retreat. Bot again. Starting to push forward. It's just, what, 12 meters at a time, roughly, here. The Uncle Spark are able to gain, but. Bot just continues to get pushed back into towards their side of the map. Easy Han used the EMP prop and immediately collects a kill on a monk. They can't quite find Langs as a follow up, but that's still enough to dissuade Hongjo Spark from moving over to try to get this bot. Shy's gonna have to burn EMP just to win this next fight to regain control. Vindium is gonna pre rally this one. We don't see a lot of pre rallies anymore. Mostly they're used in responses to EMP, not prior to one. Damn it. Don't let them push the barricade. So where is Shy gonna go? He wants backline. And Salt Dynasty, look like they're actually backing out slightly here. Oh, Shy. Narrowly avoiding. <laughs> Only shots flying through, looking to spy check him. There is the EMP across, looking for Vinhaim with the Nano in position. Grillin playing very well disconnected from him, and Vinhaim manages to put that EU's taking down Shy on the back end. Now Belsria unleashed, goes forward. Primal will expire. Pulse bomb in. No getting away from that one, though. It does end up falling. Which way, similarly? In a position where he could get punished, but it looks like Dynasty, they're they're willing to play this one out patiently, don't want to commit the Pulse Bomb in here, just to get that kill, and have Gushway have that faster run back. They just allow for them to gain the bot for now, they'll wait for Belstria, and then they'll go again. Soul Dynasty got meter ridge there, by the way. They stuck to about, what, 13 meters, 70, 70, yep. 90. So, despite eventually losing the fight, they commit a fair number of ultimates, equalizing what Spark put into that fight, but they're the ones that actually walk away with more. So now things just get that much more difficult for Hungdra Spark as we round down to three minutes and 35 remaining. Nano to be used here, which every single advantage. ultimate you see Spark, every single ultimate you see from Spark here is, is one less that they really need to try and get the cap. Oh my god, how does he do it again? Profit, what is that, three for three right now on this map? Gets Monk once more with the Pulse Bomb Stick. Shy into the back line, just trying to harass, trying to come up with something, but it's forced to translocate once again. Which right now isolated in the corner, has to pop the Primal just to try to stay alive. Can he get a juggle off the side of the map here on the somebody? That would definitely be some value found for him, but the kill is just not being 
found. It's just not coming through. Lot brought back to a neutral position, so at least the Dynasty do not have those forward spawns anymore here. But that's about the only reprieve right now that the Hangzhou Spark are fighting, and they're not going to have it for very much longer, it would seem. We're taken down as the EMP comes through once again from Easy Han. They instantly find the kill, and the bot once more is going to be giving them that forward spawn. Mm -hmm. And Spark now can't even really get the payload past the midpoint, so at least previously they were getting, what, 12 meters at a time here. No meters to be found. Can't win enough fights to find it. Time has really become a negative factor for the Spark, and they need to win like three plus fights in a row to really get some good distance. Falls will be able to find Bell's re up. And are not sent out from Grill and try to keep him alive and rally again. Rally gone. Yeah, I'm gonna get cut short. Langs are getting on top of him. Managing to find that kill. And punish. Get some ults out of the side of the dynasty. And they don't win the fight this time around. But like you said, it's gonna take so many fights for them to actually get caught up. And that's the thing, right? Because they have to spend ultimates just to regain bot control. And you need to be saving ultimates if you can to try and get the pivotal fight win to get you the cap. Can Prophet die here? It's like, no. In any Damn case, close. EMP from Shy is the sort of Damocles. That's what they really need, but they want to hold that as long as possible. Right, Langza one killed one him, but he kills Langza. He kills Rhea trying to stay alive. Not going to use the primal. Leave this, find that kill. That is a two for one trade up, but I'm not the Brigida. I think he should have primal. Yeah, obviously makes things a unless bit more he was, difficult. Unless he was hacked. Quite didn't catch it either way. Shy forced away. EMP delayed for a little bit longer. Bot contest is in. Belzeri can rejoin. Well, right now, Spark need to be forcing a lot more. They need to be really pushing a lot harder than this. They're still just waiting for Shy to regain HP. Easy Hunt's about to have an EMP, so that EMP advantage that Shy has had, which, to be fair, I think he should be saving it. Okay, oh, it's not going to result in a kill, it. is it? it no, get the not. kill. Not spotted. And leave it. It's going to be the one who actually gets taken down. Venham able to swing the flail wildly. Comes up with the elimination. Sleep Dart Nano's in on the Gooshway. Can't get the anti down to him, but still a hell of a lot of damage. He comes out all over towards this Winston, and eventually will crumble under the pressure. Bot again now can be shipped back over towards the spark side of the map with 50 seconds remaining the dynasty so very much in the driver's seat here completely maintaining and dictating the pace yep. of this map oh yeah that's right we're definitely going to oasis there's just not a lot left left in the gas tank for the hunter spark that's the 40 seconds left to go now with the shy 60 meters to go 52 meters to be able to push to the end and it's just and they haven't capped yet either Okay, EMP That's finds not a bad both sleep. Rally from Benham, but yeah, Krone's gonna be taken down. Finding that elimination, Easy Han not gonna be capitalized on. Prof goes up with the false bomb, and this one actually will miss, breaking this damn near perfect record. The turnaround on the fight here is absolutely gorgeous from the side of the Hangzhou Spark, if not absolutely necessary. Clean up coming through, but there's still a hell of a lot of damage distance that they need to close. How do they snowball though? Killing Easy Han late would be one of those. That, by the way, that kill, that's Easy Han's first death. A bit of a tidbit. Ten minutes into the game, it's the first death. He has been pretty elusive so far on this map. Now that we have OT spawns, ironically, the OT sort of helps Spark a little bit here. It'll be a negative for them if somebody dies, but every single kill they get on the Soul Dynasty is going to be delayed. Spawns Gushway has gone mega deep, but he's got Primal. Hey, down. Belisria taken low. Was anted out. Has to use that Primal now. Rally rolling from Langs as well. It's a shield match online. Gushway max matching with the Primal on the opposite side. It's lead. will find Profit. Get lower and lower. They're just one meters away from having that checkpoint. It looks like they should be able to establish this one for themselves, and they do. False bomb from leave. Not going to be able to find that kill, but look at the ult still held here from the side of the Hangzhou Spark. The EMP, that nano. Yes, they have to wait for Monk to rejoin. We need to keep this contested, and Dynasty have to reset. And Monk can't afford to swap him. Usually, you would actually swap to the Kuriko here, but he's got an ultimate, so he, he has to hold on to it. He's got such a huge run back, and that's the problem. If Spark lose players, they're going to be permanently down 4v5 for age. I mean, look at the silhouettes. I think Dynasty should take a fight. You gotta take a fight before Monk rejoins the team. I think it's already too late. I think he's gonna be here. He's gonna be missing out on that Dynasty's window of opportunity. Slow. It's gonna be for Gushway. They're looking for him, but the Nano is in. There's over to leave, though. It's not on the Gushway. So he ends up getting taken down. Shy eliminated as well. A fellow Shreya down to a sliver. So try to keep him up. It looks like Pinham, everybody on the side of the Dynasty is going to manage to stay alive. They will survive. They will have that OT drained down. And they will extend this all the way into a map five. That's just that early start, right? Vin Dam's getting choked out by his <laughs> prophet. Like prophet actually, <laughs> prophet ran over <laughs> and just grabbed him with both hands. That was either uh, he was smiling though, he was smiling during that. So they they do it differently over there in Korea, Seth. I, I don't know what to say. You live there, you you tell me. But it's just that a young good show culture, culture, you know. Like yeah, it is. The, the older, young culture, the older that's brother, what that so. is. A good old young culture. I love that.
It is uh, it is a good start for the Soul Dynasty. That's what we needed to see. They got an early cap in the first two and a half minutes, roughly. So after that, they even then snuck another 13 meters. They could have won from 77, realistically speaking. Okay, I know that Spark eventually got to 80, but I think Soul Dynasty would have taken more aggressive flights and allowed less meters to go if they knew they had less to work with. So in either case, the Soul Dynasty early advantage, I think, was what really sold it. And beyond that, Easy Han not dying, being up to lap shy, a lot more EMPs, all part of it. It's all part of it, but even then down to the, the wire, that nano boost goes across over on to leave rather than on the Gushui. Thanking him. Leave might have gotten the way. Slim pickings. Who knows? I don't know. Either way, that could be the straw that broke the camel's back. Because now we're going back over control where Dynasty have been undefeated on this map type. See if they're going to be able to maintain that. First, of course, we're going to have a quick little break. We'll come back and we'll get to that action.
We are going into a map five once more, this time between the Hangzhou Spark and the Seoul Dynasty, who managed to have a pretty damn dominant run on New Queen Street until it got close, but they clinched the win to extend it all the way to, I believe, Oasis as a final map of control to decide who's going to be walking away victorious. And if you're a Dynasty fan out there, yep. don't give up hope yet. They are undefeated so far on control maps, and if they can continue that streak, they could be walking away with a win here versus the Spark. I, I would argue that the new Queen Street result is a lot more one-sided than the actual meter ridge would show because oftentimes in the overtime you do get this kind of like final I was going to call it second win really it's a final win coming through from the losing team but they'll get something done because while well, the winning team is going to pull back a little bit they're going to play a little bit more reserved conservative uh also their respawns take longer so oftentimes if the losing team is going to get a couple kills it resets the winning team by a reasonable margin but ultimately, even if it gets quote unquote close, the winning team in that scenario, Soul Dynasty, they just got to get the one kill. They just got to get one reasonable fight in there. Their respawn advantage is so much clearer, and they'll still end up winning at the end of the day. So most of the game was completely one sided. And you can see the final win come through for Hunger Spark in the OT. But uh, ultimately, Dynasty, they held all the cards there and now take us to a map number five on Oasis, where I want to say on University, if, those, if this goes to another a Brawl mirror matchup, whether it's Ryan, Ryan, or Ram versus Ryan, I heavily favor the Soul Dynasty there. So one out of the three rounds on Oasis, very Soul Dynasty favored. We'll see if they're going to be able to get it. Or if things could get shut down and leave also. Known for some pop-off performances on this map. I'm thinking about him on that Tracer, just absolutely dominating on University. Maybe that can come back in here to give the Hangzhou side of the crowd a little bit more hopium as well. Because the other thing is... Despite University being good, Dynasty, if they want to make this map five happen, they have to win one of the other maps that's not University. So City Center or um, or Garden needs to go their way, which is going to be a pure dive mirror of which they show that they can be much better than Sparkin, at least on New Queen Street. So we'll start with City Center. Looks like Vin Ham, though, it's not be as be... you'd expect. I'm not going to be opting for. Never mind. Okay. I thought he was going to go out the gate with the Lucio here. It's going to say. Big but difference. That would be wrong. Yeah. That's why I was concerned, but he goes back over to the Brigida. Anthony not going to get the clip there from Krillin. That's already heavy pressure down in the monk. Fellas, Rio just going to be making his exit up over the top, oh or at least God. an exit that he, he hopes he can make. He jumps back around, breaking line of sight, manages to stay alive. Ben hit as well, tagged down low. Putting up healing here for Krillin to take an early lead, I suppose, towards that nano. They lose positioning though. They, they stay alive, but Spark have all the high ground. Pressure applied here. Onto that corner, Bell is just trying to inch his way forward. Which way? Leaping back. Seeding that for the time being. Jump forward comes in once again. Krillin not quite able to line anything up there with either the nade nor the sleep dart. Bell's down low. Anthony out for the chasing for the kills. Looks once again, they're going to fall shy of the mark, but Benham in a rough position. Willem can take it down. He commits. Everybody comes in. So collapsing on top of Leaf to be able to find that elimination to keep Benham alive. And that's a monstrous pickup to have. So they look to go ahead and cap this point for themselves. Slangs it as well. Going to be taken out. No one can play off the back of this ante. I think that's the key. That's the key kill because Leaf doesn't kill Vindime and the opposite happens. Muck resets off the map. And the point goes over the Soul Dynasty. It took a long time for a single kill to come on through, and it should have probably been either Ballas Rhea or Vindan dying. They were both anti, both super low HP. Ballas Rhea taking down to critical even like, close to 1 HP at certain points, but just was not able to be finished off. Leave misses a rare miss on the Blink Melee. Wishes he had that kill. So he does. EMP is about to be online for both of these Sombras. Shy keeping pace alongside Easy Han. We'll see who's able to pull the trigger first here as he gets pushed out into the open and has to translocate away. Han now, all to online, goes into stealth, gets ready to go on the hunt. Nano in the meantime, invested over towards Kushway, his leaves gonna be forced to recall. Find that anti-nade. Big difference here is gonna be that primal rage available for Kushway, though, can buy a hell of a lot more time. But now the dive comes through, Langs are gonna be taken out, Prov and Fine Shy at the same time, making sure there cannot be a counter EMP in this fight. That's just gonna have to be Hangzhou Spark going on the reset as Monk has a bit of a late death. Leave cannot afford to die here. Soul Dynasty winning on both fronts of the wall there, on the front lines, over towards where Prophet was taken down Shy, and then also EMP on the back line, taking down Link. So couldn't see Monk, doesn't matter. We'll get the Brig anyway. So prevent Shy from getting any sort of counter EMP, and Salt Dynasty are running away with this round. And as I was said previously, 
Soul Dynasty, in my eyes, only need to win one out of the two dive favored control rounds, and then University ideally goes their way. EMP solo around the corner here on a Grillin. Pulse bomb out from Prophet. He's not going to be finding a kill, but the king can kill Grillin off either, it would seem. Prophet will get taken down eventually as Monk finds an elimination. Gushway well into the back lines here, just deciding which he path he wants to it. take. <laughs> And meanwhile, fellow Sria just juggling around a couple of fools, just trying to maintain control at this point, and so far has been able to do so. Primal's going to be expiring soon, rally out from Langsa. Got a cross, it's been Hamas right up into the faces here of the members of the Hung Joe Spark. Shield Bash comes in, however, he gets stunned up, gets taken down. Great deal from Langsa to go ahead and save his cohorts. Life. I will get traded out, but it looks like finally, yes, the Hung Joe Spark will be able to get control at this point, but not until Dynasty got the 90 die. Which means it's going to be a long road for the spark comeback here zero to 99 star oh that is a rough one and Easy they began charge. the early neutral i think the early neutral was really good looking for the spark they won the jump pad fight got the high ground control but failed to get the first pick and you mentioned easy hun the emp is likely a closer here so unless monk and lengsa can survive up against this one so dynasty have the win conditions on board still needs to get that last five percent here this easy hun then go for the setup in all likelihood Monk has to not get caught. Gushui needs to not die either. Goes back up onto the high ground. Healing coming through. Nano not forced out yet. EMP at the ready. Easy Han pulls the trigger on it. And Langston just disappears. And Anti out on the Vin but now with leave gone, there's just not enough damage to try to find that kill. Easy Han will stay alive. The Nano is in, but Gushui will eventually fall or have to make his exit. As we go ahead and get the counter flip back into the Dynasty's favor, the OT bleeding down. Can anyone get the touch? The answer is going to be yes. Chai able to find it. Will be forced to translocate away as Vinham is very quick to go ahead and keep him honest. And then no one else Set. can follow up. 147% Dynasty. They take the opening round of City Center. I think the critical mistake there was you see Monk putting the Nana onto Gushue. Normally that would be fine, but up against an EMP, maybe Spark did not expect the EMP from Easy Hunt. But the EMP likely comes down to a member like Lengsa, or it just goes solo onto Monk, and Monk has to consider that if it does go to Lengsa, he has to save the Nana or Lengsa instead. Let's take a look at this Prophet early situation. That's how he got shy down. He comes in for the alley oop on an escaping uh, Monk that had no shot of living here either. And we talked about, by the way, Easy Han being extremely slippery on New Queen Street. Didn't die for 10 minutes straight. Our first round of City Center, also zero deaths. Pretty damn slippery. So now we go forward here in the university. They're not going to play Brawl. Okay, well. No, just going. A different strategy then. Or rather the same strategy, but different to my expectation. Firm handshake, gentlemen's agreement, it would seem. Which way and Bells are both receiving those anti-nades off the I think rip. Spark, I think Spark, uh, they definitely don't want to play a Brawl matchup. So that's obvious on their end. Dynasty will accept. Oh, just hovering around the flanks here, trying to build up towards that pulse. Neck and neck right now with Lee Bells. We got down low. Gushue as well. Getting punished just a bit here as Prophet slides in behind. He's looking for that elimination. Has to pull off, get that mini pack to keep himself in the fight. So far, kill not found on either side. The point not capped. The neutral continues. But now, as I say that, Langs are going to be taken out, but then him quickly traded. So now, break for break. Teams operating a member down. Hanzo Spark the point long enough to go ahead and get that cap, but how long is it going to last? Profit eliminated, but now Monk dead, and that's all the support's gone. Belsria taken out. Pulse Bomb comes in from Lee, but can he occupy this long enough? Looks like with the join back in here from Gushue, though, they should be able to hold it. Camp will go strong for Hanzo Spark this time. They get the early lead, but it's easy hunt again with the EMP lead. And that's the big thing. Our Spark ready for this one. They've been caught up by the EMP multiple times now. Don't expect to come through this early. What you don't expect is often likely what ends up happening. Here he comes. Okay, ready to come back through. They get it. Three quarters of the way there. EMP in the side room. Lengths are taken down. Easy Han does eat that antsy, but he's not really concerned about his life. Right now, he's just looking to inflict as much damage as he possibly can. He's the one kill found. Points are not into their control. How much more is going to be invested here as an goes across? We're on to leap once again. Gooseway as well. Primal rolling. Leap. Or so he's that France of hate, or that recall, rather up alive for a little bit longer and shine coming back does find bells for you taking him down final unable to be committed here into the fight now and up is used from krill and goes over towards Vinhaim. he's gonna be slept stunned killed off and starts slipping out of the hands here of the dynasty they did never got control well played i mean that was even with spark being one down they nanoed leave of all players the soul dynasty as you mentioned yeah, they, they couldn't move that one forward bell unfortunately couldn't primal because he was the impedance all instantly burned down by shy 
So now we're looking at a very dominant lead for the Hunger Spark and still waiting for more resources to come online for the Soul Dynasty. Both on the profit, not finding the opener that they want. And then keep those three sustained. Uh, primal right now, the only ult they have at their disposal. We'll find Langston for his trouble diving into the back. Still holds onto the ultimate here. Profit Should chasing now. Trying to get the kill here on the leave, but lead mentions to tuck in. Grabs that mini pack. Recalls out. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and go their separate ways. Point finally in control of the dynasty though. As a pause is gonna be called. And Prophet seems a Those bit damn surprised. Mike issues. Could be. Bellisteria called for the pulls. Right, well. Interesting game so far. It's like another fun fact. Chat, uh, always. You don't have to Absolutely. Have Easy Hunt still hasn't died, but there's another player that <laughs> also hasn't died yet. I didn't... It's a bit weird to mention for the first round because Spark lost and was like, well, that's kind of strange that he didn't die. But now that we're 94% plus on University, plus however, man, however amount of percent that we got on City Center, Gushua also hasn't died as a tank player. Really? On one and a half rounds. Yeah. That seems... That's, I, I I thought that seems impossible. He probably, he probably given how badly Spark kind of lost on City Center, you would think he would have been dead at some point, but no, he didn't die. I mean, he was Actually zoned away at die. the end of City Center. We saw him, you know, having to make his exit. The tag came in from Shire yeah. leaves. They got the touch, and then they had the. the He's like, "Who says like, I ain't touching? But... I'm stat padding. I'm not touching." <laughs> He's not that me. KD. <laughs> it's certainly intriguing to hear that one yeah. but oh, power to i him. would imagine he would have died by now because we've spent another 90 something percent you know so okay looks like everybody is, is good to go and just like a minor issue within the game itself but nothing that affects the current standings so we'll go right back into it here dynasty in control but quite a ways to go if they want to be able to close this out with the 2-0 john gonna be noted i mean he's not even really playing with any ambiguity he's just right out in front no well, easy haunt might have been Slight actually detection. noted there. Yeah. Seems like Leave knows roughly where he was. He's looking for the setup here onto Monk. EMP goes through, the dive comes in, Prophet Johnny on the spot, finds it. It's three quick kills as Shy and Langs are also going to fall to the wayside. EMP committed, Dynasty maintaining control, get a little late cleanup on the Leave as well to boot. So they will go ahead and continue moving up, but still 50 something mm -hmm. odd percent behind just about. He's good movement by Easy Han. He just kind of slips past Lee. He doesn't get detected there. Finds the back line. Instant connection. Bellas Rear dives on N EMP expended. And that is a flawless dive from the Soul Dynasty. And they'll need a few of those that they can. However, they have to defend up against the EMP. Now Shy on board. And he wants Bellas Rear. Oh, but they can't kill him before the Primal comes into play. So Bellas Rear popping that one. Keeps himself alive and in the mix of things. Not really going to be able to juggle either of those people off the side of the map, but still looks to go ahead and recontest against Kuchwe, who's now also going to be nanoed up. Up from Profit off screen, not finding anything, and Lee pounds him down, comes away with that elimination. Nanoed out, out into Bellastria on the back into the primal. is still holding on to his own primal here as Bellastria can be put down to bed. So through. The counter flip comes in. Dynasty not playing onto the points. The Pulse uh -oh. Bomb took out Bellastria. Now it's in oh, control. Could be no it. one's going to contest. No one is going to be able to touch. It's 173% to extend us all the way to Garden. Yeah, wow. Backwards, or what I was imagining this, because, you know, I was kind of thinking from my POV that this would have been the dominant map for the Soul Dynasty. Apparently not. Five looking good from the Hunger Spark. They're the early leads on control maps, just good wonders. So here we go. Final map. Final round. I'll keep our medic. Or the same and no clear defining winner here because Soul Dynasty looked much better on City Center playing a mirror. Ultra Spark looked much better on University playing the same mirror. I will say the one thing that has impressed me about Soul though that has been consistent on this map is the Easy Han Sombra Factor. It's been leading Shy in most of the EMPs. He's been absolutely huge here for the squad. Really hack on a good way, but he's actually safe here on the high ground, leaps down to go ahead and Continue this contest against Bellas Rhea, and with the help of Leave, they take him out. Sleep Dart, however, does find Leave. Can they capitalize with the kill? The answer is going to be yes. Profit arrives, immediately helps find that one. Still occupying the point are the Hongjo Spark. Soul Dynasty now need to push forward here. We'll be able to keep this contested as Profit goes down low, forced to recall out. Quick 
looking to hold the front lines. Deny that access. No cap yet. On the, the likes of Monk and Lynx. And like you said, no cap. But as, as you say it, it does actually end up coming through. Hunter's Park once again. Now in control right off the rip. Hack of the easy con. A little lower and lower. Sleep dart from Monk. Not going to connect on the Prophets. So he's still going to have free reign. Go ahead and harass that back line. As much as he possibly wants. That pulse bomb now nearly online. Leaping out of the fight means the Prophet takes a monstrous lead. Swings the corner. Assists against... Bells are going to take down Gushway. Now Monk is gone as well. And so we'll get cleaned up from oh, Prophet three managing base. to find three. Looking for more. That's going to be the fourth. This lead will also fall. And Finhaim will be able to take the kill away from him. So can't quite get the five, Pete. But still, I think he's not going to be too concerned about it. Yeah, I think for Soldan, I see no time for any funny business there. Get the final kill fast as you can. Whoever gets it doesn't matter. Get the flip. That's the most important thing there. So with Hangzhou Spark getting the early 27, they're not going to be running away with the early lead as we saw on the previous round of University. Prophet just doing God's work there. 4k, insane stuff. First ultimate online was his pulse bomb. Didn't even need to have been used. I'll burn. And, and with that, by the way, Gushway has finally died. Mm. Oh, good point. A lob in there from Robin. Not going to find the six. So can get that elimination that they would love to have here right off the rip. In and out over to Gushway. He's got the final online as well. Rally pop from Vinhim. Gets a quick shield bash there onto the Winston. Just try to peel off. Meanwhile, Velsria diving on the opposite side of the map. Bailey manages to get that primal off it's to immediate use. Hoping to take down Langs up. Now looking for a little bit more here. Shy desperately trying to escape, but it's got nowhere to go. The translocator was set up so shallowly. Rather, he just had to toss it right then. They look for a little bit more. And quick zaps off the jump. Also there for the side of the Hangzhou Spark, but Dynasty way out in front. Dynasty feeling good about that particular win. If they can defend versus this now. Spark, smorgasbord board of ultimates. First one out, first one missed. First one that would be... Dynasty happy to see go sideways. It's in Byron from Quillen as well. Yeah, Neve. Lower and lower, rallying out in. Langsa trying to keep them in the mix of things here. Profit building up another pulse bomb nearly online for him. Bellatria falling low when he bonks oh, his head on the way out. His head. Ends yep. up getting punished, and that's going to be the flip there. Hangzhou Spark once again in control. Slipdart not going to connect us. See Krillin and Pinham just desperately trying to backpedal over here towards the spawn room doors. So they will be able to do so. Gushway has to exit one more tap. i to finish him off. That would have been a monstrous punish, but they can't quite get it. Oh, God. Krillin had the chance to get real nasty there, but unfortunately, just not enough damage. Gushway lives by a sliver, and that, oof. I think Soul Dynasty would have had a case for a strong retake if Gushway dies. Gushway as well, he was really playing with life because the primal was there. He didn't want to use it for good reason. Now Spark can look for an opportunity to get this fight going with the Nano as well. Yeah, I'm just looking to keep them busy. You should see that translocator, the traces there, knowing roughly where Shy is going to be approaching from is that EMP is now online. And yeah, he's going to get found. Talking to the back lane, though. Immediately pulls the EMP, and that's going to be Krillin and Vinname taking down the lead. About to be established here for the side of the Hangzhou Spark. Still have nearly three ultimates with which to try to get this win. Dynasty on yep. this reset as we go into Final Fight territory for either side. I thought Shy missed there, but it doesn't matter because Gooseberry comes in. They swing and they get double supports. That's what's important. And as you mentioned, it will be a Final Fight here. Easy Han's died a couple times now as well, so nobody is deathless as we head into a very nice situation for the Hangzhou Spark, but a good Easy Hunt if we can still swing things around. They desperately need it. They didn't stop this ball bump from finding value. Diving to the back line. Feeling gonna be taking lower and lower the rally. Just trying to keep him alive. The nano use just in case goes over the Gullus Reopen. Kushway gets the Goomba stomp, taking out the enemy Ana. Vindaheim now, the lone healer, trying to keep them in this fight. Easy Hunt, the EMP nearly there, but Profit's gonna be finished oh, off. It's all so coming to an end. It's all crumbling. Easy Hunt pulls the trigger on it, manages to find Langsa. Pulse pump out, not getting a kill. Belsria managed to build up for that primal rage. Also finds Sleep. Krillin now going to be swapping over onto the Kyoto Code. Try to join in a little bit faster. Easy Han, however, has to make his exit, leaving Belsria all alone here on the point by himself. He's keeping it contested. But even then, even if they can get this flip into their favor, there's still enough time for the Hong Kong to try to come back through. Krillin's in, but hang over now onto the Lucio. Profit 25 HP. Pops a recall. Shy going to be dealt with. Gets taken down to put this in. So Dynasty somehow managed to hold on. Then him anti out. But the Suzu comes in. They keep him cleansed. Somehow they're staying alive. Pulse bomb through. Phil Kushway taken down. Vinheim able to collect the kill. 88%. The kill's still coming through. Oh, Monk is out. Langsa falling low. They get this Can't kill. It could be everything. Dance. They're going to be able to fight it. Vinheim pushes forward. Finds the elimination. Tag onto the back. Leave contesting the point, but he's got no HP. He's going to get finished off. And I don't think that Chai just now respawning is going to be able to get in time. Never mind. He is here, but the translocator's gone. Oh, he can't use the EMP. Oh, it's for time now. Starting to bleed down. Kushway trying to arrive. Dives forward. Look to push him back, but the focus fire is just too damn good. They burn him down. The kills come through, and I think they actually have done it, and they have the dynasty.
pulling off the win. What a hold in overtime to get them over the finish line. And Vin Dame comes back. The golden child of the Soul Dynasty will get his first win in 2023 with the squad that he debuted on last year. And they go straight back towards him. Straight back for the neck. As the Young Soul celebrate the win. It's been a tough season for the Soul Dynasty. Rumors of their demise have been greatly exaggerated. This was the new blood, a little bit of old blood, that is now new blood back on the team again. Re-injected for the Soul Dynasty to give them that extra boost for the second half of the season. Absolutely unbelievable. What a clutch. Easy Han, Bellas Rhea, being able to hold the line, keep that point contested for the longest time, getting those kills off the back of the EMP, burned in desperation, is absolutely everything for them to be able to get this win. The rest of the team comes through, and Hangzhou Spark are just too far gone. They are far too staggered to actually be able to get collected up and make a concerted push back over onto the point. That was absolutely gorgeous from the side of the dynasty. Mm -hmm. Shades of them in the past, that playoff profit performance, etc. Absolutely. We're, soon, we're seen here in this matchup. Still a ways to go, that's for damn certain, but profit right back into the driver's seat, right back to winning another, I believe his second player of the match here in the second half of the season. Before I talk about profit here, I just want to give a quick shout out to Bellasaria, who with that final primal, really kept the team into the game because it was looking bad. It was looking like Hangzhou Spark had secured it. They won the final fight. It was looking like they won the final fight. Bellasaria stayed alive. He primaled through, lives on half HP, allows the rest of the team to come on in and gives Prophet just enough space to get the frags, to stop the shy EMP who it didn't even end up coming through at the end. Started with the May, but largely today it was all about the Tracer. You're going to see all the highlights here. A double pulse bomb on Dorado. Probably not going to see any highlights from the Echo today, but that's fine. That'll be a, a bit of a working, work in progress for the Soul Dynasty. But otherwise, as you said, Achilles, playoffs profit mode certainly was activated today. I mean, I just, <laughs> I don't know. The form shown here today from Profit uh, significantly lacking. I don't know what it is, uh, you know, when they play against the Shanghai Dragons, but for some reason it can't show up there, but it showed up here in a huge way. What a performance from him at every twist and turn. I mean, there was just times where he was just absolutely dipping leave, shutting him down, turning his sights on the Kushwe, turning his sights onto the entire back line of the Hangzhou Spark. Coming away with those kills. This was a monster spawn as well. Recalling out, dodging the EMP, killing off Shy. Just moment at the moment here from Profit. So really well-deserved player of the match for the GOAT. His 400 and what now? Uh, 402nd map win? Yeah, yeah. So, 402, 33 away from catching up to Violet. Plenty of work to be done uh, with not that many more matches to try to make not, it happen. But not enough could. games left this season, I don't think. But to go all the way through a playoff bracket and whatnot, perhaps. But, might uh, we'll have to stop playing like today. Yeah. <laughs> Even then, it might not be enough. But he, he had a lot of, I mean, dude, the Oasis, he was on fire every map. I think uh, you, we looked over towards the Queen as well. There's some real magical stuff there. The amount of times where Prophet just got work done. I mean, he was near. Most, he shows up. He, he had to have been near on that okay, map yeah. alone. Yeah. But on that map, he had to have been near a 100% pulse bomb stick for like, at least the first half of that map. Because every time he had one, it was Monk going down. So it was an incredible performance from him. But much like you said, a big shout out to Bellas Rhea, as well as Easy Han, who was just constantly outpacing Shy. Uh, in building up those EMPs as being the two to really extend that final fight to allow for the flip to come in, to allow for them to find their foothold and then take the win from there. So very much a group effort. Shout out to Vin as well for his run back, for him coming back into the squad and it's looking very, very good. Everyone played to their fullest, but we do of course have an interview coming up. So we're going to go ahead and hand it over to Unknown with the translation to hear from Profit. Hey Profit, congrats on the win. Can you hear me? Hey, I can hear you well. How do you feel after the win? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm really happy with the win. You look exhausted and this was your 400th map win, did you know? Uh, yeah, I, I, were, I was notified later. Uh, 
So, uh, we want to kind of recap on Oasis. You had the last touch, right? I think so. And after that, it was a really long last fight. Um, can you kind of uh, recap what was happening? Yeah, I, uh, I don't remember clearly, but I, I do remember that I had a pulse and I st uh, stuck it on uh, Gushue, and then after that we won the fight, um, so I guess it was great. You were clutch on the most important moments of the game. Uh, did you feel burdened a little bit? Well, I mean, I the the fight before the last one, I did a I made a little, little bit of mistakes, uh, but then after that, I just got myself focused, and then I think that was how we won the game. So how are the vibes after the roster uh, recent roster changes? So I mean we're not entirely there yet, but we're getting better day by day. So of baby steps at a time. Did you know that there were a lot of fans at the uh, WDG Sports Studio uh, for a watch party for Seoul Dynasty? No, we didn't. Tomorrow you have a LAN match with O2 Blast. Any messages to the fans? I don't think we had a consecutive uh, consecutive win uh, yet, but we'll definitely have it today. And that's the end of, end of the interview. Back to you, Seth. Thank you very much. Well, Profit, plenty to feel good about here. I started off the series, it started looking really shaky. Obviously, still things to work on when it comes down to that attack on Nambani. Uh, the Dorado as well, but Control continues to be undefeated here for the side of the Dynasty, so the fans can finally rejoice. You've got something to be happy about as they pick up that win, but we're not done yet. It's going to be a very late evening for myself and Apple here and all of us in Korea and on the side of the Earth as we have yet another series. We're going to have the Shanghai Dragons going up against Poker Face when we come back to the break, so don't go anywhere.
Welcome back. It's now time for the final series of the evening. That's right. We're not done yet. We've got the Shanghai Dragons getting ready to go up against Poker Face. Squad that surprised us all by being able to take down Dreamers. Now, Shanghai Dragons certainly have their work cut out for them because despite the win over the Dynasty, that's without Vin Ham, worth noting, it's still been a bit of struggle street here for the Dragons for the previous champions could not get the better of the Dallas Fuel just the other day, but can they take down this contended squad? We're about to find out as we take a look at the starting five. I'm trying so hard to transitive property Shanghai Dragons right now. They beat Seoul, who beat Hangzhou. So what does it all mean? Can Shanghai Dragons come through and beat some teams not called Seoul Dynasty? They need to try. It's been hard. Yeah, you mentioned the Dallas game. That was a really good showing from Dallas. Not so much for the Shanghai Dragons. You'd have to imagine Pokerface should be weaker than Dallas. Well, given that Pokerface did also lose to Dallas last week. 0-3, I might add. Yeah. But this week, as you also mentioned, they beat Dreamers. So what does it all mean? Dreamers, I thought, would have been one of the top contenders teams that we had coming into the second half of the year and the second stage. But Pokerface took them down. This mostly ex-Toronto Defiant, ex Uprising Academy squad. Mostly off also, I think, the back of the, the V Bros, Valentine and Victoria. It's so well versus Dreamers. But we're gonna start out with the regulars here, Valentine Finale, and all the rest. News coming in as I think uh, a pretty underrated player who struggled a little bit on Toronto Defiant, but back in contenders doing plenty with some of his old teammates as well. Sure. I mean, tons of familiar faces for those who've been paying attention throughout the years. Uh, can they get the win yet again over top this time? The actual Overwatch League team. We'll have to just wait and see. But obviously, there have been some concerns for the side of the Shanghai Dragons, despite them overall looking you know, better with fate in this lineup there in the tank position. Still have had their struggles. We'll see how they do fare as we get ready to take a look at the map set and whatnot. But it's always kind of worth noting that we have not seen a control map win here for shanghai yet this year they have not been able to win a single one can they get it today simple as a play that i talk about here is well because i is in my opinion the next upcoming top prospect in the flex pop position just generally speaking position he has been on i think the for a lot of team king for new flex supports out of contenders simple is probably next in line in my opinion he is so already has had some good results in contenders has played in both korea and na and his stats matched up with era so far and uh you know both teams have had the ups and downs so pretty close stats overall all right well taking a look at the map set seems like we are gonna have busan first and foremost then i can ball for our hybrid circuit royale oh boy circuit and, <laughs> and then oh boy. esperanza and Ilya. so what do you got shanghai what's fate gonna be doing you are uh, curious to see it you're ready for some uh, muse versus fate on circuit I actually scratch that there's another play on poker face called peppy off the tank player so peppy hasn't played yet for poker face so far uh this might be his debut on this team for the Overwatch League regular season here in the summer stage. So might be a bit of a different look for Circuit Royale if that ends up happening. Okay. Well, we'll have to keep our eyes trained on that when we do get to it, because obviously we're guaranteed to at least get that far. First to three here in the series, but Busan, the first obstacle in both teams' way. Poker face two and one at the moment here on control map. Shanghai not getting a singular win. Can they change that right here, right now? I don't know if, is this a is this a very controversial statement if I say it that I think that Bingsu is very overrated. I haven't read really a dessert. I think I maybe had it once. I'm just seeing the the Bingsu place here in the map and the shaved ice, right? Like it doesn't sound incredibly special to me. I don't know. Like covering like you know fruit and red bean and that kind of stuff, but I don't know. I just always prefer ice cream instead. Either way, I agree. I fully agree. Why have just I, why have flavored ice when you can have ice cream? You know. <laughs> well, taking a look, obviously we're gonna have some differentiation here as Valentine is taking to the skies with that Echo already under an immense amount of fire as the hack came through, but they can't confirm the kill at least not yet. With the help though of that anti nade, Eris will go ahead and take things into his own hands, shut him down. Muse now left at the dry sleep dart already burned here from Simple to hide tail it away before they get jumped on. We'll be able to keep the rest of the team alive at least for now, but 
very much going to be the dragons winning the opening volley and getting the cap the dragons are not going to shy away from playing their best composition which you know he suit on that sombra coming up very strong opening fight fantastic stuff but while echo has been moving up in the the rankings for what is viable in the meta I don't think we've seen it that often on Abusan. You know, it usually comes out on other maps. Like, Nibani is a very clear echo map. Not so much this one. Valentine will give it a good shot, though. Committed now in any case, but issue has got the EMP. That's the first ultimate online. Let's take it down. The anti was out of the bullets of four. It's Valentine now going to be eliminated as well as Viper collects himself a second kill. But now he was just kind of sat there shooting at people, but still going to be a bit further behind towards that pulse bomb. A month ago, as Hisu gets himself back into stealth, waits to go for the setup on the EMP. Looking like it could be a good one. Doesn't want to go for Simple here, who can just duck back into spawn. But if he goes for Aiden, Simple can just nano Aiden as well, so that's a bit of a problem. Simple's now out of spawn, so yeah, here we go. That he is, and it's going to be Viper coming through to help collect the kill. Pulse bomb immediately in towards Aiden as well. Clean up onto the back line. The support's now gone. Valentine puts Viper down low. Grabs that little mini pack. Doesn't have a recall for the next five seconds, so eventually he'll end up getting taken down as Finale arrives. Finds that, but still though, on Struggle Street here is Poker Face. 65% established at the moment. Back over onto the point for the side of the Shanghai Dragons. Yep. Not a bad punish on the Viper, but that's after Viper already got two kills. On Valentine, he just got destroyed by Hisu there. Couldn't find any targets to do or do anything. Backline set much more vulnerable here as Simple is just going to get juggled around up into the corner. Taken down as Eris just lobs forward that anti nade for a little bit more and faint. I mean, nonplussed by the sticky nade. Bombs doesn't really care. Very primal up Winston. It's about to be 90% here on the board for the side of the Shanghai Dragons. They still have a rally. Yeah, things are looking great for the Shanghai Dragons. One last good push in here for Poker Fakes. Simple with the nano available. Valentine needs to do some real magic here as well. They just about have four ultimates, but struggle to stay alive. Bunch of low HP bars there. Send one. There's the dupe again. Valentine going for the Ana. Gets sucked immediately. Woken up. Broken out. Of he's that dead. Okay. Well, he's uh, off he, the map. Did he just get sucked off the side of the map? I think he might have. I think he I went think right down on the train tracks. Off the map, maybe. Could be. Either way, maybe we'll get a replay of it. The flip is there. So poker face, despite all of this, gain control of the point at least for a brief couple moments. MP now at the ready from Hisu. Like we're dead. We'll have that pulse bomb when he comes back in if it's necessary. But the counter flip now coming in. And swapping over to the Kyoto coach. Just trying to get there a little bit faster. But news getting taken down without use of the primal definitely hurts. And see if anybody can get the touch. Oh. Not for long. Not for long for Valentine. Tag in. Finale arriving. They need to retouch here though. Pulse bomb in. Viper not finding anything. Dive onto the point. Muse arrives. Finale, however, dealt with. He's soon finding the kill, and I don't even think he had the hack out. Primal is gonna be coming through. Fate is gonna be taken down off screen. Iris, 3% away from having this nano available to try to get them over the finish line here. Aiden's holding close, sends out the Suzu, gets some heals across. Simple, still alive for the time being, as the nano comes through over on the Kungnam Jin. Takes him low. Viper confirms the kill. Simple's dead and we get the counter flip to jump. clear them off. And yeah, the jump there from Muse takes him off the point long enough. The OT to bleed down. So Shanghai Dragons take downtown for themselves. Isu also lapped Valentine on EMPs there, by the way, as well. So it's a pretty massive difference in terms of output from Hisu. Shanghai Dragons, generally speaking, though, had a really nicely played map. So here's the EMP a little bit early on again. Viper swings on in. Great timing. You didn't even see Viper around the corner, but he just shows up when the EMP's there. This isn't the replay. Unfortunately, he does end up dying later, but yeah. I wanted to see the echo. I'm pretty sure he got booped off the map. Because sure, if he and the whip shot, he got slipped him out of the sleep. Because the problem is he already duped, so he couldn't be in the air. So he was on the ground because he was already as the Anna for a while. True. Well, either way. Definitely hurts. Valentine not going to be opting for it, of course, not here on this point as we move into Sanctuary. He's already just getting harassed so very low. Viper wanting to confirm this kill. Aiden dive for instantly, Frank. Yeah, just taken out. The rest of the team now going to have to just try to backpedal, but Simple's going to be identified out into the open. The bubble not going to be enough to save him because they're just jumping forward into it. They clean up the kill. Iris will get taken down by Valentine on the opposite side of things here. He tries to keep pace against Hisu with that EMP charge, but point can now be taken from the side of the Shanghai Dragons. A brilliant start. Eris lands a nade onto Aiden, and as that happens, he just gets dived, taken down. No real shot at any sort of survivability there. 
These early neutrals have just been great for the Dragons. We talk about Hisu being hit of Valentine and EMP that will continue now for round number two. The Valentine going down. Hisu charging his way forward. He's not going to be absolutely running away with the old charges time around compared to what we saw in City Center, but uh, downtown rather. He's still very much ahead. He gets that kill in. Pretty much, I mean, for long range for a Sombra for sure. That amount of bullet spread. Still picks him off. 30% about to be crested here for Shanghai Dragons. A touch of the point briefly for this out of poker face, but it is contested. Nano, that much faster though for Simple. Does have a nice little lead over top of Virus. A lot more damage to try to heal through. The EMP has to the difference maker here as it goes in and gets taken down. And Simple's just not going to be able to use it. He doesn't want to. Rather, after his teammate gets taken out, now he commits the full spot into the fight as well, but doesn't come up with anything. Valentine slept, and that's just going to be an extended team kill coming through as Shanghai Dragons move past 50. Very clean. I mean, just the Hisu Viper dive coming on through. So hard for Aiden and Simple there, who uh, just barely stacked up enough to both get an EMP. And obviously, Aiden dies so quickly that the Nano is just not even able to be used, given how long the hack can last. It's not that long, but long enough to lose Aiden. The backline of Poker Faces, their woes will continue in round number two as the crest over 70% of this still fall for online for Dragons. Great now popping the primal. Go on the offense, but not seeing where he is. Okay, now he's gonna go. I don't know if he sailing over. I don't even think he was rig. in danger. That was a weird primal to pop. I don't. I don't think he hit anybody while he had this one going. No. By the way, in the back line, like in trouble. Pulse bomb gets nothing. EMP comes through. Valentine's gonna be something in the back end. But finale still able to scoop a kill. Dungeon Jin gonna be taken down. Here is seemingly safe for the time being, but Pokerface will get themselves the point. Dragons just widely pulling away after losing out on the brig player. I allow that flip to come through. So successful EMP from Valentine. Dragons taking a decent amount too much damage there, but they didn't even really die. They just lost the one player. It's not like they got team wide. Only a player still up. Good sleep from Eris onto Valentine. And now Nano available. Double support ultimates for the Dragons to try and get this retake going. Much more survivability for Poker Face. So beautiful Nano from Eris. Nano for Nano. Uh -oh. Gangnam Jin out onto the Muse there, but now both going to be expiring. Rally rolling from Gangnam Jin though gives him a bit more staying power. This anti primal now going to be popped. Finelli gets himself out for a little bit longer, I believe. The recall already used. Muse able to cleave down Iris for Viper Pursues, finding the enemy tracer. Now turns the sights over towards Valentine, who has to translocate away. Counter flip still not there though for the side of the Shanghai Dragons, operating without their Ana. EMP though from Hisu helps set up for the kill on to Aiden, but Viper gets taken down. Who's going to equalize in that regard, making this fight a one for one? They continue to tick up here to poker face. I mean, close to that flip, but they can't clear the point long enough. They got to get Muse down. He's low HP, but Dragons have exited this fight now. There's not enough damage remaining. And all of this extra damage on the Muse is just going to translate over to Nano Boost for Simple, which they'll need because they're down one player. And the Dragons were looking for an opening. They've certainly found it now. False bomb lobbed in, but not going to get the connection. Simple staying alive for a little bit longer, but Hisu eventually gets the headshots woven through to find that kill, and Aiden's going to be joining him in the grave as both supports end up falling. Muse now dancing around the bubble, trying to keep himself alive. Pressure coming in as Viper goes on the chase and finds the elimination. Now ticking up, the touch is in. Finale will at least be able to force out this overtime. Not a lot left here to play through. Finale and Valentine can touch, but they need Muse. They desperately need Muse and a Nano, and Pokerface can't really afford to lose players here. Next touch, ooh, barely. Barely get it. Primal available. Fate just himself go low. Now, Scott trying to push Simple away, but the sleep start will connect. So keep him out of the fight, at least for the time being. Nano cross to Muse. EMP 13, now 10% away from Valentine. Needs to get this one online. Soon, nipping at his heels. Big anti nade connects on the three, but the damage just is not being found at the moment. The point's been cleared. Poker Face are back in control of the rally rolling. Space can be conceded. They can wait out the ultimate here. Now look for the setup, but if Valentine can strike first, which he does, they find the kill on the Gangnam Jin. Counterflip getting ready to come back through here from the side of the Shanghai Dragons. Fate barely Fate hanging on by a thread. Eventually gets taken down by Finale, and it's going to be a trade up here from the side of Poker Face. We look to extend this into a third and final round. Finale dashes forward, finds himself the second kill as Viper will fall. Now, the owners of the Shanghai Dragons are trying to buy themselves some time, but the touch cannot come through, so we are going to Mecha Face to decide it all. Fate changing heroes. Viper dead. Hisu translocated away. Only the supports were in any position to maybe go for a touch, and they just straight up could not. And Shanghai Dragons, they let that one slip through their fingers. I think Shanghai Dragons were easily leading in a great position to win. A poker face, a last second. I don't even, I can't remember who even touched, but I was just looking at the overtime wick, and it was looking like, you know, a few pixels away from bleeding down, and someone just managed to get the touch in there, which then allows Muse to receive a nano from Simple, and then they just start rotating into the ultimates that are coming online slowly and 
eventually they have enough to play through to actually be able to take the round away a huge clutch coming through from poker face will now start and make a base on the brawl comp Ali coming out here Hanzo alongside it and line up some nice headshots here here's gonna be tagged down to about half hp immediately Shanghai Dragons starting to pull back a little bit further, but the hack comes through. Finale, Dove on bait can collect the kill. Simple under fire as well. About half HP. Good turn damage, though. So he suit back for the time being. Of course, just the one kill found. A follow-up hack on a simple, but now bait is going to be taken down here into the front lines. Valentine keeping that one here for himself. Coming out in front of Viper towards the first pulse bomb of the map. We're good for poker base, yeah. Just a couple more frags. Points unlocking as well. Like he already has unlocked. And he used just cleanly slap away the car. last couple supports ideally Muse doesn't die here so he's playing his limits well first on the point here poker face getting that capture coming through pulse bomb as valentine goes on the hunt only noticing or noting rather fate thus far as Piper looks to draw some pressure down to the low ground and open up some space for the rest of the team but valentine does find his target this falls prey to him as the pulse gets the kill the Viper is now also onto Pulse, just about. Oh. EMP coming through much slower this time from Hisu. Given that Dragons didn't win the early neutral, that's probably quite understandable, but we're about to see EMP only come on through when support ultimates are about to be online as well. Muse has his own survivability off the Annihilation. And suddenly that poker face backline's a lot more difficult Ooh, to kill Gundam Jin, taking a lot of arrows, but does not go now. Had any of those been a headshot, that would have been him out of the fight. Fate in the meantime, having to exit from it. Taking down a half HP and doesn't have the primal to rely on. Annihilation's still here from Muse. So catching Fate, still see how low he is. Fate jumping forward. The nano does come in. He's able to go ahead and move up a little bit closer. Teenage forces Hisu back. Simple keeps himself safe for the time being. Pulse bomb out. He will end up getting taken down on Viper, finding his target as well. Simple only gets the stick there onto the enemy Ana. Now the EMP comes through, managing to catch on the three players. Hisu, however, gonna be the first one to fall. Viper finally able to find Aiden. Does mean that the supports are a bit disjointed here on the side of Poker Face, but Dragons still need to be able to oh, get this man. flip. That cleave down there on a finale with the Primal Rage, just beating Muse back as quickly as they possibly can. Muse raises the fist to try to stay alive. Just a amount of HP to work with, and Zipple's back through, and he now has that Nano to try to really keep him in the fight. And I'm going to Muse somehow, some way, staying alive. He's just been alone on this point the entire time. Simple with the Nano is just enough to save him. They maintain control. Dragons, they threw yep. everything in the kitchen sink at this point, and they came up with nothing. 91% now established inside of Poker Faces. All time going to be hacked. Pulse Bomb used. Managed to find that opening kill here to try to really confirm the map win. We call Burn. Shanghai Dragons needed to get tested. Viper now. now. Gone. Muse the melee hit. Able to finish him off. Anti has a cross here onto the enemy from Matra, but I'm not able to play off the back of it. Valentine now finds Iris. Up. Operating here with the skeleton crew, and now without a tank, his fate will fall as well. And it seems like Poker Face are actually going to be able to steal this one away from them. They are, in fact, they close it out a 2 1 to now move up 3 1 overall on control maps. Poker Face continue to deny Shanghai wins on this map type. Yeah, just can't do it, Shanghai. They probably should have won this map as well. I mean, again, I go back to that sanctuary that was so far ahead. Shanghai Dragons look like they secured it, but it just comes through from a very distinct Poker Face clutch. The player staying alive, tagging onto the point, and you get yourself onto Mecha Base where the Ramatris piloted exceptionally well. Muse doesn't even go down. I think he didn't die a single time as Ram on that final that round. Up. And Simple, he went down, comes back in, starts pocketing Muse, Bionade into the Nano. And with the Annihilation running, Muse is just too much of a factor on the point, and he cannot be removed. Well, quite the beginning here for Poker Face of Contender Squad. Are looking to take down the Nal team here? We draw first blood at versus the Shanghai Dragons. We'll have our hybrid map coming up next. So I believe Eichenwald is going to be the staging ground to see whether or not Shanghai are going to be able to tie things up or if it's going to be Poker Face finding themselves at match point. We'll be right back.
And we are back and going into map number two. Shanghai Dragons still have not been able to find themselves a control map win. Now we turn our sights over to Eichenwald to see if they can tie things up one to one. I believe we have a substitution in here as well. So we'll see what Victoria brings to the table. Likely just more Hanzo, which is essentially what he played yesterday versus Dreamers in their 3 1 victory. Well, this could be a close one. I think Shanghai played super well on Busan, and you know, maybe it is just the control map curse because they were on point to win that one, and now they'll have to do it if they are to win at all. With a slightly longer route, their own 3 1 if they're going to do this properly. Yeah, I mean, it certainly is possible. He said things were looking good until they weren't. Uh, that last map kind of being, a, I guess, a, a, that last round, I should say, of Busan being a bit excluded, but. After the loss on Sanctuary, it feels like everything just really started to slip away from them. Couldn't find any footing on Mecha Base. Yeah, maybe even making sure he doesn't have the hair in his eyes. He needs to be able to see clearly as they get ready to go into this next one, Poker Face. Very much wanting to be able to get that 2-0 beginning. When you really look at stat-wise as well, Dragons had quite a lot more final blows a lot less deaths a lot more damage despite losing so it's you know pretty perplexing to really put the numbers down 35 final blows fully as a team to only 18 deaths as a team so they severely outfragged poker face but i think a lot of that happened on the first two rounds then mecha base ended up being fairly one-sided for poker face so that's the real red down for the shanghai dragons is uh, you could tell that they, they were really winning until they weren't See if they can put that right foot forward and what Victoria's got for us here as we get ready to go into the map. It's just going to be more of that Hanzo coming through. Or if they've got something else up their sleeve. Now Mattel just seems to be certainly not, ready to go. And, certainly okay. not going to be Echo because this is uh, they would have kept Valentine in for that. But well, it's it already on like, the Hanzo. Uh, I don't know. I assume Victoria could probably also go the Sombra if things come to that. But what we've seen so far is just the Hanzo to Victoria, and it's been enough to get them a, a nice win versus the Dreamers, which has so far been the first official win in the Overwatch League. Well, first we have to get our daily dose of paws that taken care of. I guess we did have one earlier on as well uh, during the, the Oasis finale uh, in our last series. But uh, looks like it's just going to be another mic issue here with one of the Poker Face players. So hopefully we can get that taken care uh, of and we can get on our merry way Classic mic again. issue. The good old mic issues. That old chestnut once again. Mm -hmm. Whoever this mic guy is, he needs, to, he needs to get lost. He needs to get the hell out of here. <laughs> we love you, Pac-10. <laughs> Always causing issues. His birthday again. Alrighty. Well then. I'm ready. Looks like, okay, issue solved. We're going in. We're good to go. Thank God for that. Because I wasn't sure where I was going to take the conversation next. Because I haven't seen any movies lately. <laughs> well, that's a shame because some good ones have been out. So, well, you know, th the most frustrating thing is that... Uh, you go get yourself to a cinema. I know. It's, it's frustrating because Oppenheimer's going to be coming out soon. And I really would love to see that movie. Is it not out but in, in Korea, it doesn't come out until August 15th. What? Upon, I will not be in Korea anymore because I have what? travel. I, I have Why my is honeymoon. It? Why is it not my... out until August? I don't know. It's just the way that it worked out. We got the low roll. Oh my God. But it, that's my most... most uh, the one I I'm looking forward to the, the most. The movie couldn't get its Korean visa in time, apparently. I guess not. Walk to the embassy. Get an E6 here as quickly as we possibly can. Anyway, we're slow on the approach here so far from the side of Shanghai Dragons, but he's going to be noted. Has to translocate out very quickly. Doesn't find his setup, doesn't find much alt charge either. Viper getting knocked down low there. Surly faces, eat some arrows, feed the damage over to Eris, get that quick nano. And then Rob, you remember the days back in 6v6 where about a, about now, after a minute, the Nana would already be there. That's how quick the Nana yep. used to be. 
They don't make them the same way they used to, but he soon. <laughs> no, they really don't. <laughs> able to go in and help pull in on the dive. Taking down Victoria Finale as well. Going to be hacked out. Ooh, forced to recall. Taken very low. And Shanghai Dragons now occupying the point. Get themselves one and a half ticks very swiftly. Contest getting ready to come in. Second one, however, goes over to Shanghai. Just jumping off point, even if they can't get the cap right here, right now. But in the meantime, keeping them busy. Keeping these supports busy up onto the high ground. And zone back inside of the inn. And Kangam Jin get the whip shot through. Playing off the back of that. Yeah, one clip from Viper to get the kill on the finale. Things starting to slip here from this out of poker face. Let's see if they can buy any extra time away. It seems like inevitably Shanghai Dragon Mine should be able to now. get this point cap. Yeah, sleep dart in with the sleep. That's gonna be Muse taken down. That's gonna be the cap. Four minutes 45, so still very strong time out here. Or str str strong time left here for the <laughs> Shanghai Dragons. The Dragons have to really contemplate. They really, really had to contemplate whether they could get away with not spending ults there because uh, once Muse got the kill to Gunglam Jin, things could have gone a little bit tricky. Especially if Muse survived and got that primal off and it was pretty close. In fact, the rest of Poker Base were not that far from getting the ultimates that were really going to make things difficult for the dragons, but Cap will come on in. He's with the initial first blood. And I have the EMP ready to go now as well. Viper thinking that he's playing sneakily here, but clearly not noticing that Muse was zapping him for a good long while oh, before he made his exit. He's got spotted there. That'll slow things down for Dragons. Well, Zap's coming through, but the card right now locked into position. Up onto the high ground here. Rally coming out early. Aiden just popping that one, I guess, maybe sensing that the Sombra was going to be there. Just Nano Fate. There it is. Right. That's exactly what they're going to do. Goes over to him. Simple still holding his. Can push that over towards Muse. Dive onto the high ground. Looking for Victoria again. Just want to get rid of this Ponzo. Now turn their sights over towards the enemy on it. Knocks oh, them away from the moment. Right into Hisu. Can he collect the second kill? Yes, he absolutely can. Catches them both. Set up. Knocks it right out of the park. Gorgeously done here. Hisu in perfect position to capitalize. Muse managing to make his exit for the time being. And that big bolt battery here for the supports once more. But yeah, still online for them. Dragon Strike as well can help clear the bridge as the cart gets closer and closer to it. That's one way to get a good EMP. Hisu is in position to receive everyone that's getting primaled into him. After getting revealed a little bit earlier on. But yeah, I mean, Dragons, don't waste any time. Fate's on half HP. You're waiting for this rally to subside. And, well, you might as well just now into play and get Fate rolling. So the payload got some reasonable distance. But with the respawns coming in, Dragons have reset here in Poker Face. Back in control of the payload for now. Gonna regain some positioning on the map, on the castle. Oh, Finale. Both of them dancing with such low HP, but Victoria and Finale will eventually fall now. Aiden gonna be taken down as well as so Gungam Jin pops that rally. Gonna just help support them across the bridge. The shield bash will finish off the use. It's just simple left standing. That Dragon Strike's still there. If they want to try to open up for a last second contest, but I don't know if they're gonna be able to get in no position muse. in time. They can nano, but there's no muse. So if they nano, they probably have to nano Finale. Oh Okay, they're sending all, it. All finale finale taken down already, though. That's the that's the delay factor without Muse there. So the Dragon Strike just ends up I being mean, used, and that's the cap. Just if you're going to contest and commit, unless Victoria is swapping, which is not. So if you're going to contest, I, I think again you Nano Finale, so he doesn't die, and then you drag the strike, and that's your touch. But no, nope, they just <laughs> waste the Dragon Strike. Just without that one, Victoria barely gets around the corner with his life. Fate nearly sniped him. Let's see if Finale can weave his, weasel his way into the back line. Find a nice little stick to try to open things up here for this poker face defense. He's going to be hacked. Victoria, however, with some nice storm arrows. Gets a headshot across onto Hisu. Getting rid of the summer, removing him from the equation. Not a bad play, especially when he's that close to having that EMP. Sleep on a Finale, so the follow up chase. Not looking oh, great, what? and they'll actually just get on top of him and stop the hell out of him. It's the run up from Viper and the zap from Fate comes away with the elimination. Now, we're right back onto the offensive here as the Nano Boost is over on a Fate. Muse going to be matched. Victoria again delivering with a nice little headshot. Takes Viper out this time around. Isu, however, is still here. EMP about to be online. Fate just tries to keep himself alive. Now goes in with the Primal Rage off the back of the what EMP. Isu going to be taken down. Victoria finds yet another headshot. Back to back to back onto the opposing DPS. Simple loss, but that's all they're going to be able to get off this EMP. They didn't have Viper there. This ends up being a massive overcommitment. Well, yeah, Victoria is currently doing so much work for the team and he's still alive currently looking to punish Fate with Muse down. A trade onto Fate would have been required there. Another Dragon Strike being found. Hopefully a better one this time around. 
It helps segregate the team a little bit here, but of course the long range shielding is still going to be able to offer up some support to the side of the Shanghai Dragons players. Now they're right back into it. The rally is oh, rolling. Dave is just gone. absolutely destroyed as soon as he pops his own rally. Simple dead. Son of the Muse. Finale taken out as Viper scoops a second kill. Victoria is still the one who's really just popping and trying to find these eliminations, but I think this one's a bit too far gone. He's into the back. He's taken down. He's going to be dealt with here in a matter of seconds, you would suspect. It's the healing output from Simple and Aiden is going to be oh, enough. Oh, can't kill him. I haven't been able to the eliminate him yet. enough. Somehow, some way, they do manage to hold on. Now he's going to be anti out, though, and the healing means absolutely nothing in that regard. Victoria swapping over onto the Widowmaker, but he's dead as soon as he arrives. Simple teleporting back. Pest on the cart needs to still be there. Simple avoids the pulse bomb explosion, but cannot avoid Gangnam Jin, who manages to take him down at the very end. The minute and 30 seconds is the time bank remaining as Shanghai Dragons get themselves over to sea. Considering how much Shanghai were actually winning that one, Pokerface maybe bled down another good 30 seconds with. Just players continually surviving and more respawn is joining in the into the fray. So I mean it was looking like uh I, I would have imagined a two minute plus time bank for the Shanghai Dragons there as we take a look at this EMP again. He's just like thank you very much, sir, for delivering all these players into me. Perfectly catch on the three into melee range so that the spread is minimal for the SMG. Shots coming through in the left leg there as well. So ultimately B was quite successful for the Shanghai Dragons. A included, I want to say, in that as well. A very uh, ill-advised final recontest from Pokerface on B, and then a tiny bit of contest on C. That I say tiny again, it actually didn't manage to bleed down the timer somewhat more. But an impressive attacking side for Shanghai Dragons on Ike. So looking good to equalize this one, one and one. If Pokerface can't do the same. Need to push, but because of the, the mid thirty, obviously need to be able to finish with time in the bank. I mean, the OT would just set up for a draw. I wrong someone so we'll see the path how effective they can be now. Getting ready to swap over. Yes. Victoria, I mean, some really nice Hanzo shots there at the end. If he could start off firing those, and they'll be on their merry way, especially given that he was just consistently taking down Viper Hisu kind of over and over again on a bit of a cycle. In bubble place, just to make sure that Widowmaker can't find any slick little headshots off the rip. I say a as, little while longer. Yeah, nearly getting Iris there. Would have been a huge value had he been able to take on the enemy Ana, but that he would walked into a back. Sonic arrow there. That was unfortunate. Sometimes you just self scout, you know, giving the team a handicap, I suppose. They gonna be anti out. Muse diving into the back line, looking to apply, apply some pressure here onto the supports, but he needs the help of his right now. Now gonna be slept, finish off, but finds that kill. Viper continues onward, looking for a little bit more, but looks like Victoria able to elude him just enough to stay alive. Amused though, he just got chunked. Man got bionated and swiftly taken down. And a bubble placement will make things a little bit more awkward for Hisu, because otherwise Hisu could do a ton of damage and look to farm up the EMP nice and fast. It's looking like it'll come through from Finale on the Pulse Bomb to open up our attacking side. Second half of Viking Welder is the first ultimate. Step on a fade. Push up to the high ground here. Victoria looking to get the storm arrows through, but the side pressure being applied by Hisu is now just straight up above them. Gonna build up towards that EMP. 75%. He is just surging at the moment. I looked at him, he was at 60. But we're gonna be taken down. Victoria does finally find that headshot, but Iris will trade out against Simple. Now Aiden falling means that there's no supports available for the side of Poker Face Pulse Bomb as well. For the finale. Not gonna that's get the connection, and that's a great sleep guard here from Iris who goes ahead and finishes the job as well. Gets the melee punch on him, use just for good measure. They save them off. Nearly half the time bank now trained down to Victoria. Likely to die here late on the back end if they can hound him down. Anti does come across as well, and one final tap. And Viper will be able to get him. Well played there. It looked like Victoria might have been able to get away, but Eris and Viper will make short work of him to make sure that's not going to be the case. Now, well, Shanghai Dragons are about the set of five ultimates. You want to talk about a dominant map so far. Attacking side to full completion with time to spare on the defensive side. Okafakes is swiftly running out of time, and Dragons are still just holding on to everything because they can. And this Pokerface just can't force the ults out. Oh. oh, good reveal. That was nice. Very, very great sense there from Victoria. Maybe somebody had kind of you know, brushed up against him and said, oh, he's over this way. Either way, great reveal. He's going to be nanned up as his primal expires. Spay him over, and it will stomp down Victoria, but they lose Iris in the process to a bionade there from Simple. 
for one thus far. Poker face still need to get themselves entrenched over onto the point. You can see them split off a little bit over the PC shop. Fate jumping over to the side. Trying to get some healing, but I guess it doesn't even really matter because in simple again going to get taken down. So support this once more as we use down to half HP. Has to make his exit. Grab that mega pack. And he's super viper just been doing so much work here on the back line. It's difficult for Aiden Simple to get anything done. Even with the reveals coming on through Victoria every now and then hitting a sonic onto Hisu. They can't really get him down. They can't kill Hisu. They can't stop him from farming in time. They just make it annoying for him. Oh, like I said, it's just annoying for Hisu for now. It's not lethal. Dragon strike through. Here sends out the nano over towards Fate. Rally rolling from Aiden. Finale again with the pulse bomb knocking the only way to kill and almost gets killed off himself. As well, though, similarly short handed and using that ultimate. Triple shield bash in from Aiden. Looking to go ahead and confirm some kills. Victoria will be able to start things off on a headshot here on the Hisu. Now Poker Face find themselves onto the point and ticking up. Second one going to be coming through. Does the recontest happen? We'll have to just wait and see. We're getting closer and closer. And yeah, no one's going to be able to get themselves onto the point here. You can see Viper was just a second shy of being able to get that touch. So the cap is in, but it's only 2.45 to work with. And Poker Face need to go the distance with time in the bank. Fate could have jumped over the wall if he really wanted to go for it. But he was maybe 80 something percent towards the primal. If he actually had the primal, or was 90 percent plus. I think he definitely goes through the jump. So they were just barely away from getting the correct ultimates and you stay alive long enough Ariston finds a nano the rally plays it as well and your survivability on the point for the recontest is super high dragons didn't want to take a risk and now the early fight on to be is what they need to bank on anti was good from Ares, but dragons couldn't really go in Fiber down low backs up receive some healing in the meantime fate is contesting the low ground pops the primal anti on the back of that pulse bomb though he is a little bit lower on HP than he would like to be as he goes jumping down. He wants to try to separate somebody here, split apart that front and back line a bit, but widely the primal range is just not going to be able to find too much value here for the side of the dragons. Still control space though. Dragons haven't really allowed Pokerface to move up. Payload is stalled out. He still wants to solo onto the Tori and Fate will come in for the alley -oop. I mean, the nano is re what really helps confirm it there as well. Fate's coming away with that elimination of that sudden burst of damage. Victoria gets picked off really nicely set up there by Hisu. Getting closer and closer to having that next EMP online. Just six fingers up, up to go. Gets another hack onto Victoria. And he's just getting bullied because Victoria has no sight lines. Pulse bomb mm. nearly connected as well. Which would have just sent Victoria back into spawn. So when you look at Victoria's POV as we are now, it's like, who do you really shoot at? You can't really see anybody. Eris is too far away. You can shoot at Fate, but can you really do enough damage to take them down? Unlikely. So it's just hard for Victoria to see much when you're just stuck in spawn, essentially. Wants to get the hack here on Amuse, but the sleep dart will come through instead. Now they get the follow up. Isu revealing himself here. Just wants to try to put some pressure here on Amuse and peel for the back line a little Two bit more. Well. I mean, Fate is in a really rough spot now. Desperately needs some healing, but Iris is kind of busy in the back line because Amuse is still applying pressure, and now he's going to be nanoed up. Another sleep dart will come through. But look at this Victoria. Follow up here is yeah, Victoria gets the headshot. Isu catching three with that EMP. Fate finally does arrive though and is able to clean up that back line. So support's gone once more from the side of Poker Face. And Victoria will not be able to survive as Fate comes up with, I believe, a third kill there. It was, yeah. For a little bit more. 28 seconds now remaining for Poker Face who need to get this card going. It's been tough going for Poker Face where, I mean, the payload has at least moved slightly, but they can't defend their back line. Even with a good headshot from Victoria, Fate will still finish off the plate. And now we're coming up to a round of ultimates again for the Shanghai Dragons with Victoria constantly oh. down. Viper gets traded. Still though, get themselves over onto the cart. Muse, touching it, contesting it for now, inching it forward. Nano in the back, Fate going up. Team's dying Isu though. finds Aiden, yeah. I mean, look how far disconnected Diana is right now. Isu arriving just to further put some added pressure in. Victoria swaps up with the Sombra to try to kill something, but I mean, there's just no way to make this happen. Fate is just wreaking havoc rips apart simple muse is anti out he's gonna get finished off of yours collects the kill and now it's just a short little contest there from victoria before Iris snipes yet another one the ot will bleed away and it's a successful hold in front of the bridge here with the shanghai dragons as they tie us up one to one super well played map i mean they were just good from start to finish their shanghai much better on the defense much better on the attacking side and for poker fakes victoria got a little bit of work done on the hanzo but once you start getting into a much more open area of B with the high ground, the super high grounds as well, I think Hanzo ends up not really being the play. And if you can find a way to capture Castle by running inside, Dragon Strike the indoors and sort of pushing through up the stairs, it's one way to make the Hanzo work. But until you can secure sight lines, which they had no area control, no map control, 
Anzo was just not good on that part of the map. Unfortunately not. Well, now tied up, Poker Face cannot get that match point. They cannot look for the 2-0. Maybe it's going to be another five mapper. Not sure, but one of these teams is going to be taking a lead as we get ready to go to Escort, which is Circuit Royale. So we'll see if that substitution comes through for Poker Face, and we'll see what Fate's going to be doing as well. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We are back and we are tied up at a one-to-one -one Shanghai Dragons with the with an excellently played defense there on Eichenwald. They got to the end of the map on their attack and then they staved off Poker Face just in front of the bridge. So now, equal footing between both these squads as we get ready to go in towards Circuit Royale to see who is going to take the lead, who is going to take match point. Yeah, it feels even, but at the same time, you know, I kind of repeat myself that map one was really Shanghai Dragons' favorite and then they went through as uh, I, I enjoy seeing Flitter behind Viper because it feels like a passing of the torch in a way. Like Viper to me does feel like a bit of a new Flitter. And we talked plenty about the fact that, especially in games past, that 
Viper has been deadlifting for this team. He is the new Flair deadlifter. Speaking of new, we're going to see Pepe debut on this team for Poker Face. He hasn't played a match yet. And he's an off tank player, so he'll be in to play the Sigma. So finally, Pepe will get his map as the team Sigma Specialist. That's what off tanks do now. When your team has both a main tank and off tank, you just have one Sigma Specialist, and then the other guy plays your Winston. I mean, so the question then ends up being that what the hell does Fate do? Yeah, I mean, we would assume that he's just going to be opting into the Winston battle here. Uh, it ball into Sigma? I don't know. But we'll have to just wait and see as we get ready to load it's up not, the game. It's not good, which means... Waiting with a uh, bated breath. This could go the distance, because if Pokerface win this one with the superior composition, as I expect that they have, we either go they'll 3-1 with Esperanza, or we're going to go to 5. Yep, it could just be a very late evening. That would be, what, 18 out of 20 potential maps? Soul Inferno with their 3-0, but then two back-to-back -back 5 mappers, and this one is going to a minimum of 4. Well, long night either way. Here on a Saturday evening in this part of the world. We'll see, though. Poker face. I mean, definitely some bright spots at the beginning, kind of stealing away. It felt like the opening map of Busan from the Shanghai Dragons. They should certainly still have their work cut out for them, though. A lot more to be desired after the performance on Eichenwald. But as we can see, oh, did I speak this into existence? Fate is showing the ball. Yeah, but what does Ball really do here? Like, I mean, he rolls. You, I suppose that you just roll into the other team, but what's that really going to do for you? Because you eat a single rock from the Sigma, I'm pretty sure you just die. Like, instantly. At minimum, I think he's just your sniper. But did, I, did we have this discussion last time? There was a map. He did snipe. I think it was this map. It was. And like he uh, soon pounded snipe, and then he did, but then he did, and he pounded. He didn't originally snipe though. I think. Yes. It took him like half a map to decide to snipe. That is the correct order of operations, indeed. And they do it again, where they just—he's not going to snipe. They'll start losing, and then he will snipe, and they'll start winning. Okay, crash through up onto the high ground. Not able to set up for the pile driver though. A little bit shallow, but they put some pressure down. Victoria immortality field has to be used just to try to save the Widowmaker's life here. This does give a bit of a more difficult target, I suppose, for Finale. But Recon out again does get the scout here on the Hisu, which is just going to be slowing up this EMP build time. Into the back line, though, they find Simple, and Aiden's going to get taken down. So, well, they find the supports, cool. and I mean, you see Finale jumping towards just to go for a quick reset here. I'll tell you what, the Sigma teams, which is every other team on this map, probably don't really get to have any experiments, experience, rather, playing against ball compositions. So strangely, that ended up working out. Viper got into the back line. Supports down in a wholesale swap from Pokerface. They don't want none of that business anymore. Okay. Big change up here. Way behind adults. into a sniper battle, or rather, uh, shifting away completely from having the sniper. So Hisu doesn't have to go into the sniper battle, is what I mean to say. Finale, though, getting the better of Viper. Comes away with that kill. Victoria going to be hacked out. Looking for the follow up damage to take him low, but healing comes through. They keep him alive for the time being. Three meters left to go for this cap here on the A. Viper going to be returning. Pulse Bomb ready to be in hand. Take not too far off having that minefield as well. But for now, Shanghai Dragons will be slowed up. And Shanghai eventually, I think, will win this just because of the ultimate advantage. With Pokerface swapping everybody off, they're so far behind in ults. Gnarly playing a little bit of a platformer here, just dodging the rolling balls. Here we go. Ults online. Dragon's time to strike. For the moment. Faint. Kind of going back and forth off the rooftops right now, doing his best Spider-Man cosplay. Now he's going to be nanoed up, goes into the back line, but Gangnam Jin at the same time is going to take it down, but Viper finds two oh, with the Pulse Bomb. Man. Victoria and Simple absolutely decimated. Massive trade up here for the side of the Dragons. The card getting close. The contest is still here. Peppy trying to stay alive, and now the EMP is going to be invested for He's too quickly cleans up Aiden. Peppy's going to be knocked out of the mech, and that should be the cap coming in. So it's a little while, but you know, they managed to make it across the line here as the minefield will clean up the tracer. Fate now looking like he's going to be swapping after the point A cap. Winston. Yes, it's sir. I think the ball was really only there for the Sigma, right? So, yeah, play the minefield, then play the actual composition. And weirdly enough, now Poker Face in the weird spot where they're stuck on this Diva comp, which I think they can continue playing fine. It's just that the original Sigma comp should have been enough. Apparently, wasn't. 
Let's see what they can do with these ults though, because they're in a good position. Who do you nano is going to be the interesting thing, because you could just go for Victoria. You could nano the Diva, but not as amazing as nanoing a Winston, which you don't have. Certainly not. Now he's doing quite a bit of damage here. Is kept alive. Only by the efforts here of Simple. Five ultimates available for the side of Poker Face. He decided to try to pull the trigger here. Pulse Bomb's out. That's one of them gone. Finale unable to find the connection. Can't get that kill. Soul just maintaining control here. Keeping the ramp from... Or keeping the cart from rolling up the ramp even further. He just played it slowly as well. Here we go. Okay, dive in. Fake gonna be... Nana up, but yeah, Nana goes over to Victoria, looking for a setup there on the mag grenade. Can't quite get it. Swinging around the corner, though, and Fate gonna be taken down. They look for a little bit more, and know that they're gonna be down into the underpass and the supports. Oh, they're just gonna route together. This should be brutal. Kills will be found. Cleanup comes in two and a half minutes now, remaining for the dragons on this push. Big spin, though. Three ultimates gone for that one. At least the pulse bomb is about to come back on, so that one was an easier ultimate to sort of throw into that fight, but double support's gone. About to come into timing at EMP. Heesh was loving this. This is exactly the type of situation that Heesh wants to be in. EMP where the supports don't have anything to defend with. But it is a good time by. Okaface are going to lose a ton of time here. Rather, Train High Dragons are going to lose a ton of time here. So, Okaface have that going for them. Draining it low, but they need to be able to get the hold. Because they don't want a simple repeat of what happened there on Ike and Bolt. Pulse bomb up from Finale again. Now the Deadeye as well being invested from Victoria. Looks like he's not really able to line anybody up. Was waiting for the bubble to get burst. Still cannot find the kill. Fate going to be taking a nap off over onto the flank, but now woken up. They get the shield bash and get the anti down. Self destruct forced. Fate just pulling back. Happy rather. Pulling back. Keeps himself safe. But in Finale end up getting cleaned up, and now the push comes through. Just rushing forward, looking for more, and looking for the cap at the same time. Victoria going to fall. Simple down to a sliver of HP. Happy as well going to be Knocked out of the mech once again. Cap comes through and it's just shy of three minutes now in the time bank here for the dragons. I see you've got the uh, the frog living in your brain at the moment. We have a little frog bro in the audience, you know. <laughs> got it, the Gagri. We love it. We enjoy those. Here we go. Shanghai Dragon is now making some really good progress through the map. Look at face stall. Looking for the defendable position. Victoria now oh. moving over towards, I think, the preferred hero, given that we've seen Victoria primarily on the Hanzo. Back over towards the Hanzo now. Cassidy probably would have been fine. Maybe a little strange that Cassidy didn't get played a little bit more. You'd imagine that Cass is pretty good to trace the Sombra, but if you want to reveal the Sombra, then the Sonic Arrow is what you need. Gonna get traded out of here, but now the trade up comes through. Is Gangnam Jin also going to fall? And Nano committed, but nothing else really found. And the Pulse Bomb goes wide there from Viper. It does get Finale, but can't come away with that support pick that he's desperately hoping for. So now the cart's gonna be halted here on the final corner Looking for a little bit more but there's still plenty to work through that EMP is going to have to be big from Hisu I think his last one left a little bit to be desired there I don't even think it really caught anyone I kind of missed that but they won the fight anyway so not much to complain about Fate is low HP no primal they got to try and keep Fate. Fate alive but LOS is a little bit dubious okay well EMP going to be used and that's going to be Aiden and Victoria take it down simple as well Caught up in the crossfire, ends up falling. Pepe just has to go die very quickly here. They actually do him a bit of a mercy. I mean, granted, they need to push the card, so they can't just stagger him completely, but pull him off very swiftly to get things moving once more. A minute and 12 seconds now remaining. Yeah. It's going to die. I mean, you got to be winning these pushes now. Otherwise, I think Dragon's uh, not going to be able to finish this at all. Riley to break the Dragon Strike could be tricky to navigate as well. Well, again, Victoria did get hacked. Wants to try to climb up onto the high ground here to contest against Fate. Try to work that primal rage out of him here perhaps and they will just be able to do that turning his sights now i mean fate just looks to turn it around on him puts him in his sights puts him into the corner finds that kill now simple gonna be taken down as well as he was able to get on top of him his shield bash on the finale not able to find the elimination and the self-destruct lands right inside of the bubble perfectly placed there by fate denies all the damage away dragon strike now crashing across peppy desperately trying to buy some time trying to stay alive here onto the car but focus fire is coming in and he can't beat matrix is the oh, stick goes stick. on to victoria what was that from viper that one looked magnetized. That looked like a Cassidy nade. Either way, yeah. gets the kill, gets the cap. Dragons, they make it to the end with 27 seconds. For a team that I think, uh, you know, on a map like this, this should be a very difficult struggle for them. But Poker Face only played the Sigma composition briefly and then instantly gave up on that. And by the way, another thing that I remember seeing is Fate eventually on the defense did play the Sigma. Is he going to do it this time again as well? Because the other issue is 
as a defending team if you play a ball comp or you play a dive comp and the attacking team plays the sigma they can outrange you so much and they have nearly infinite space just to run back go all the way back to spawn if they need to and you as the defensive team need to dive on in it's a bit of an ask for the defense so he's gonna do it but this could be tough i think i think i, I like poker faces comp a lot more on both defense and offense but definitely on the offense where unless shanghai dragon is going to opt to do like a spawn camp they're, they're not going to be able to um, you, Matt, like where are they even going to stand i guess they play the hairpin the corner and the only thing they can really do is just maximize on that corner because as soon as poker facts get any sort of distance and range dragons can't contest let's see how far they can make it it's definitely hello Unideal for them on Eichenwald and not being able to get themselves over to B and have that crack at the final stretch of the map. Can they rewrite that and have a stronger performance now? Just wait and see. It looks like Victoria's just going to be out the gate here. Yeah, I mean, just kind of sticking here with this Diva. I, but I, the problem is, I just think the Diva comp is way worse. So I think they're just choosing a bit of an inferior comp because now you're playing like a dive versus dive kind of with the Hanzo as well. But I guess the Pepe can't probably can't play Winston, so you just kind of have to roll with it. Yeah, I mean, you definitely want Muse to be back into the mix for that one, so just gonna stick with the Diva. Maybe maybe they feel like it gives them enough backline protection that it makes it worth it. Either way, Kangum Jin will get taken down and able to find that kill. Finale on as well, but Victoria trades up, finding Viper, making that a two for one. Under a bit of fire here as Fate wants to try to take him down. The bubble helps protect him as he pulls back away. Shots can't quite get woven through, but I mean, it's an anti on a three, and Victoria just does not care. He's still pushing forward, still looking for more tags. We'll be able to find them. So already 67% builds up towards that dragon strike. Also, I'm as well on the way here for finale, but Viper is nipping at the heels. Actually, he's just out in front. Dragon's going early with the nano. They do. They're going to find the timing and instantly get a frag. Good catch. It's Victoria gone. That's a hell of a lot of damage taken away from this out of poker face. It's just gonna fully call in the retreat. Get the disconnect here on the fight. Wait for him to come back through. Look to go once more, but now, now he's problem, just got the EMP ready. The problem is, like normally, if you're playing a Winston dive, you can just nano your Winston as poker face. We can't really do that yet. Simple's also been caught. I mean, kind of was, but it's actually Victoria who ends up falling. The supports managed to stay alive because uh, it was a little bit whippy there from Misu dropping down on top of him to try to find the elimination. They didn't have to follow up either. Are we gonna be receiving that nano boost? No. It's absolutely annihilated. Viper into the back line helps find that kill. Finale will be able to come away with ears. They've lost both supports now here for the side of Poker Face. Finale is taken care of, and it just becomes worse and worse for them as time goes on. It's more people fill the kill feed here. Pepe just gonna have to jump off the side of the map. The cart will remain in place. Plenty of time gone here as well. Yeah, it's just a harder comp to execute, especially with Victoria dead. Like you mentioned, most of your damage is gone. And you can't counter nano dive. It's not like again they don't have a Winston, so nanoing your diva is way less threatening than nanoing a Winston in terms of dive pressure. It's an unfortunate situation that I think Pokerface is buying themselves into this matchup. Oh. Okay, that is a good shot. That this is what Pokerface need more of that. Just a pixel spotted through the foliage. And he's going to be reeled into the, into the back line, but he gets a hack through, so Fate is able to come through and get that elimination. So one for one on the DPS, and Viper already on the way back, just sprinting his way through, you would suspect. Maybe Victoria just ends up having to send a Dragon Strike from the spawn to open things up for them here, because they are running out of time. A minute remaining. Hack through on to Pepe. This finale, that Pulse Bomb, about to be here. It's constantly back and forth here with the side of Viper, but... Comes Look at the way. survivability as well. Dragons have so much going for them, Nano. Fate is primal, another EMP coming online, and Victoria's dead. Uh, Victoria is just getting death cycled. Yep. Spending so much time in the respawn room right now, every single time he comes back into the fight, he's trying to find some semblance of setup to use that Dragon Strike, he's just sent right back in. Monstrous Punish is coming through now for the Southern Spring High Dragons, who have this point A completely in their grasp. EMP this time, he's able to find his man. Aiden gets taken down, Pepe is knocked out of the back. He has to just die, go for the reset, where there's only 24 seconds, but look at him, they're leaving him. Okay, they finally finish him off. Just couldn't use the self-destruction. They, they should have just left him more. They should have just left Pepe more. I he agree. would have been stuck in a really weird spot with 20 seconds left to go. Probably has to give up the mech. He just it would have been so disastrous, but they actually do him a favor there. Finale. 
He's in the recall, needs to be the one to go for this touch here. Waiting for it, dashes for it, barely manages to get the connection. Dashes out, so very low on health. He's gonna be taking a nap a couple meters away, and that's enough. <laughs> that's this sleep is enough. They deny the, the touch to come back through. They stop the overtime. The Dragon Strike is finally used. But that is gonna be the Shanghai Dragons with a very successful bull hold coming through here on Circuit yep. Royale to now move up two to one in the series. Smiles on the faces of Fate and Gundam, and they know they just got away with playing a Winston Cop on Circuit Royale, and Poker Face can't believe they duped themselves into playing the Diva there. I mean, of course, Pepe's Hero Pool is going to limit them to not being able to match the Winston, but that's not really the point. I still think they should have tried the Sigma again on the offense. And um, the team that can play Sigma, that opts not to, that loses to a, a Winston Dive on Circuit, no, that can't be allowed to happen. Well, now it all comes down to the Esperanza, like you said. If they wanted to get a 3-1 victory, we'd have to close out there. But now they need to close out that map just to be able to take this all the way to five. See if we cannot, see if we can't have that 18 map day. Anyway, we're going to find out when we come back from the break. And suspect that Muse is going to be rejoining the squad as well. See so if there's going to be any other changes accompanying it. Either way, we're going to go to that break now. We'll see you guys on the other side.
And we are back and going into what could very well be the final map of this series and of the evening. Shanghai Dragons out in front now, 2-1 after a full hold on Circuit Royale. Just need to close out the win on Esperanza to best poker face and put another win on the board for themselves, making them 2-2. Two two. We'll see if they can get it done or if we can once more go all the way to five maps. Things just got a lot more difficult for poker face because that was meant to be a map that favored their hero balls and not Shanghai Dragons. And well, Dragons managed to pull it all the way over towards a dive composition, which poker face were not ready to win with the lack of their Winston player who has now rejoined the roster in the former Muse format number four. Also back in is going to be Valentine. So no more Hanzo, which I think is probably a good thing. They need to bring back some of that Sombra play. Uh, they looked good on it. Or map number one for Busan. That's what got them the win. And since subbing in Victoria to play a little bit of the Hanzo, things haven't looked nearly as good. It's been rough, but Valentine Muse back through. Let's see if they can recreate some of that magic here. They'll take it all the way to five and get control up once more. And if they can, it will be Ilios. But for now, we will get ready to focus up as we go into Esperanza to see if it can be done. Can we get the 18 map day? Will it be cut short with only 17? Only in big quotation marks. Once again, very late <laughs> evening. What's it pushing 1 a.m. for you? Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's all good. We live for these. So if anyone's shout out to anyone, shout out oh. to anyone in the theater at WDG still in the audience, by the way, because uh, oh, I'm sure there's we, we people late there. late night gaming. We late night gaming. Nothing else. The fans in Korea incredibly dedicated. Whether it be following the players across the years and years of their careers yeah. or staying out now, late for only, hours to watch them. If only they got to watch this match in 70 millimeters. Imagine <laughs> that. 70 millimeter projection. When when Overwatch? When exactly. can we have that upscaled? We need that on YouTube. When do we get 8K streams? <laughs> that way I can see every detail. I can spot everyone through in the silhouettes and all that kind of business. Well, one day perhaps. We'll see if that ever uh, comes to fruition, but we'll see also how these teams do fare. And Shanghai would love to get this as a relatively clean three and one. Because otherwise, they would have to play control on that five, and yes. that would be unlucky. And they would have to get their first control win of the season, of the year. You know what, Shanghai? Shanghai are just waiting for Flashpoint to get added in, so one less control map is played. <laughs> yeah. That much less to uh, suffer through. Up and out. Neutral fighting will begin as we wait for the bot to unlock in six seconds. Mew is going to be hacked. Is it early here? Now matched on to Fate on the opposite side. Not too much damage has been found. You can see he's soon Valentine just completely neck oh, and neck. But oh, so simple. Eris, what in the hell was that? Just opens it up single-handedly. Takes down simple. Finale going to be dead on the opposite side. And now it's going to be Shanghai Dragons very comfortably beginning the push. Now that's a fastball straight into the strike. And simple don't know what hit him. Early lead now being found by the Shanghai Dragons. Plenty of damage done by Viper. Poker face left reeling a minute into the game. Trying to get that first regroup on. Okay, well, the counter back back through. Finale going to be able to collect the kill here on a Hisu. Valentine narrowly makes it out. One more tap there from Miris, and he would have been dead. But now they can contest the bot. 32 meters established for the side of the Shanghai Dragons. They look to regain some control. Yeah. It's enough to threaten the cap on their next push if they win again. You take those. First ultimate online will be Viper, who had a 0.8. Possible efficiency on the last map, by the way. So four out of five false bombs. Got a kill. Oh, somehow here, it's not going down here. Nade at his feet, helping to dissuade them. Muse can't stay forward either. So far, not much distance has been accrued here. False bombs available on either side. We'll see when they come into play who they're going to be targeted at. Whether or not they can get those sticks. But another anti-nade comes across. He's been just been so clean with it this entire time. And Viper there strikes first, and he strikes hard. That's going to be Muse taken out. 10% shy. Pulse bomb in, however. And still the finale finding on Jin. But now Viper's going to be the recipient of this nano boost. Goes across instantly. Finds a kill on a finale. Looks for a little bit more. He didn't stay alive, but now both supports corral here into the side room. The anti nade again woven through by Iris. Comes up with the kill on the simple, helps set up with the kill on the Aiden. The Shanghai Dragons are right back on the bot. And Pokerface just managed to get the double support ultimates there as well, but it's in a losing fight, so unfortunately can't do too much about it. 
Now is oh, the push that okay. threatens the cap itself, and Valentine catches Hisu midair. Hisu had nowhere to go. Just in case. Act spawn toss. is where he ends up. Okay, and the contest is in just before the bot reaches the checkpoint. The Dragons, after losing out on Hisu, cannot push that one through, but if you can get back over here pretty quickly, might be able to make it happen. Four ults on. Poker face is time to strike. Hisu is out of battle. That gives Valentine some time to set up and kind of waiting for first EMP to come on through. Hisu on the hunt. Surprised he didn't get revealed by Finale there. EMP up over the top. They're looking for simple. The rally's rolling from Aiden. trying to get him alive. And Viper building up another pulse bomb. I don't even realize that he had it already. Is it uses that to put something good to use. Finds that kill. Leaving just Valentine and Aiden now left standing. The re response have to come in. The bot should make it to the checkpoint here. Shanghai Dragons get themselves into a very advantageous position. And another successful pulse bomb. Two in a row, two kills in a row. And then the solo push for the cap is the rest of the Shanghai Dragons. Or we'll look for some other movements around the map. Hisu on the hunt to find some extra damage. The Shanghai Dragons looking comfortable on what could potentially be the final map. But Focus Face can't do more here. And the dive denied. The whip shot coming through. Gangnam Jin could have taken down Valentine, able to find it. EMP does get used. Muse, however, going to be traded out. Doesn't get to use his Primal Rage. Back in on a finale as well. Now into a bad spot. Down to 30 HP. Finished off by Hisu. If you look for a little bit more, Fate will go ahead and cleave down Simple. He's just batting around. Playing with Aiden like he's just a, a toy. Finds the kills. The push continues. The EMP does not come up with the goods. Not at all. Now Viper's looking over towards another pulse. Could it be three in a row here? Contenders, Poker Face can't afford to take any more major losses. The distance is already getting extreme. We're nearly up to three digits yet. Double support ultimates online. Eris can just nano fate and Shanghai Dragons and keep the aggression up. Stayed in the back does find Eris. They're taking him low. The rally rolling, trying to keep him alive as they play Ring Around the Rosie here. Just swinging around the pillar. Gangnam Jin, however, is actually somehow going to be the one that falls. And now Eris will die on the back end as Muse finally finds his the target. Mana spent. Yeah, the mana was spent, as you say. So for that, Eris committed to his own. Fate now going to be cleaned up. Viper cannot escape them in control of the bot but there's still so much distance I think, they have um, to make up for i think eris lost an out of there went on to gunlam jim but gunlam jim instantly died so it didn't get applied because fate didn't get it and neither did viper or hisu so unfortunately it's still a lot still a lot so real tragedy for eris there not to be able to get the nano onto gunlam jim who once again out of spawn comes back into play and straight back to death wasn't a pulse bomb this time, but finally, he manages to double up. He gets both supports for his trouble here. The EMP is committed by Hisu, and they only find one kill so far. Pulse bomb out from Viper, not going to be getting the elimination, but then draws back down to the pistols. We'll be able to find Aiden on the back end. Use primal rolling Viper at 60 HP. Trying to escape one health now, and he just gets beaten and battered down. Valentine able to find the kill on the back end. Push continues. 21 meters established on still a very long way to go, and they have to get to the checkpoint here. Do poker face. Made under some pressure, though. We'll be leaping back out to safety. Valentine has the EMP ready to rock. And he's got plenty of targets. Here we go. Double supports there. The I just pulled the trigger. Waiting to see if Finale can also join this fight. He does it now. He's used off screen, but Muse, he's slapped. hacked on the front line. He actually can't join in with the dog. Finale, though, Ooh, finds a pulse bomb on the boat. Kangam Jin and Eris both going to be taken down. Kangam Jin tests with the one, but now without the supports, Hisu Viper both low on HP. Fate has to make his exit. Poker face. Still in with his push, they're continuing onward as Viper down to a sliver of health. Looks like he might just be able to survive. That was required because Valentine got a good EMP but just couldn't get the damage and he was slept instantly. And Muse can join. Just popped them down. It's Finale that actually gets the necessary frags for Poker Face and trying to get this cap and they're so close. They'll probably have to spend two more ultimates here unless the they can snowball these frags. He's getting absolutely balled right now. Simple going to be hacked, drops down off the high ground, looking for some help, but the help is not going to be found. Gisu does manage to hound him down, finds that kill. Rally's still rolling. Fate still causing a hell of a lot of commotion. Kills off Aiden. They deny the cap, I do believe, or maybe they got right up to the checkpoint. Either way, the bot now back in control of the Shanghai denied, Dragons, yeah. and additional kills are being found. So Finale dead. They added stagger on the back end. Shanghai Dragons can get this bot back into a decent position. They have a 41 meter mm -hmm. buffer. It's a good amount of progress for Poker Face, but man, they, they need a lot more than that. They need the cap for sure. I don't know what happened with him using the Simple there, but just no LOS and now no life for Simple as he so once again will destroy that backline. At least Aiden survives. So you could argue it wasn't the most amazing EMP, but it does mean that Poker Face can't quite contest just yet. Not properly anyway. Well, they've stopped the payload, so 
Dragons also don't push their luck either. No, they don't. I mean, they know that they have the upper hand right now. And there's only two and a half minutes remaining, so they don't want to overextend themselves into bad places. And now he gets tagged up off screen. Recall used to keep himself alive. Nano at the ready here from Iris, the one ultimate that they have to work with at the moment. Gangnam Jin and Viper both try to get theirs online. Bot being brought back forward once more. But in the bot, pushed as far as it was. The forward spawns are there at the moment the side of the Shanghai Dragons. Nano goes out. Iris trying to save Gangnam Jin. Now trying to save himself. And to stay alive here a little bit longer. Looks like it will be able to win out that neutral fight, but they have to pull way back away. 150. Where's that EMP coming from? Here we go. Four man capture. That is brilliant. I think it might have hit absolutely everybody there. Hard to say. Either way, got the kill. Finale drops in, gets the pulse bomb stick behind on the Hisu, and then follows up for a kill on a Viper. Again, Finale very much wanted to keep them in this game. Should be the cap now. Forward spawns are going to be lost, and yet we can go right back over the push. As Iris is going to die, Kangam Jin likely to fall as well for the added stagger. Kills come across. Bot now pushing. Like you said, yes, the checkpoint is going to be achieved, but there's still distance that they need to close. 39 meters to tie it up. They're finally going to get a good dive in. Four man EMP. And Pokerface will get the huge cleanup with some staggered deaths as well. And that's ideally what you want. Everyone in a team wipe, but not all at the same time. So you can really slow down Dragons on their reconsolidation. There's still 20 meters left to go for Pokerface. So work is not yet done. There's only one minute left to go. This is that much closer. 21 meters now here for Poker Face to try to extend this all the way into a fifth and final map. Muse not wanting to pull the trigger on the primal range. Just backs off, offers up the ceiling. Really amplifies simple and his ult builds. He's trying to catch up the Iris and he's just nipping at his heels at the moment. He's now on the dive in. Down low. Jumps oh, back he across. Does, he oh, he's reading for it. He's trying to give them that all that juice, all that ult charge rather than committing the primal. Not feeling comfortable with it there. Either way, it might just end up costing him. Nano has to come through this time over on Aiden, but he's still will find finale. So now it's going to be another man down here on the side of Poker Face. We need to continue this push. The bot now being shifted back away from there. Shanghai Dragons look to close this out. 19 seconds remaining. The supports pull away. Was, they managed to escape. It was definitely greedy from you. And the issue now is that Shanghai Dragons just start pulling the payload away. I mean, dude, it's not even just about the fact that, okay, can Pokerface kind of recover that situation? But now that they have, uh, the payload is so far away that the overtime's gonna last forever here. And Simple's been spotted and he's been dealt with the EMP into the kill. Found Aiden rallying, rolling HP bars low. However, his Valentine needs some DLC right now so he can try to get in a position to use his own EMP. False bump out, not gonna be finding an elimination. Nano goes across to keep Fate alive. Viper now finding Aiden, Simple. Swapping over, comes back here with a key to go. EMP in the back line. Finale able to play off the back of it perfectly. Just find Gangnam Jin trading that one out, but now Muse dead in transit. Cannot make it out to safety. Ends up falling. Viper collecting that kill. Now looking for a little bit more. His own pulse bomb online, but might not be necessary. Touching onto the bot. No, not found actually. That'll just be it. Shanghai Dragons are able to find the victory three to one over Poker Face. Well played by the Shanghai Dragons. Their dives were just that much better. I even argued that the first map as well probably should have been theirs and it's been a bumpy start for the shanghai dragons for sure but i think a much needed winter game back a little bit of confidence they beat soul dynasty lost the dreamers lost the dallas field and after being a poker face their record stands at two and two in the summer stage and things get wacky and wilder here because well as they did lose the dreamers dreamers lost to poker face but then shanghai beat poker face so it is a big old triangle <laughs> Not quite a circle, uh, well, you know what I'm getting at here, but yeah, the triangle of pain, I, suppo I suppose, between the fan bases, but the Shanghai Dragons fan base is definitely going to be happy getting this win out of the way, because it would have been that much more cause for concern should they lose to a contender squad, even though this one was able to take down Dreamers, who do look good. Anyway, we'll talk more, though, about Iris, who is our player of the match. The whole way throughout, we were kind of back and forth as far as who we were feeling, but you know viper coming online very much so on the last map of circuit royale but iris was very consistent the entire way through and he started off with yeah. some crazy plays on esperanza yeah for sure and but especially now I, I look at the other maps map two was extremely impressive from iris low deaths high impact decent number of final blows 11 sleeps on uh i can Volder alone and then another 10 sleeps on map number three for circuit so a lot done from Eris in terms of the output. We saw a lot of good bio names. 
opening kill coming through as well that was well assisted by eros on Esperanza, as mentioned a flick support play of the match we love those that we do i mean we had we had skewed win in our first series of the debate that feels like eternity i mean I guess technically it was yesterday now since it's after midnight for both of us. Uh, but we saw him win seven hours ago, six hours ago, something like that. And then Iris also comes through to collect, to represent the supports. We're just out here, a certain dominance, playing that Ana. Oh. You start to, yeah, just stuff like that, you know. Almost a solo kill there, but a number of times we saw Valentine come out of stealth, play the EMP, and instantly slip by Iris. That happened enough times it was, I mean, it's one of the moments where Valentine wanted to go for a play. So I think we always knew that Eris was going to be one of the highlights on this team. It just feels like it's taken a while for the individual pieces of the Shanghai Dragons to come together and finally become possibly greater than some of the parts. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I think you could make decent arguments here for today as far as performance is concerned, which is a very good sign for the side of the Shanghai Dragons because it wasn't just he was dragging people across the line. He had some amazing highlight plays, but everybody did on Shanghai. And that's what you want from this squad that, you know, former champions uh, who have been having a rough go of it. This is the kind of stuff, you know, the kind of performances when everybody's operating as a team, everyone's putting up highlight performances. That's what gives you more faith. That's something that the fans can have some hope about for them to continue finding their footing. You need this for teams that are trying to make that comeback happen as well. Soul Dynasty on a bit of a resurgence, Shanghai Dragons on a resurgence, Dallas Fuel as well. It's all about, who knew? Add a player who used to be on your team and you start doing better. Times G had been named, we had Fate come back in from the Shanghai Dragons. And uh, yeah, the, you know, the original recipe cool. worked. You didn't need to tweak it. Wow. We're seeing some stuff in here that we didn't even really get to see before. Just being able to find these snipes, plays on the periphery, made things really difficult for more than a number of players on the poker face side. They absolutely did. But now we're going to have one of the players standing by here for an interview. Should hear from Iris himself. So we'll get ready to hand it over to Unknown for the translations to guide us through this final one of the evening. So we'll go ahead and pass it off. Hello, Iris. Congrats on your win. How do you feel? <laughs> I'm really happy that we won. Well, I hear some other um, laughing members. Is, are your team uh, right next to you? Yeah, everyone's next to me. Well, Busan was impressive, but Dragons really showed up in Eichenwald. Was there some coaching magic in the works? So our head coach was uh, after map one. He was in, uh, let's just say, uh, very kind of uh, scary mode. And then that kind of woke us up. Uh, can we have a peek of what he said? So he said, uh, we don't have anywhere to go back. We just have to go forward. That's kind of like the summary of it. We don't have anywhere to go retreat to now. You probably know that uh, Pokerface plays a lot of Hanzo. Uh, what did you do to prepare for that? We were really mostly focusing on team coordination, also the tempo, and I think with that and the works, I think um, whatever they play wasn't really much of a uh, big deal. Good kill participation from you. What's the secret? I really want to credit Gangnam Jin for really supporting me so that I can make those kill participations and also our frontline who makes everything happen because they make uh, they take all the space. 
<웃음> 네, 정말 훈훈한 상하이 드래곤즈의 모습 함께하고 계십니다. 어, 말씀해 주신 것처럼 공격적인 윈솜트가 굉장히 인상적이었는데 이걸 앞으로 상하이의 색깔이라고 so, 말할 수 있을까요? So, your aggressive dives were very impressive oh, tonight. Um, is this a new color of Shanghai Dragons? 공격적인 걸 좋아하다 보니까 파도생이 페이트 형이 좀더 공격적인 윈솜트이라서 그거에 맞춰서 잘 I think uh, all of our members are really aggressive in nature, and also Fate is a very aggressive main tank, so we try to follow his aggression. Next up, you have the Spark. Uh, do you have any resolves coming into the match? So, like we said, uh, like our coach said, we don't have, we can't afford to go back now. So there's no turn to back. We only have, we only have to go forward. And that is the end of their interview. Back to you, Seth. Thank you very much, unknown for the translation, and thank you to Ears for taking the time to go ahead and catch us up. But boy, it has been a hell of a day as we had plenty of maps played. Couldn't quite get the five there in the final series, but in case you've forgotten, Feral started things off with that three zero, then. Charge, struggling, lost to Kong, uh, I keep wanting to say Kong Lee Panthera, lost to Panthera, and then we saw the Dynasty be able to take down the Hangzhou Spark, which really tips the balance and the power levels of all the teams very much up in the air. Shanghai Dragons, though, rounding things out with that 3-1 victory. Some would say with Seoul Dynasty and Shanghai Dragons winning in APAC, nature is healing. We are going back in time. Is it 2021 again? I can't tell. It's certainly the results we got back from then. Uh, the only real major consistency that we have here that doesn't change despite what happens is that Infernal this year is the top team. Still the case. Still basically almost flawless. They've only dropped one map. That one map they lost to was actually against Pokerface, and that's it. Otherwise, you know, it, it would be a, a plus 12 in the map differential. It's just plus 11 because of one map. And I think that the standings look a bit wild, you know, because never would you have anticipated even with some of the changes coming through, you would see O2 Blast as the, as the team down there in 10th well, position, but they have not been able to find themselves I think I anticipated it. I, think I, I anticipated just mean on name alone. On on name value alone, I looked at the new O2 Blast squad, I was like, man, this is a much lower quality O2 Blast team compared to where we had before. And, you know, all the uh, previous O2 Blast members have gone into new teams now, and pretty much all of them are flourishing on those new teams as well. So, yeah, this will be the first version of o2 blast that's really struggled compared to previous versions and speaking of struggling ultra charge down there as well that i'm definitely yeah. looking for a little bit more but the one match they did win was against o2 blast well they have a slight little reprieve for themselves as so they do not have to play tomorrow but for the dallas fuel and dreamers they are right up at the top of the show we'll be taking to the stage we'll see if fuel is going to be able to get that 4-0 beginning here to the second half of the year Anjo spark similarly going to be taking on panthera see who is going to be moving up to that 2-2 two, two score line who's going to be at the 1-3 and then O2 versus Soul Dynasty we'll see if on Dynasty land. can continue yes on land if they can continue to excel and flourish on the side of the Dynasty now that Venom is back into the roster or if O2 Blast is going to be able to cause some stumbles O2 Blast needs something because currently they are on a pretty massive loss streak and well, I guess if they don't take it versus Dynasty the next two games afterwards will be Dreamers and Panthera and maybe those end up being potential win for o2 blast but uh yeah currently those woes continue dynasty on the up and up i feel good about the dynasty i would i would this is you know you gotta buy buy low and well this is this is where the the stocks are rising for the dynasty so last chance to buy into dynasty before the stocks rise all right well we'll see if that's going to be the case maybe you know a bit of a jim kramer here from, from avril and it's all going to come tumbling down come tomorrow i'll have to just wait and see but a uh, hell of a day that it has been and of course there's those matches tomorrow, so the action does continue. I myself not going to be there though. I'm going on my honeymoon, so I'm going to be away for a little while. Which uh, Avril Congrats. will still be here though. He'll be holding things down for you guys. But I've got a, a trip to go on, and then I've got some additional travel after that. So I'm going to be away for a bit, but it's okay. I'm just I'm not popping to the store to buy something, and then you never see me again. I will be coming back, so don't worry if you don't see my face for a little bit. But you'll have plenty of Avril, uh, and yeah, guys, have a good evening. Watch NA, watch APAC tomorrow. We'll catch you next time.